hello and a very warm welcome to the Hawthorns, the home of West Bromwich Albion, here this morning for the first day of four days in the ESFA PlayStation Schools Cup Finals. And up first here, we have Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School taking on Egg Buckland Community College in the girls under 12s 9v9 PlayStation Schools Cup Final. Well, here come the teams then, and I am delighted to say I am joined alongside today here at the Hawthorns by former Aston Villa Wolves and England international winger Tony Daly. Tony, great to have you here. Yeah, thank you much, forward, Isaac. Looking forward to hopefully five great games here in store today. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great opportunity, isn't it, uh, uh, for these young players to go and play, you know, in a professional league. It's a great weather for it, and hopefully, you know, can put a good performance. Yeah, well, these two teams will certainly be hoping to do just that. Let's take a look at how the two teams line up then, starting with Cardinal Heenan then. They start with Sandra Jalowick in goal, and then the rest of their starting nine is number two, Ava Grant, three, Lola Dudley, four is Andrea Gonzalez Luna, five is Mary Nelson, six, Eleanor Donahue, seven, Jasmine Kashani, number eight, the captain, Jane Toure, and number nine, Mary Keelty. They are led by Kieran Gaffey. And as for Egg Buckland, then they will have very different ideas in trying to stop Cardinal Heenan here today. Daniel McKee is the starting goalkeeper. The rest of their team then is Georgie Webb, Felicity Godfrey, Ella Grace Rowe, the captain, Ava Richards, Heidi Glass, Ava Hambly, Maisie White, and the number nine is the Gollop. The manager for Egg Buckland is Helen Mullally. As for the substitutes then, on the substitutes bench for Cardinal Heenan, Elsie Taylor, Erin Crosby and Hilary Anoff. And the substitutes available for Egg Buckland are Poppy Jerry and Molly Lake. Your referee for this first match today, this morning, is Evan Checkley. The assistant referees are Steve Davis and Andy Smith. And the fourth official is John Phillips. Well, really looking forward to this then, Tony. How important do you think it is that the two teams get off to a good start here in this yeah, national final? Yeah, it, it, it really is. But clearly, it's going to be a case of nerves and the heat as well. It's going to be already in the morning. It's, it's, it's quite, with the sun coming down, it's going to be a case of who's going to be the fittest team down to here. It's quite, to be quite honest with you. But it's important that both get off to a good start, you know, and don't concede early. Yeah, well, we have two periods of 30 minutes here to play. And if the scores are level come full time, then there will be no time for extra time. And straight to the dreaded penalty kicks. So it looks as though it's going to be Egg Buckland then here to get the ball moving, get this game off and underway here at the Hawthorns. The referee blows his whistle and we do begin then. And immediately Egg Buckland looked to try to go on the attack right from the off there, Tony, but... Nothing coming of it that time as they were dispossessed, but trying to, to make an instant impact right from the start. Yes, it is uh, very cagey at the moment. Yeah, it's a loose ball in the middle of the park, and neither side have really been able to get control in these very early opening seconds. It's going to be allowed to run out of play there for the game's first throw-in. Egg Buckland here kicking from right to left as we look at things in our commentary position. Throwing there down the line, but it was met first by the Cardinal Heenan captain, Toure. Again, it's just a, a long bouncing ball. It's controlled, appeals for handball. By way of that control, but the referee was happy with it, and it's out now for the throw. Yeah, both teams playing a hectic pace here. Hasn't settled down as quite yet. So throwing that's actually bounced out of play on the near side the ball having come into the field of play so it is out and the throw-in is overturned it's a very hectic start in the opening minute oh, good long strike. range strike there looking to try to catch the goalkeeper off guard perhaps there Maisie White it was with the effort certainly struck it well enough just slightly wide in the end but great connection on that yeah super strike by White there trying to catch a keeper off her line that's a her early intention there. You can see it there. It's a good strike, perhaps on target. 
might have, might have done the goalkeeper there. Yeah, certainly he struck the sweet spot, didn't she? But just off target in the end as the goal kick there is taken by the defender. Throwing forward there down the line from Ava Grant. The number two playing on the right side of defence for Cardinal Heenan. Oh, now then perhaps an opportunity in behind after it there was Kilty, but she wasn't quite able to latch onto the end of it. Yeah, keep it out really sharp there. Yeah, Daniel McKee quickly off her line with a good starting position as well. First little opening for Cardinal Heenan. Didn't yeah. actually get onto the end of it there, the number nine, but... Yeah, yeah, love, yeah lovely little flick there by Y. Little opportunity, but Kiefer very, very quick off the line. Well, both of these two teams have had to endure a, a long season to get to the final today. That one will be allowed to trickle through the penalty area, and the goalkeeper there, McKee, will see it out and behind. For Cardinal Heenan, they beat Valley Gardens 3-2 in the semi-final, and just about held on as well in that semi-final. As for Egg Buckland, it was a 4-2 victory at home to Thorndon School. Again, here we're going to see the defender take that goal kick. The captain, row it was with the ball, which has ended up all the way in behind. Good defending, though, to just hold up the progress. Yeah, super defending there. Whiter is then here to take that throw in. She's taken it short. It's going to be a throw now for Cardinal Mohinan. But the more that Egg Buckland can get Maisie White into the game, then perhaps the more success that they will have. She is their top goal scorer en route to the final, having scored 20 goals in reaching this finals date here this morning. Throw in there again goes out of play on the near side. Four minutes played and we get to have the first proper opportunity on goal but could it come here Cardinal Heenan here breaking forwards evaded the first pressure there two or eight was able to get the cross into the box though well held up it's out for the throw it yeah two showed great feet there at first push had an opportunity to get that shot off but well, well closed down really good feet looks a threat early on Grant with the throw in direct into the penalty area that time it breaks out onto the edge and then the long range strike drops just wide goalkeeper again perhaps could have been caught out with that but it was off target in the end yeah, yeah, another 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 decent strike there as well we've had a couple of good long long range efforts good strike there by uh, Richard Five minutes played here in the first half of the first game of the day. The first game of the week as well in the PlayStation Schools Cup Finals. Inside the centre circle now here, Cardinal Heenan with possession, but only momentarily as Georgie Webb, the number two, was there for Egg Buckland. It's been to and fro so far. Either team have taken control of it. Yeah, you can see Maisie White can play a little bit there as well. Quite clearly, they're their, their best creative player. They need to try and get her on the pit on the ball as much as she is here now. Battle for possession over on the far side. Felicity Godfrey was the winner of that for a Buckland. The play as well to break away from the pressure again there. It was Maisie White looking to try to make things happen and unlock the Cardinal Heenan back line ball in behind but it's taken out wide there by Jane Toure who was back on the cover brilliant turn by White and White will go for goal as well from a very long way out but felt it was worth an effort to 
bouncing ball which was allowed to bounce and then Rowe the captain got her head to it but certainly Maisie White just starting to make things happen for Egg Buckland in the middle of the park yeah definitely both number eights there uh, getting on the ball as well again both both creative players too as well but White's had a couple of shots there as well just getting a marker there's the Colonel Heenan boss Kieran Gaffey in charge of his side here this morning in the opposite technical area is Helen Mullally and Mark Whaley who are leading Egg Buckland and it's their side here on the attack again and with the emphasis to try to put pressure on the Cardinal Heenan goal managed to get the shot away again there White but it was blocked away that time yeah good block there White coming into the game there showing a real good threat she is at the moment Cardinal Heenan do manage to clear that time up to the halfway mark again though it was met well by Rowe just beginning to stamp their authority on the game here Egg Buckland there's a runner on this near side oh, as well test. and she was the intended target it's a great ball if she can catch it that's managed to keep the ball in play as well brilliant pick at didn't quite make the most of it though Richards in the end but it's still here for White who will again unleash from a very long way out Richards after it once more trying to deliver that on her left foot into the penalty area but didn't make contact in the end and thanks for the throw in but still more pressure on the Cardinal Heenan goal yeah yes yeah, Egg Buckland definitely on top here as well super skills here by White again well closed down though tried to get a shot off but well blocked White again changing the angle as she tried to find the shooting opportunity again certainly not afraid to take the shooting chances on when they come her way despite the, the distance out from goal perhaps no no she's a very confident uh, player really wants to really uh, get on the ball and have a shot no problem with that but Egg Brooklyn definitely on top at the moment well, nine minutes played it's still goalless Egg Buckland certainly the side who looked the more likely to get the opening goal. Forward there from Ava Hambly, but it's going to be dealt with. Forward then to Kelty. Again, there was a, a player over there on this near side in Richards. The referee there has seen something which he didn't like and has blown the whistle for the game's first free kick. It's going to be an opportunity here then perhaps for Egg Buckland to maybe load the penalty area and we'll see what they've got by way of a, a delivery. Just wonder whether they might line up a, yeah, a shot from that looks that way. as well. Yeah, it looks like that's, that's the case. It is a long way out, but it's going to be a direct shot on goal. It was always rising in the end and it was high up above the goalkeeper's crossbar felt that it was worth an effort there though the captain Rowe took charge of it yeah, well over the bar that one yeah I think it was going to have taken something special to beat the goalkeeper from that sort of a distance but again it's a, another shot that Egg Buckland have opted for and certainly haven't been afraid to do that despite the distance in which the majority of them have been again Egg Buckland take charge in the middle of the park it's that midfield battle the Egg Buckland are just beginning to win now yeah most definitely so they're picking up the, the second balls as well from uh, the, the uh, play from set pieces as well as goal kicks thrown there forward from the left side of Cardinal Heenan defence long ball forward as well there for Kilty to get after there is Kilty okay. nice little slip pass through but then held up well by White showing the other side of her game there to get back and do her defensive job try to then unleash the runner on the left again that outlet is something that Egg Buckland have looked for just on a, a couple of occasions now the extra player over on this left wing perhaps yeah, trying to get an overload down there as well, especially um, on the counter attack.
Here's Richards. Out for the corner. Can they capitalise um, on these set pieces that plays here now? Yeah, turned behind there by Grant. Richards with the good work in winning this set piece. It will be Richards to take it as well. Move towards the near post, but it's turned out to behind for take two. So then, let's see what this delivery is going to turn out to be like this time. Again, it's going to be Richards to take. Again, it's towards that near post area. It's had to bounce through. It wasn't dealt with by the, the near post defender, but the goalkeeper, Jellowick, was there to take charge of it in the end, immediately trying to turn defence into attack quickly. After it, there is Keelty. Round on the cover was Webb, but she wasn't able to clear the ball away. It is now away, though, from Rowe. Yeah, definitely Carl, Carl Heenan, much more direct, trying to use the pace up front, especially Kilty there, trying to get the end of there, working those channels. It is a throw in rather than the corner here for Cardinal Heenan. But by the corner flag, it's returned back to the original throw in taker that's again for another throw in direct that time into the penalty area again looking for Keelty who seems to be the outlet if the moments of attack have been few and far between in this opening 13 minutes for Cardinal Heenan it has been Mary Keelty who has been the, the outlet for them when they have been able to try to, to break forward into the attacking third they're trying to turn for attack here as well can they create something from a set piece themselves? I've been, a lot, I've been under pressure quite a bit. Slightly different set off here by Cardinal Heenan. Yeah, well, Gonzalez Luna has made her way forward from the back. Unmarked at the moment, but the corner kick didn't get off the ground. Just found a little pocket of space in there, Gonzalez Luna, but if she wasn't marked, the ball didn't come her way in the end. Clearance isn't made how it should have been. It's cleared away. Out of the penalty area now, though, and the danger is dealt with four now. Still more defending to do, though, for Egg Buckland. Nearly a quarter of an hour play, nearly at the midway point of this opening first half. Long range strike, the goalkeeper has spilt it. It's still there, though, and she was able to collect it the second time of asking there, McKee. Yeah, a decent strike there. Keep a form ball, but managed to get a hold of it. It was a again good effort, yeah, wasn't it? It was, yeah, to uh, yeah, hit the target. So we're asking for from distance as well. You've got half a chance if he's on target. Yeah, well, despite the early Egg Buckland pressure that actually the first shot on target the first save that either goalkeeper has had to make and it was made by the Egg Buckland goalkeeper McKee there's a, there's a decent decent strike out over on the far side here and it will be a Cardinal Heenan throw it just getting back in the game now, Cardinal Heenan. Let's flick forward there by the captain, Torre, but straight through to the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper's clearance did clear the halfway line, but it was immediately coming back, and the assistance flag here is raised on the near side for offside. Just coming back from an offside position there, Kielty. Did score in the semi-final win 
Mary Keelty alongside a brace from the skipper Jane Toure. The goalkeeper here seems to have a bit of a problem, which is a concern here for Egg Bucklin. Referee has just gone across to see to Daniel McKee. She's down at the moment. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's not, not, not well at the moment. Not sure what she picks up there. Yeah, well, it is a concern here for Egg Buckland because they don't have a registered substitute goalkeeper on the bench as well. It's going to be an opportunity for the, the two sets of players to come across and take on some perhaps much-needed fluids and also messages from the two sets of coaching teams on this near side as well whilst the goalkeeper is just getting back to her feet. Yeah, I think as well, as I say, it's quite hot down there as well. So good for them to get, get a bit of a break. And as he says, some more tactical messages. Yeah, well, the good news for Egg Buckland is that Daniel McKee is back up to her feet, albeit still moving a little gingerly. Two sets of players begin to return back out onto the field of play, having had that unofficial little timeout period. All time, of course, which we expect to be added on at the end of this first half. We will restart then when all is ready with the free kick from that offside, which seems like quite a while ago now. I think there's going to be a substitution here as well. The first of the game, it's roll on, roll off changes, of course, so both managers can make as many changes as they wish to and the first change there is going to see Ava Hambly replaced here by Heidi Glass Glass who was initially listed in the starting lineup but on here from the substitutes bench and that was taken by Richards. Good challenge though from Toure. Referee there with a good advantage as well. Toure still driving forward, excellent footwork. Oh, good tackle. Brilliant challenge, wasn't it? Toure still has it though, the second opportunity perhaps, but neat back heel from White. And then the snapshot on goal from Donoghue. It's always going wide of that near post, but it was it was great play initially from Toure, and then an equally good challenge from White. Yeah, definitely. There too, breaking down his right hand side again, quick feet. White again, really good tackle, uh, preventing her from uh, playing that ball into the box or getting a shot off. Battle of the two number eights there, for sure. Yeah, it certainly was. It was tenacious play, wasn't it, yeah. from Jane Toure? As you can see there, yeah, really good tackle, really good tackle there. Back it comes again here towards the Egg Buckland goal. Trying to weave away through. Now Torre shooting opportunity oh. and there's the first goal. Brilliant finish from the skipper Jane Torre with the opener and Cardinal Heenan a one goal to the good. Yeah, yeah fantastic finish by Torre. She already stole uh, some, some really quick feet originally before. Definitely a threat there and a fantastic finish there. No chance for the goalkeeper. 20 minutes played, Cardinal Heenan, one goal to the good, brilliant finish wasn't it? Yeah, really superb finish, so much say against, against the run of play, you would say as well, but definitely that little break has helped him out really there as well, superb finish. From the captain. Yeah, after the early Egg Buckland pressure, and they had plenty of shots from long distance, long way out. Couldn't hit the target with them. Well, Jane Toure certainly did from there. Never looked like missing as she was bearing down on goal in that one-on-one -on -one situation. Always had to favour the striker in that position. And brilliant finish past the goalkeeper. Now the onus is on Egg Buckland then to respond. Goalkeeper dealt with it in a 
unorthodox way, but dealt with it nonetheless. Yeah, effective. He's actually kick-started the counter-attack as well, and it's the goal scorer, Torre, who is leading that charge. It was just forced to check back, though, before trying to find the ball up to Kielty. That one runs all the way through to McKee, but I think you're right, Tony. I think certainly that period's rest, that timeout yeah. period when the goalkeeper was injured, so it's definitely favoured Cardinal yeah, Heenan. And absolutely, they've started the mud for the team after that little injury break. Full of confidence now as well. Oh, good pass. Brilliant ball again to pick out Richards. He's once more bursting forward down this left flank. Behind for the corner. Yeah, great defending there by, uh, by Grant, getting back. And he says Richards broke down that left-hand side. Yeah, she's had, she's had a few good breaks down his left-hand side, a good opportunity, she stayed wide. She's definitely an outlet there uh, for Egg Buckland. And once more she's going to be the player to take the corner as well, but once again it goes to the near post and the near post only. Cleared away by the goal scorer Toure. The goalkeeper will plead with that one to come into the penalty area, it did, as she then tried to, to play the pass which she has. Row under intense pressure. Mm -hmm. Definite intent there for Cardinal Heena to try to, to step up the press, maybe press higher up the field and win the ball back in yeah. the dangerous area. Yeah, definitely. That goal was put in an extra yard for sure in the legs and really pressing the ball, as he said. It's a substitution here being readied as well for Cardinal Heena. We'll see that change presumably at the next stoppage in play. dealt with by Webb, trying to improvise there and use the skill to fling that one round the corner white but wasn't able to latch on to the other end of it we are now going to see this change then Elsie Taylor is the player waiting in the wings ready to come on here for Cardinal Heenan as though that change is going to be held to the next break as the referee allows the goal kick there to be taken. Fourth official still just perhaps sorting out the substitute board. Here's Torre again. On the attack once more for Cardinal Heenan. Torre, it's wide of the near post though in the end, but again, the danger player for Cardinal Heenan. Yeah, without doubt there. She just tried to shape it into that far corner, I thought, there as well. She opened up, but uh, couldn't, couldn't get a hold of it. As he said, the main threat have a look here then try to open shape it into that far post but couldn't quite get hold of it that substitution has there been made then with Taylor having been introduced for the final five minutes of this first half again it's Cardinal Hina on the attack but I think coming off at that time it's crowded out there and outnumbered after it down Ooh. the other end and there's a shooting opportunity the goalkeeper came and maybe just about did enough to put the attacker off yeah, yeah. keeper did superbly well there uh, to, to no, uh, deny uh, got up as you can see they're coming out super super challenge there for the keeper did really well yeah certainly didn't want to pull out of that one did she the goalkeeper it was a brilliant challenge that as I say just put the Buckland number nine off and Gollop in the end with the side footed effort that was always going wide but brilliant goalkeeping. Another change here is being prepared for Cardinal Heenan. Substitution for Cardinal Heenan. Eleanor Donahue is the player here to be withdrawn and it's Erin Crosby who is coming on. Cardinal Heenan as a school have had players who have gone on to make big things of their footballing careers women's players in fact as well Oliver Casey one on the men's side of things who has currently been playing in the Leeds Academy and then Jim Bonnet 
who is playing for Liverpool, two times winner of the Women's Super League as well, Gemma Bonner. I'm sure she's somebody that these Cardinal Heenan players look up to, but it's their side here with the defending to oh, do at the moment. Brilliant okay. footwork into the box. Oh, brilliant goal. Okay, okay. What a superb goal that was. Maisie White has drawn her side back level. What a superb finish there. Superb uh, play by uh, White to equalise. Great feet, sorting the feet out. Beat one, two, possibly three players in there as well. And cross the goalkeeper. There she goes, jinking in and out. Superb, superbly played. Can't get anywhere near her. A fantastic strike. Keeper got a hand to it, but unable to keep it out. And a good equaliser. Super play. Well, wonderful skill and the finish to match as well for White. It's a goal certainly worthy of drawing Egg, Bu Egg Buckland back level. The back square and just before half time as well. She had been the danger player for Egg Buckland. The warning signs have been there for the Cardinal Heenan defence, but they just couldn't cope with it that time. Maisie White with her 21st goal of the season. I wonder whether there's going to be an opportunity for either side to get a goal to give them a slender advantage before half-time, or if they will go into half-time level, would expect there to be some stoppage time at the end of this first period, given the injury that we had to the goalkeeper as well. This is another look at the goal. Brilliant play, wasn't it? Yeah, super, superb feet. Really was. Jinking in and out and hitting across the goalkeeper. Fantastic finish. Seven minutes after falling behind. And Egg Buckland now back level. Brilliant footwork again. That time, though, dispossessed. Again, it's the battle of the number eight. <laughs> White managed to offload to the right that time. Gollop waiting in the centre, but the challenge was made again really well by Jane Turek. Yeah, as he says, those two there, White and two are battling in the midfield area here as well. Both goal scorers as well. Let's hope they don't cancel each other out. Playing some fantastic football, both of them. Buckland trying to work a route into the penalty area, but it goes out there and only for the goal kick. As we close in on the end of the 30 minutes this first half period, we we'll wait to see how much stoppage time we will have at the end of it. away there by Rowe as we see confirmation of a minimum of one minute added time at the end of this first half so one minute for either side to try to work one late opportunity else we will be heading into the midway point on as even again it's white again it's brilliant footwork again white looks to try to shoot she has really been a standout performer out there so far Tony yeah she really has she says she can see why she scored so many goals. Fantastic feet, definitely the playmaker. Playmaker. Here we go. Whoops. <laughs> Excellent, super play there. Well, there is going to be a late first half opportunity then for Egg Buckland to try to load the danger zone. Let's see what comes, if anything, then of this corner. There is time to take it. Again, it doesn't clear the near post area. The referee will allow for the second corner to be taken. We're into overtime of the added time now at the end of this first half, but it's more defending to do here for Cardinal Heenan. Cleared away by Touré, and that's the last action 
for this first half and it's 1-1 at the midway point at the end of the first 30 minutes. It's Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School who took the lead through Jane Toure. After 20 minutes, the captain got her goal, but Maisie White bringing us back all square. It was a good first half, Tony, and still all to play for in the second period. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Then yeah, we, we saw Egg Buckland starting the game really, really well. Then we had a little injury to the goalkeeper, and then immediately after then we had Toure with a lovely, great bit of skill, scoring a fantastic goal. But then Maisie White then equalising both number eights running the show at this present moment well here are the highlights then the early effort from Toure just a little tester for McKee yeah. but it was her goal which would then break the deadlock yeah just nicking taking a pocket the defender and as you said didn't look like missing that one superb finish by Toure into the far corner and that was the goal for 1-0 the first goal of the 2023 PlayStation Schools Cup finals I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come and we had one for Egg Buckland as well yeah. just seven minutes after yeah the key for the well really sharp off the line there yep yep watch this feet here fantastic the second goal here what great feet there by Y. Yeah, that was the moment of magic, wasn't yeah, it, really, it was in the superb, first half? Superb. Little Megs there. Cut inside, inside, outside. Messi-esque. <laughs> super finish, super finish. It really was. It was brilliant, to say the least. All the superlatives to describe it for Maisie White. Yeah, it's worth seeing again from a different angle. There we go. Oh, yeah, super stuff. Yeah, well, she was at it from start to finish in that first half. Maisie White, but we'll leave you for the half-time break. Make sure you don't go anywhere, though. I hope you're sitting comfortably for the second half. But at half-time, here in the SFA Girls Under-12s 9v9 PlayStation Schools Cup final, it is Cardinal Heenan 1, Egg Buckland 1.
Welcome back then for the second half of the first game of the day here at the Hawthorns, the home of West Bromwich Albion. It is 1-1 at half time in the girls under 12s 9v9 PlayStation Schools Cup final. Cardinal Heenan having scored first through their captain Jane Tourey, but Maisie White with an excellent goal, brilliant skill in setting up the shooting opportunity and no mistake with the finish as well to bring Egg Buckland back level. That's how we stand at half time, Tony. And it does set things up nicely for this second period as we get underway. Yeah, it really does. We see how both teams are going to come out to try and win this game. Be very cagey as we thought it would be. The first five minutes or so start to open up as the game progressed. It's Cardinal Heenan here coming forwards, attacking the goal to the left in this second half. He's got a good well close the ball down really well. The play, some intensity. The players, and I, th I think fitness is going to be key with the latter start, latter uh, stages of the game. Throwing forward there down the line was flipped on by Hambly. Sent forward from the centre circle. It should be swept up by Grant. Under pressure there from Gollop. Gollop has latched onto the end of it as well and wins her team the throw. Well, level at the moment, both of these sides have actually drawn in normal time one of their games en route to the final, but having won on penalties, Cardinal Heenan drew 3-3 with St John Fisher's high score, but won that game via the spot kicks. And it's Cardinal Heenan here coming forward. It's a good challenge, though, but breaking through, Toure. Still Toure, it's blocked away, but the offside flag there goes up. Just in an offside position as it ricocheted through. By the deflection. Again, though, it was Jane Torre at the heart of things for Cardinal Heenan. Yeah, good break by Torre again. But as you can see there, they look like Gollop. She's always in and around that area, trying to get the end of things as well. But in offside position. Yeah, was just offside. Just a, a yard or two in behind the second last defender. forward there from Rowe but it's only coming back up to the number nine Kilty Kilty trying to find Torre again good sliding challenge the goalkeeper's come and got there as well needed to as well there McKee good goalkeeping yeah it was good keeping there as well had to put out for a corner again Con Heenan starting a better team Torre there keeper preventing Toure from getting a shot off. Corner then here for Cardinal Heenan to be taken by the goal scorer Toure. Toure with a decent looking delivery in. Still there as well in and around the penalty area and well safety first defending from Felicity Godfrey. And she just settles to turning that one behind for another corner. Yeah, it looks like Carl Heenan started a bit of the uh, two teams here. It's taken short there, 2 2 or 8. Ooh. The referee in the end wasn't happy with the taking of the corner. Not sure exactly why the referee is bringing that one back, but he is, so it will be a retake. It's taken now to Tour 8. She is allowed to continue this time. Up 1v1 against the first defender, Toure into the penalty area, still going here, Toure. Eventually, Egg Buckland managed to make the tackle. And they crowded out in the end. Up here to the substitute, it was past her, in actual fact, to Keelty, but the offside flag there goes up as well. Once more against Mary Keelty, just returning from an offside position. Four minutes played since the restart, and we're still as we were on the scoreboard at half-time 1-1 but Cardinal Heenan having started this second half on the front foot yeah Kilty Kilty just uh, playing right on the line there as well as any good striker it is in a case she will be offside 
Long forward from that free kick, it's allowed to bounce all the way through Ooh. as well, it's a shooting opportunity. But in the end, the contact wasn't made and it ricochets through back to the goalkeeper. Well, that's a big let-off for Cardinal Heenan. Yeah, big chance. Yeah, broke through to Richards, just couldn't get a connection to it. Yeah, it was the bouncing ball from the original free kick that wasn't dealt with by the back line and as it was allowed to bounce through, it was a golden chance really for Richards, one which she'll be wishing that she had back. Just wonder whether Egg Buckland will be left to rue that missed opportunity. White held up that time, dispossessed. He's driving forward now, Nelson. Oh, Great strong tackle. Held up then though was Rowe, it's back to Nelson again. Ricochets through into the penalty area and Touch takes it out and behind. Yes, some big tackles coming in here as well. Both teams really committed to this here now. Taking short there too, two or eight. Again here, Cardinal Heenan looking to try to use the captain to try to drive into the penalty area from that wide position. <laughs> Dudley here has the ball in her hands to take the throw in. Take it she does, but couldn't find a teammate. And it's back to the goalkeeper. from White that time but then the forward ball only against the head of Rowe and once more she's been a, a commanding figure at the back for Egg Buckland by way of those high balls which she's taken charge of Torre has it back past the first challenge still Torre held up though by Ella Grace Rowe good challenge again they're yeah, super defending there really was There's a battle for it on this near side, which was won there by the substitute, Elsie Taylor. Egg Buckland there looking to try to work the ball in behind the Cardinal Heenan back line. But it bounces all the way out through and behind. Buckland throw it. Taken again looking for the strike Golop. Referee has given the decision there in favour of Egg Buckland. And that's the cue for players to make their way forward from the back. Long range effort, oh. the goalkeeper had to deal with it. Managed to palm it up over the crossbar. Good strike though. Yes. And a good save in the end as well. Yeah, it's a great strike, but a fantastic save there. Needed putting it over the bar. Yeah, well it was the captain rope. With the audacious effort. Very nearly caught the goalkeeper out, but she was equal to it in the end. Yes, yeah, superb. Really good save there by Jalloway. Jalowick there might have more work to do as well. Still could be the case. It's out for another corner. Taken short there this time for Egg Buckland. It's back to the original corner taker and towards the near post area. Jalowick dealt with it. At her near post. Maybe the momentum just beginning to change a bit now since the start of the second period when Cardinal Heenan came out on top. But Egg Buckland now applying the pressure. Oh, it's a distribution which nearly broke back Ooh. to Egg Buckland. It does there. It's a long-range strike. The goalkeeper in the end manages to collect. 
It's a bit of a, a hairy moment at the back, though. And that clearance is more up than away, really, from the hands of the goalkeeper. Just nervy moments, perhaps, in the Cardinal Heenan back line. Yeah, it is Egg Brooklyn back on top here. Second half so far has swung one way and then back the other. And that was the story in the first half as well. That's why it's 1-1 at this so important juncture. Okay. Referee just holding play at the moment. Also there's a retying of a boot lace but Good to go again now. That one has gone out of play quite clearly now. It's out for the goal kick. <laughs> Mentioned earlier some of the successes previously that Cardinal Heenan and their players have had. Egg Buckland, likewise, their under-15 girls team also reached the national finals last season but were beaten in that final. Looking to get the job done here in the under-12s final, but they've got defending to do at the moment. Into the penalty area with the cross-come shot in the end. I think it was an effort on goal. And it bounces wide at the far post. Yeah, flash across a the goalkeeper there, but didn't hit the target. Again, it was Torre. Torre, good break. He says... Hitting across the goal. And keeper had that covered. Expression of frustration perhaps there on the face of the captain and goal scorer Jane Torrey. Still plenty of time for the course of the game to change. Again the goal kick here is going to be left to the defender. And once more, it's going to be Rowe to take it. Forward, long, downfield. Direct route one ball forwards. Again, it caused issues for the Cardinal Heenan defence. Again, good recovery there by uh, Grant. Get back. One there in the middle of the park for Egg Buckland. It's white, but she was just crowded out there, just ran into a crowded area. It's been given away there to Torre. Matched upon its centre field. Torre, great challenge though from White. Brilliant footwork to follow as well. And again, Maisie White is away here. Past the defender again, Ooh. still going white, <laughs> and in the end, cynically brought to ground, Tony. Yes, that uh, cynical being the uh, opposite word, just outside the box there as well. Yeah, great feet again by White, and cleaned out there to be honest with you. As she weaved away through edge of the box as well, just the edge of the box. Yeah, well, it was brilliant, brilliant Green play, wasn't it? Yeah. Tremendous Green skill. Green, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm drew the foul oh, yeah. just outside the penalty area mm. well the danger was lurking the warning signs were flashing yeah. all over the Cardinal Hina radar mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was as soon as she won the ball wasn't it back yeah, it in was. the centre circle yeah, and weaving way through again yes, certainly super, was super it's a good position in here to be fair the free key just outside the penalty area that's a lovely angle for right footer White just getting back to her feet at the moment. Having received treatment, the referee is going to point her to the side of the field of play, so she won't be able to take the free kick. But we will restart with this free kick, and it's a great area here for this set-piece opportunity. Bit of a talking to as well between the Cardinal Heenan 
players in the penalty area, led, I think, by the goalkeeper, Jalowick, as she'll presumably look to set her defence for this set piece. Yeah, this is a good position. Well then, the opportunity from this free kick. It looks as though it's going to be the captain, Ella Grace Rowe, to strike it. Oh. It's high up over the crossbar. Yeah, tries to get off and over there. Put well over the bar. Yeah, touch me, baby. She put, 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 put her foot through with that one that there. Yeah, tried to get up and over into that far corner. Put a little bit too much on it. Torre after it there for Cardinal Heenan and Ball still kick. here Torre, she might be in, tries oh, to go around the goalkeeper. Goal well. Stood up firm to the challenge there, the goalkeeper. It looked for all the world as though Torre was going to score again. Brilliant goalkeeping once more. Yes, superb there by uh, McKee. Really good keeping. As we thought Torre had gone, gone around the goalkeeper. Defended extremely well, good save. Another good position. Perhaps this this is probably suits her a bit further out. She's got a decent strike on her. Yeah, well, she's had a couple of efforts so far, which have both gone over the crossbar. This one definitely is further out. Let's see if Rowe this time can hit the target. Rowe again does go for goal. It was dropping, but didn't quite drop quickly enough. Another substitution here is going to take place. Jasmine Kashani is coming back on, having been replaced in that first half, and she's coming on to replace her midfield partner from the start, at least, Eleanor Donahue. challenge still there in the midfield third long hard clearance away slam that one long downfield Dudley no, no nonsense here. defending yeah, absolutely no nonsense Nearly 48 minutes on the clock now. Dudley allows for that one to just trickle out of play. Torre after it. Torre got there as well. Really good defending though. Torre looking to latch onto the end of this one once more. The goalkeeper has ended up down in a heap. And the referee has given the foul. Goalkeeper who was down momentarily in that first half as well, Daniel McKee, yeah. is down again here. Yeah, there was a, yeah, there was a gen general attempt for the ball. Both teams, both players really committed there. Yeah, I'm sure she'll be okay. Yeah, maybe just needs a moment to get back to her feet, McKee, but she's a backup now, which is good to see again. over 10 minutes left to play it gives me the opportunity of this stoppage in play to point you in the direction of the ESFA Twitter page at schools football to take part in the player of the match vote the nominations from Tony Daly alongside me today two from either side for that player of the match Ava Grant and Jane Touré 
from Cardinal Heenan and Ella Grace Rose and Maisie White from Egg Bockland. That scores football to take part in that player of the match vote and the winner of that will be presented with their trophy on the field of play and the trophy presentations as well come full time so be sure to stick around for that as well. Excellent turn. Driving towards the penalty area again here. Oh. Back across. Brilliant goal. Oh. Finished off from close range. And Egg Buckland have turned this one around. It's Ava Hambly with the finish. But all about White again with the assist. It's 2-1. Yes, great finish there. Superb play again by White and a fantastic finish breaking out the ring super skills in the third there getting across in the area and a fantastic finish there super stuff there really worked goal yeah well humbly with the finish but after White scored the first she was the provider for the second there it's really been instrumental in this Egg Buckland turnaround. And it's all to do now, isn't it, yeah, for Cardinal Heenan? It, Cardinal, it surely is. Coming from behind here as well. So left to have a go now. Try and get his equaliser back. Immediately again there with the intent to try to attack from the restart but nothing coming of it that time and in the end it's actually Egg Buckland here looking to try to make something on the transitional attack forward down the other end on the counter attack but it's behind for the corner yeah we can see you catching him out here to the corner here now as well as Carden Heenan tried to attack tried to get a second goal back there's off opportunities there for Egg, Egg Buckland to, to get them on the counter attack If Egg Buckland were to find themselves a, a third goal, then that would really be a mountain to climb for Cardinal Heenan to get back into it. There's a, a runner here from Rowe, and she's on the end of the corner as well, back across to the original corner taker, and it's turned behind again. Well worked, that one, though. Yes, really worked corner there. Really was. Clock continues to tick down. Approaching now the final seven minutes of the regular 60 minutes. Corner delivery oh. looked a good one as well. It's allowed to bounce all the way through, though. Nobody on the end of it for Egg Buckland. Back into a dangerous area from the right boat of Rowe. Dealt with now, though. Only momentarily. It's still there for White. She's not the player that you want to be presenting the ball to right on the edge of the penalty area. Couldn't make anything of it that time, though. Again, taking charge at the back there, Rowe. She's been superb, hasn't yeah, she, in the back really line for Ed Buckland? Yeah, she really has. Real captain's performance. Yeah, and as it stands, it will be Ella Grace Rowe to get her hands on the trophy in the presentation at full time. Still a lot of work to do, though, for Egg Buckland if they are to see this one out. Runners-up, remember, in the under-15 national final as a school, Egg Buckland Community College last season. Are they going to get the job done here today? Out for the goal kick. Bit of urgency now. The Cardinal trying to get his equaliser. 
Possession given away there again to Maisie White. White bursting forward once more. Past the defender that time. White tried to play it across and there was a player there ready and waiting again. It was Hambly. It was almost that same combination that we saw for the game's third goal and the crucial one at the moment. Again, it was just brilliant from Maisie White. Yeah, fantastic feet again. Being created there, tried to square it into that area. Good defending in the end. But White's definite threat there. It's been the story from start to finish, really. Mm. There's a couple of players down here at the moment. There's a Cardinal Heenan defender down receiving treatment. And also the ready and waiting corner taker for a Buckland, who is back to her feet now, White. Maybe just a little out on her feet, yes, given yeah. the yeah. energy that she's had to put into it so far. Yeah, a few, few tired legs out there now, for sure. Still have plenty of action to bring to you today. Four more games to come in the ESFA PlayStation Schools Cup National Finals. Up next, it will be Cardinal Heenan in action again, in actual fact, in the under-12s. 9v9 Boys Elite Schools Cup Final. They'll be up against Northampton if you're waiting to catch that one. Half past 11 is the scheduled kickoff time for that. another substitution here going to happen for Cardinal Heenan and it's Hilary Anoff who is going to be coming on here the number 12 Andrea Gonzalez Luna having been the player down there to receive the treatment with that injury concern is the player there then withdraw Thank you, pardon. It wasn't Gonzalez Luna who was down receiving the treatment, but she is the player who has been taken off nonetheless. Cardinal Heenan with just the eight players on the field to play at the moment after the physio was on there. It's Jane Toure who is making her way back on now. The referee just going across the Toure. I think just telling Torre there that she needs to stay yeah, off the yeah. near side until yeah. the yeah. corner's been taken. It is work to do then here for Cardinal Heenan in defending this corner with the player less. Back to the action, it's driven low towards the near post area, cleared away though by Grant. Kielty. Torre is back on from this near side now for Cardinal Heenan. They did manage to deal with the corner. Yeah, she's needed on this field for sure. Seems to be the biggest threat. Forward there from McKee. It's cleared by Lola Dudley. Torre twisting, turning, trying to inspire an equalising goal here for Cardinal Heenan. Remember, it started so well when she got the opener. Brilliant footwork again there from Torre. Torre still going. Skip past the challenge of Georgie Webb. It goes out to behind for the corner. We're into the final 90 seconds of normal time. So all that attack here now. Sent long away from Rowe. Back down to the end of the field, exactly where Meg Buckland wants it. Torre after this, it looks promising. 
Torre evaded the first challenge as oh, well, slips oh. it through, it's Keelty but the offside flag goes up. Well the celebrations are going to be cut short, and it's not going to count but I'm not sure the Cardinal Heenan support know that yet. Yeah, just straight offside there, just couldn't quite hold the line. Big chance, it's a big chance. Yeah, it's a big decision from the linesman, the referee's assistant over on the far side. Looked to be just half a yard perhaps in behind that back line, just went a little early, Kilty. Yeah, just needs to try and hold the line a little bit there. Four minutes. Goes up on the fourth official's board. Four minutes for Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School here to find themselves an equaliser. And force penalty kicks. KLT. Again, back there on the cover was Ella Grace Rowe. It's a loose touch, but Cardinal Heenan still with the possession. On top now. Long ball forward, though, perhaps just ran out of patience in the midfield area, and it bounces back through to McKee. She will eat away a few precious seconds. Long up to the halfway line. Dudley got there first. Still sense there might be one late last opportunity in this, but brilliant play again from White. Oh, no. It's become the norm in this second <laughs> half, hasn't it? Yeah. Just unstoppable when she's got possession. There's a turnover. Guilty. Good defending again. Here's Cleared long up, but the offside flag is definitely going to go up for that one. Another substitution here then. We're going to see the introduction, the very late introduction of Molly Lake. But with an important job to do nonetheless out there for Egg Buckland. As they look to see this one through. Lake is coming on to replace Felicity Godfrey. be quite the dramatic finish now yeah. if Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School can find themselves the all-important so far elusive second half goal <laughs> forward there down the line into a dangerous area as well it's oh, out on the far play. side for the throw -in. It looked promising because they had players in the penalty yeah, area there, but they it just crossed that line. They did again players into that uh, attacking third now. Trying desperately to get that goal back. Egg Buckland Community College, less than a minute away now. It's cleared long, high, out of play on the far side. It looks like Hamley's just screening the, the, the back three there as well now. Back four, sorry. Just gone in there, trying to keep hold of this lead. And it's time for the throw in, and might that just get Egg Buckland over the line? All eyes now on the referee. How much longer will he let this run for? Egg Buckland very nearly there. And taking their time and who would blame them as well over the taking of the yeah, throw-in again. Yeah, definitely. So that game management now. See the game out. And the referee blows the full-time whistle. Cue the celebrations for Egg Buckland Community College. A turnaround having fallen behind in that first half. But goals from first, Maisie White. 
and then Ava Hambly mean that they run out 2-1 winners and very well deserved in the end as well Tony yeah it really was well deserved uh, you know really good victory and said at the turnaround coming to come from 1-0 down and for me they had you know some really good performances there as well superb turnaround I would say deserved winners in the end while you head down for the trophy presentations they will be coming next make sure you do stick with us for that but it has finished here 2-1 in favour of Egg Buckland Community College after Maisie White the star performer was the scorer of the first goal and provider for the second commiserations to Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School who fall short at the final hurdle here today but it's finished in the first game of the day and it's 2-1 in favour of Egg Buckland as we take a look again at the highlights it all started so well for Cardinal Heenan and they got that early goal after 20 minutes through Jane Toure tenacious wasn't she in working the shooting opportunity and a great finish as well but that was about as good as he got for Cardinal Heenan they had their moment of celebration Maisie White though in the first half just giving us a little teaser of what was to come that her goal in the first period weaved her way through just like the defenders weren't there at all the goalkeeper got her hand to it but it wasn't enough to keep the effort out and then this was the magic moment the all important moment for Egg Buckland as it was finished off there from close range by Ava Hambly and that was the moment that mattered ultimately There are the medals, there is the trophy. We will have the trophy presentation coming next. Make sure you stick with us. But it's Egg Buckland Community College here who are going to get their hands on the silverware. Well, here we go then for the trophy presentation. Up first, the match officials, the referee Evan Checkley, his assistant Steve Davis and Andy Smith. And the fourth official there, John Phillips, all step forward to take their medals. Yeah. 
Now the time to find out the winner of the play of the match and very well deserved. Maisie White, scorer of the equalising goal for Egg Buckland and provider of the second for them as well. Maisie White there confirmed as the player of the match as she steps forward to take her individual player of the match trophy. Posing for her photo. A day to remember, I'm sure, for all of the Egg Buckland Community College players. As she returns back to the squad to receive the congratulations. And it's commiserations then to Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School. Not the result that they wanted here today. Disappointment, of course, the overriding emotion for them at the moment. But hopefully, boss Kieran Gaffey can lift the spirits a little higher because it has been a really successful overall campaign for them. They've had to work so hard to even reach finals day here today. And hopefully, albeit not the result to look back on the way they wanted, hopefully it will still be an excellent occasion and memories to live on long for them to look back on as well. But today is a day for Egg Buckland. It's the moment that they have been made to wait for. And it didn't always look as though it was going to come as well when they fell behind in that first half. But the turnaround was superb. Player of the match, Maisie White, and led as well by skipper Ella Grace Rowe. But each and every one of these players played their part. Every single player in the squad there stepping forward to take their individual medals. The manager as well, Helen Mullerly, and her assistant, Mark Whaley. There's the trophy, that's the prize. And I'm sure the celebrations will continue long gone today for Egg Buckland and beyond when you think back to that penalty shootout win as well which helped them on route and then the wins in the quarterfinals and semi-finals as well both by narrow margins it's been a real team effort and they've been made to work hard for it as well but there they lift the trophy high very well deserved winners, Egg Buckland Community College get their hands on the silverware and lift the trophy high into the sky. The champions of the ESFA Girls Under 12's 9v9 PlayStation Schools Cup. The celebrations for Egg Buckland will continue. Once again, commiserations to Cardinal Heenan. It wasn't to be for them today. But congratulations to Egg Buckland as they pose for a few more photos. Make sure you stick with us as well, because up next we'll have the 9v9 Boys Under 12s Elite Schools Cup Final, as Cardinal Heenan will again be in action up against Northampton. But here, the champions, there, are Egg Buckland Community College. Congratulations! a final it could have gone either way a great way to kick off the week yeah really close final as you say it could have gone either way we're really disappointed to uh, to miss out a couple of chances here and there um, but yeah they were a great team they deserved winners and uh, yeah really happy for them and we'll be back next year to go again and it's such an achievement to even reach this stage there was so much talent in the side there you could really see it on the pitch this morning 
Yeah, we've said the whole way through every single game has been a battle, but they're such a fantastic team, work together. They're not just a team of individuals, they're a collective, they work so hard for each other and they deserve to get to this point and I've no doubt that we'll be back here again at some point in the next few years with this team. And you've had brilliant support all morning as well behind you in the stands. Absolutely incredible. What does it mean to reach the stage and those final thoughts as you leave us? Hopefully we'll see you next year. Yeah, it, it, it means so much. This is the first time that we've ever got here. I think it's 50 years ago since the last time a Cardinal Heenan School uh, got here. Um, so yeah, it means everything and the supporters to uh, set off. It was an early start from uh, Leeds, uh, but to come here in the numbers and show the support, yeah, it means everything. Well, thank you for being part of it. One more time, let's hear it for Cardinal Heenan, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll catch up with our winning coaches next. So I'm here with Coach Helen, you were back again this year, didn't quite get over the line last year, but this year it's all about that gold medal. Oh, amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, last year, um, yeah, we unfortunately lost out, but this year the girls stepped up and absolutely smashed it, so yeah, couldn't be prouder. It really was a very close final. This lady here was one of the brilliant performers for your side, alongside Maisie White as well. There were so many key roles in that side. Yeah, but at the end of the day, every single one of those girls played their part, and without every single one of them, we wouldn't have won, but fantastic. And I mean, what a great way to cap off the season as well, with the phenomenal support of those parents and loved ones supporting these young athletes as well. It's really been great to see you here at the Hawthorns. Yeah, the parents, we can't, you know, they, they are amazing. They travel with us, they go everywhere. But back at school at Ed Buckland Community College, I know that they're all watching in the drama studio, cheering us on. So, yeah, amazing. Well, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Ed Buckland Community College. And on the way, still plenty coming here on the SFA TV for the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023.
Welcome back then to the Hawthorns, the home of West Bromwich Albion. We have already seen one game played this morning. This the second of five to bring to you today in the ESFA National Finals for the PlayStation Schools Cup. Here it is the final for the boys under 12s Elite Schools Cup competition. It is Cardinal Heenan Catholic School taking on Northampton School for boys. Well, the two teams then are out onto the field of play. Let's take a look at how they line up. For Cardinal Heenan, in goal is Oliver Rain. The rest of their starting lineup is then made up of Max Tyne, Francis Boggan, the captain, Gerard Greaves, Stephen Rosen, Blake Reed, Will Apter, Zach Gardner, and Anthony Seddon. They are led by manager Ian Forgy. As for Northampton, in goal is Luke Stroman. And then the rest of their starting nine today, named by manager Josh Melling, are Jack Denning, Rubens Nebatumbu, Talal Bittar. The captain is Charlie Ablett, Charlie Cotton, Alfie Hillier, Samuel Wardle and Harry Painter. As for the two sets of substitutes, both sides with five available options from their substitute bench. Daniel McCormack, Harrison Carroll, Fabian De Berg, Max Askew, the substitute goalkeeper, and Jake Holmes are the options for Cardinal Heenan. As for Northampton, their substitute bench is made up of Joseph Keenan, Tommy Ashton, Jaden Toe, the substitute goalkeeper, Jude Friend, and Jaden Smart. Well, Tony, looking forward to this game as well. Then we've already seen the under-12s girls final today. Cardinal Heenan runners up in that one. Let's see if they can take goal here today in the boys' elite schools competition. But I'm sure Northampton will have different ideas. Yeah, very much so. As I said, the boys are in the final as well, trying to get to, if they can get a victory here for their score. But I'm looking, really looking forward to this game. I've just watched both teams in the warm-up, and I was really, really impressed with. Uh, you know, the way they've been organised in that warm-up. So it'll be interesting how, if they can translate that onto the game of play. Two captains there having just come together in the centre circle. Charlie Ablett with the captain's armband on for Northampton. And the skipper for Cardinal Heenan is Francis Boggan. Plenty of support in the house as well on this near side. To the main camera position, uh, commentary position up on the gantry here at the Hawthorns. As the referee blows his whistle and we get underway immediately on the attack here, Cardinal Heenan into the penalty area. It's headed out and dealt with for now. Good sliding challenge, which puts the ball out for the game's first throw in. A quick start there by uh, Cardinal Heenan there. With a good ball in to the box. Hooked forward there, mate. Charlie Ablett, but he wasn't able to latch onto the other end of it. It's bouncing around the edge of the penalty area, taking charge now is Apter, still Apter! And it's just wide of that near post, not far away at all. Still inside the opening minute. Yeah, he's unlucky there, the, a superb play, yeah, there, Cardinal already putting the pressure on. There, win the ball high up the field, creating that chance on his left-hand side. And I think he might have touched the outside the post there, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it did just take a nick yeah. off the outside yeah, of the woodwork as yeah, it went through. Yeah, a decent strike. Yeah, it did, yep. Mm. Yeah, not far away at all. The goalkeeper was in position at the near post, but it could have caught him out. Cardinal Heenan again here coming forward, looking to certainly start this game on the front foot. Brilliant ball up there to the runner, Blake Reed. Just forced wide, though. Gardner trying to weave a way through. It's cleared away, but it's Northampton at the moment who are on the back foot early on. Yeah, really strong start here by Cardinal Heenan. On the front foot. Bouncing ball in behind down the other end for Northampton to try to get after. They have as well. The goalkeeper's not going to get there. Oh, and it's cleared off the line. Superb defending 
Northampton's first opportunity, but it comes and goes begging for them. First bit of attacking play. What fantastic defending, I must say, there. Broke, broke through. Super, super defending. Tenacious play oh, to get there good. first. Just couldn't provide the finish, Samuel Wardle. Yeah. The clearance away from the covering defender back on so the goal yeah. line. Yeah, painted so well there. Watch his little head there. He's purposely played in his path. And fantastic block off the line. Super stuff there. The captain, Francis Boggan, with the clearance. And what an important clearance, goal line clearance that could prove to be as well. Now down the other end, Seddon is on his bike after it, but unable to catch it. Both sides having come out of the blocks really fast here in the opening couple of minutes. Yeah, it's been a, a frenetic start for both teams here. Frantic so far, it's taken short there from the goal kick. Never Tumbu just run himself into a little bit of tr trouble. Apter into the penalty area, cuts it back. It's cleared away but only as far as Reed. Reed then though held up. And that's the cue for Northampton to try to break away. How does the referee see that one? He's happy with it. Mm. Harry Painter ended up down on the floor, but the referee was happy with the challenge. Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that one there, to be fair. Nice turn. Good ball as well. Out to Wardle on this near left flank. Wardle's made the run off the ball as well. Goes over onto the right side. Wardle still in the centre. It's a shooting opportunity though. Here and there's the goal. 1 0. Northampton score for boys. Have the early advantage. Still inside the first five minutes. And Northampton are a goal to the good. Fantastic team play that was. Starting the midfield area. Broke it out wide, some fantastic passing, and what a fantastic finish. Great goal. Hillier that, with yes. the finish, and Look what a brilliant finish. finish it was. Ruthless, it. Superb finish. Keeper had absolutely no chance. Down the other end, though, it's defending to do here at the moment oh, for Northampton. Well played. Across the face of goal, it's end to end stuff at the moment, Tony. Yeah, it is, it really is. Really excited, both teams playing some really good football. Freddy ball through, and oh, oh, where's that one going to end up? It's oh. off the crossbar. After the touch from the goalkeeper, hits the woodwork to the rescue for Northampton. Yeah, fantastic response there, so unlucky. What a good In the end, the keeper's done really well. Pull that save, what a great uh, through ball. Shot across there. Greaves unlucky, good save by the keeper. Greaves denied by a combination of the goalkeeper and the crossbar and the corner. As a result of that was swung into the danger zone, but the resultant effort has blazed high up over the crossbar. You know what, Isaac? It's a fantastic response there by, by uh, Carl him Heenan. Having gone, gone, gone down, having started so well, gone down to a fantastic goal, but the response has been superb. And the start prior to conceding as well was pretty good from Cardinal Heenan. It's just that one moment, isn't it, for Northampton when they took full advantage. Alfie Hillier with the goal after just four minutes. Been a really entertaining watch this and still in the very early stages of course said in there with the header on Gardner has it now for Cardinal Heenan Gardner across the face of goal oh. just the outside of the foot stabbed effort really from Blake Reed. wasn't far away yeah Gardner's a threat at that on that left hand side and he cuts it in, got across the defender, he was unlucky, just couldn't wrap his foot around it. 
real threat down his left hand side Gardner it's going to go long then from the goalkeeper it does from the right boot of Stroman bouncing ball which needs to be dealt with it's not and then on the follow up it was there for the shooty chance it was Samuel Wardle who latched onto the end of it yeah Northampton picking up these seconds fresh from these long uh, long balls reading them really well great challenge there just couldn't get couldn't wrap his foot around that one goalkeep that time taken short from the Cardinal Heenan number one rain but they can't play their way out from the back on that occasion Referee gives the free kick there for uh, pushing the back, I think. Wide delivery, perhaps, here for Northampton. A couple of options then stand behind this. A right-footed option and a left as well. It is going to be the left-footed delivery. It was a pass in the end. Neatly played. It's still there. Cut back as well. Is it going to break for here? And it's oh. just wide. It was off the post in the end. Thought that one was going to drop wide, but it was back off the woodwork. So well, both yeah, teams yeah, now yeah. having been denied by the upright. That's going to be a foul. Some creative football by Northampton. An absolute joy to watch. Such a great free kick. Really worked, really well worked. Superbly done. Pose. He, put, he couldn't do anything else there. Put it across there. Into the penalty area. It's hung up high. There from the resultant free kick after the foul. It's been a breathless start. And we're still inside the opening 10 minutes. 1 0 to Northampton. But coming forward now, Cardinal Heenan. Oh, Lovely sorry. return ball. Into the penalty area went apt it. But it was well defended. i tell you what, some really, some really good football played there. Breaking through there. Apt it. Really good feet, breaking through that central midfield area. In the end, it's good defending. So it's one end to the next at the moment. Good covering defending by Jack Denning, who was across from the right side of defence to sweep up the lurking danger there. There will still here be a corner for Northampton to defend, though. Reed's delivery, it's a good one as well. It breaks all the way through. And it's going to go out and behind for another corner. This time from over on the far side. Yeah, put ball in a good area there. And swinging delivery towards the near post area, but the referee is going to halt proceedings ordering a retake of the corner referee Andy Smith happy for that corner to be taken now again it's a good ball into the danger zone broke out onto the edge where Apter was out to the original corner taken now lovely footwork past the first challenge might get past the second as well he did there Anthony Seddon Nice footwork as then Northampton tried to send it long and hit back with a counter punch of their own. Wardle. There's an option in the centre with Painter waiting. Wardle. Out onto the edge here for Abbott. Over the bar. Yeah, good effort for Abbott. Difficult, difficult chance out there. Struck it well, but it was high. He's running things in that midfield area there, just patrolling that one. Everything going through him. Yeah, difficult chance, just couldn't keep it down. Northampton there just dropping and allowing Cardinal Heenan to play the goal kick short. It's only coming back though. Well defended, well dealt with there by Greaves. He remembers the player denied 
when Strowman made the save onto the crossbar. Apter, dispossessed that time though, here's Painter. Twisting, turning, could do with some support. Back to Ablett. Apter's ball initially was just against his own teammate. Eventually it goes out on the far side. Painter held up there by Boggan. Just stayed down there as well, yeah. Harry Painter. Yeah. It's a concern for Northampton. It's led the line well so far for he, them, but... He, he, yes. Yeah, he, he, yeah, really has, yeah, he's held he's held the line really, really well. Had that shot against the post. So I'm a bit unfortunate with that. He's been strong there. Everything's gone through Painter. Hopefully he's not too seriously injured. Well, 1-0 to Northampton then. Here in the first half of the second game today. 1-0 was actually the scoreline that they won their semi-final by when they beat Riddles down away from home. Long, long way to go here, of course. Very impressively, though, they've actually only conceded one goal in the competition en route to the final here. That's Northampton, yeah, so... Yeah. And you can actually see why, to be fair, they're a very, very well-organised team. In fact, both are, to be quite honest with you, but Northampton are well-organised. They take the time. You can see they work real hard on their set pieces on all of them as well. Yeah, well, a goal to the good here, Northampton, but with this concern, as Harry Painter is still down on the deck. If Cardinal Heenan are going to get the result that they want, then they're going to have to... Find at least one goal as the game progresses. Northampton, in that sense, would have to concede. Let's have a look at the goal again, then. This was the moment for Northampton, wasn't it, Tony? Yeah, fantastic ball out. Lovely play here, as you can see. But look where he, took, he takes this one. And what a fantastic strike. Keeper has absolutely no chance with that. Lovely little flick out there. Great first touch. See, so it that touch there. And rifled in. Fantastic finish. Yeah, and, cue and the well Northampton yeah. celebrations. Yeah, well deserved. Back to his feet now is Painter, which is always good to see, just being helped out over on the far side, but it looks as though he will return to the field to continue. As we get back to the action. Nebatumbu across on the cover. It's gone out here for the throw. Nebatumbu with the throw in. The referee penalises for the push in the back. There wasn't too much in that one, but no. the referee felt there was enough in, enough in there to award this free kick. It's to be taken now by Ablett. It's a good looking good ball area. as well, never tumble oh. on the end of it. It's into a great area. Yeah, big chance there. Great. You're from the set plays there. Northampton are oh, superb. Put it right in that area. Will attacked by right, uh, never tumble. Couldn't really get on the end of it there. Need to head that one across the goalkeeper. Referee blows his whistle for the foul. Free kick will be for Cardinal Heenan. Long ball forward from that free kick. It breaks out onto oh. the edge as well, but didn't quite catch that one how he wanted to there.
the noise levels just begin to rise again here at the Hawthorns both sets of travelling fans and supporters from the schools trying to urge their respective sides on really good energy isn't it from the, from the crowd here as well good touch said in the head of the ball at the moment Apter with it at his feet Apter Managed to wriggle oh, away from the first ball, challenge. Yeah. Good ball through as well. It's Bracky to Seddon. Oh. One each. Anthony Seddon provides the equalising goal. And we're back all square. And a lot of praise going to go to Apter there again. One of those amazing runs. Kept good, good control of the ball. And we did that as well. He knows heads down. He had the awareness to play that pass into there. Broke down to Seddon. And what a fantastic finish there across the goalkeeper. Super goal. 1-1. One, one. Back level and all to play for again. As we take a look at the replay, it really was brilliant work from Apter. Look at it, it's got the awareness here. Now here's the one, slip it through. It's just, it blocked, fell through. Great finish. Half an opportunity there as well, just as we were looking at the replay. It's Cardinal Hinn and went on the attack once more. Nothing came of that in the end as Northampton were able to deal with the danger on that occasion but again another warning sign I think you mentioned Tony that it had been a good response from Cardinal Heenan having fallen behind and they've now got their just rewards for that a yeah, really good response not much to be, as this is not much between the two teams there both playing really good football Wow, it's worth another lock. Just as it broke through. Yeah, initial good block there. A great finish. Substitution then here being readied. It's the first of the game. With the roll-on, roll-off substitutes. Tommy Ashton here is coming on to replace Jack Denning. Is the that's the first change to be made by Josh Melling, the Northampton boss. presume though Tony that both managers will be relatively happy with what they've seen from their respective teams so far there's definitely been an, an, an attacking intent about both sides out there yeah it really has and you know it's, it's played at such a hectic pace as well but the football and the pass has been superb you know both teams playing really good football yep I think both managers are really pleased at the moment still 10 minutes to play until half time Again, it's going to be another free kick here. And the referee was unhappy with hands in the back. Wide left-footed delivery then by the looks of things. Indeed it is. It's a ball swung into the penalty area. Not cleared away as of yet. Managed to deal with the danger now though. Tommy Ashton, the substitute who's just come on for Northampton over there on the far side. He's slotted in on the right side of defence. Having come on to replace Jack Denning. That's a like-for-like -like switch out there. Taken down nicely. Apter. Rosen. Out onto the left flank. Plenty of bodies here yeah, in the penalty so area. Fair. Trying to cut that one back there, Zach Gardner. He's a real threat down that left-hand side, Gardner. Really impressed with him. Ball there was intended back to Gardner, but he was in an offside position anyhow. He's certainly been a threat though, hasn't he, over on that left wing? Yeah, yes, yes. Wants to get that, get it out wide, get those crosses in, going down the outside. Drops the, drops the shoulder really, really well.
time with the pass there across. Cardinal Heenan just enjoying the better spell of possession at the moment. Good ball here up to Reed. Maybe a shooting chance. It breaks out onto the edge of the penalty area. Then should be dealt with by Wardle. But he's then been robbed of possession. Into the penalty area now. Apter. It was struck by the oncoming Seddon. Stephen Rowson, it was, I beg your pardon, with the effort on goal, but by the way, it was quickly blocked away. Now down the other end for Northampton, but that one will trickle back through to the goalkeeper. And that's a stop which Rain will make all day long. Yeah, ambitious strike there, especially had two, two of his teammates ahead of him there. Painter. Still painter, will go for goal and very nearly find it as well. Just a whisker wide as it flashed by the upright. That was some strike by painter, really was. Struck that extremely well. Whizzed, whizzed across the uh, far, far post. Super effort, great strike. Just flashed wide of that far post, not far away at all. Very nearly restored the once intact but no longer intact Northampton early lead Graves here will take charge of throwing taking duties for Cardinal Heenan but just being marched back to the correct position from which to take this throw in from Again, looking direct for the number nine, but couldn't find Touch. Seddon that time. It's a long-range strike opted for. It breaks back on the rebound as well. Second ball was there for Harry Painter, but never quite broke his way. Sliding challenge and a good sliding tackle as well. Now Northampton on the attack. They've got bodies forward as well, joining the attack. Arturo, really good defending there, because they're outnumbered four versus four, four v three. And really well defended. Shepherded him out. Yeah, it just seemed to have the overload there, yeah, didn't they, did, momentarily, yes, Northampton. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Captain Boggan there. Saw the danger. Saw it out. Yeah, Ashton it was with the flurry forwards for Northampton, but held up well by Francis Boggan at the back for Cardinal Heenan. Sent back to the goalkeeper, then forward from Strowman. Picking up possession here, Greaves, away from the first challenge, Greaves. Intercepted initially, then the effort on goal is... Straight at the goalkeeper, but certainly enough power behind it, just not quite the direction. Yeah, after again, good strike. Straight at the keeper, as I said. Bouncing ball there was dealt with well by Oliver Rain. Out of his penalty area quickly with a good starting position. This was the previous effort, just as it broke back there. Apter. Good challenge. Never Tumbu timed that one to perfection. Loose ball as Cardinal Heenan give possession back. And Northampton as well get the free kick. Both teams work rate superb at the moment. Really is working really hard in and out of possession. Cotton couldn't work a way around Rosen. Boggan starting the attack there as he brought the ball forwards. Yeah. Seddon yeah. then was looking to bring teammates into play again with Gardner over on that left wing. Yeah, good break by Boggan there. Brought it out from the back. Double change then here being readied for Northampton. 
Jaden Smart is the first of the two to come on as he is introduced in place of Samuel Wardle. The second change will see Jaden Toe here come on and he is going to replace Charlie Cotton. So a double change for Northampton as we close in on half time. Three changes that Northampton have now made in this first half. Cardinal Heenan still with their same starting nine out there that began the game. Greaves with the throw in there back to Rosen back again to Greaves high ball into the penalty area Nebatumbu took charge of it the goalkeeper came but it was taken out of his hands by the defender it's a foul given there against the recently introduced substitute Tope yeah I agree with that this was a foul there a wide area then here for what looks to be a right-footed delivery yeah. as Will Apsa stands behind it just the one man in the wall Apsa with the ball in towards the back stick and the header drops back to the goalkeeper looking to get on with things quickly there as well Stroman looking to turn defence into attack quickly Painter Smart back to Painter looking to return it back to Smart perhaps referee wasn't interested in any claim for a potential penalty didn't look to be a foul in there long range strike is high and wide in the end there was a definite intent there though wasn't there Tony for yeah. Northampton to get forward straight away once they got the ball with their goalkeeper he set the counter attack alight yeah they've done that a couple of times as well and with, with good success it's a fantastic feat we saw there by Sedham he's on a high after his goal yeah Northampton win a need to playing direct but they're catching up play as well yeah Sedham holds the ball extremely well Four minutes still to play, indicated by the fourth official John Phillips at the end of this first half. It's a substantial period of stoppage time at the end of this 30-minute first half period. Still time for either of the two sides to find themselves the goal, to give themselves the lead going into the break. Ablett. Painter. Painter, good ball. Back in onto the edge of the penalty oh. area. Brilliant save. What a stop that is from Rain. Fantastic save there. Struck extremely well again. By the captain. Ablett and a fantastic save by Rain. Brilliant athleticism with the stop from the Cardinal Heenan goalkeeper involved in the Everton Academy set up the goalkeeper there and well you can see why oh, as oh. he's forced into action again yeah. I think he might have got a touch yeah, on that the I defender so. certainly okay. did and there's an opportunity oh, away down oh, the other end Apton was he caught yeah, there yeah. yes he was yeah, yeah. Yeah. and the referee oh, has yeah. a decision to make well it was a cynical oh. challenge as Cardinal Heenan were away on the counter attack again it's end to end action it really is Apt again, the big, real big threat there. Clean through, well, not so much clean through. Show him a clean pair of heels. Like to see that one again. Yeah, yeah, whoa, took him out. Do we have a covering man in the edge? We caught on with you. There's a covering man there for him, but definite free kick. Yeah, well, the referee has refrained from producing a card for that. Wouldn't have been surprised to see a yellow out for that. It was a cynical challenge, definitely 
wasn't a red because of the covering defender Apta was taken out though as he was away on the counter and that's why we have then this free kick but it was the opportunity down the other end as well from the corner yeah. which is Similar. not to be forgotten when yeah. the clearance was made on the goal line and I think Rain might have just got a touch on it as well yeah, it was a good save Greaves not what he was looking for no, no, but such an end to end game I mean, we haven't discussed that one with that save on the line it's a fantastic save well let's take a look at that again then it was just after the the rain save which brought oh, about the fantastic corner fantastic save it really was really good header it's kept him in the game goalkeeper there didn't really get off the ground Northampton though are able to bring the ball forwards the challenge well defended swept forward by Ablett and with a couple of runners in behind as well still trying to find a way through Ooh. did manage to find a way through Painter wasn't able to hit the target yeah so unlucky there really was what a threat he is Painter there was just given a talking to by the referee Andy Smith for his complaints, but definitely a threat on the attack, yeah, isn't he? It really is, it really is. Gets on the end, end of things, closes the ball down. Never, you know, the defence is always on their toes with him. Well, half time then, as the referee brings this first half to its conclusion, one apiece at the midway point. Cardinal Heenan having drawn back level through Anthony Seddon after Alfie Hillier's opening goal after just four minutes but it's been an end-to-end -end really entertaining first half hasn't it Tony? Yes it really has yeah definitely really good game both teams lovely set plays really good goals some good uh, saves by keepers as well you know it's had everything this first half you know it certainly has but, yeah if you see some of the chances in, in here yes yeah, so we take a look at the highlights from that first half yeah. That was a very early yeah, effort inside the, the first minute, if I remember rightly, yeah. against the outside mm -hmm. of the post. Yeah. It wasn't too long after that that the goal then yeah, did come. Seddon, yeah. Watch his touch here. Beautiful play by Seddon. Cleared off the line. Closing him down. And that's a fantastic header. But what a great block off the line there. It was a really important one there. This then was the goal. When the moment came. Oh, fantastic uh, ball play. For Northampton. And what a finish. Keep had absolutely no chance into the roof of the net. It's his first touch here. If you watch his first touch across the defender. Sat up lovely for him. Uh, boom. Keep had no chance. Yeah, no stopping that one. Cardinal Heenan then did hit back with a good response. They did have opportunities for an equaliser before it did eventually come for them in that first half. That was a good save from the goalkeeper with the help of the woodwork as well. But this was the equalising goal. Someone this, wasn't it, by Apta? Cutting inside. Had the awareness to play inside. Good defending there, though, but what a finish this is. Hitting the target right across the goalkeeper. Had no chance. Actually, it's so superb, superb there. As you can see, his awareness. But that's a great finish. Yeah, right into the bottom corner. And that means at half time, it's one apiece in the ESFA Under 12s Boys Elite Schools Cup final. Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School level at the midway point with Northampton School for Boys. Don't go anywhere. We've got the second half coming up shortly.
So it's half time here at the Hawthorns in the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023. And we are doing a competition all all along the Schools Cup competition, all four days of the footballing action here at the Hawthorns with Cameraman Keys and Cameraman Matt. Say hi to Matt and Keys. Hi, Matt and Keys. So what we want you to do is when your team score, react in the most crazy way possible. The school that reacts the best over the four days will be winning themselves a whole load of prizes from our good mates at PlayStation. So I think the only way that we can fully get what we've got to do is if we do a practice right now with both Northampton School for Boys and Cardinal Heath. Where are my Cardinal Heath fans? Cardinal Heath? All right, if we get you back to your seats all quickly, what we're going to do, we're going to pretend that Cardinal Heath have just scored and I need you to do the most crazy reaction possible to hopefully win those PlayStation goodies. All right, so if we, Cameron Keys, if we look at me and then we'll swing over to Cardinal Heath as soon as we score. All right. So Cardinal Heath already in their positions. And after three, Cardinal Heath have just scored. One, two, three, Cardinal Heath have scored! Oh, Matt from PlayStation, are you impressed so far? Matt was impressed, but you know what? Let's see what Northampton School for Boys can do as well we'll get cameraman keys and cameraman matt in their positions ready remember the best reaction of the whole four days for the schools cup will be winning themselves some prizes with our good mates at playstation if you haven't already do check out the gaming area underneath the concourse you can't miss it right we'll get our cameramen in place get ready northampton yeah moms and dads you get, get gotta get involved as well you gotta set the example here I've seen you in Oceania before. I know how much you can react and dance. Let's see if we can get some of that. All right. So after three, same again. We're going to pretend that Northampton School for Boys have just scored. Feel free to do the shoes off again if you want to, because the great thing here is the teachers have no power. You can make as much noise as you possibly want. All right. So Northampton School for Boys. One, two, three. Northampton School for Boys have just scored. Oh, wow! Cameraman Matt from PlayStation, what did you think of that? Oh, oh, you think they can do... You know what, let's see if we can get everybody to cheer together. Let's go, let's go to the centre of the pitch and see how loud the Hawthorns could be. Because I've got a pretty good feeling for the first day, this is going to be setting the example for the rest of the week. Alright, so, live on ESFA TV. We're gonna go really quiet, and then as soon as I hit three, I want you to make as much noise as possible. I want cameraman Matt to be knocked over. In one, two, three, Hawthorns, let's hear ya! Uh, I don't know, I think we can do better. We want both Cardinal Heath and Northampton School for Boys at the same time. Hawthorns, let's hear you. one, two, three! Oh, very good indeed. Very good indeed. Hawthorns, are you ready for your second half? It's coming up next here at the Hawthorns with the ESFA PlayStation Schools Cup 2023.
Welcome back then for the second half here at the Hawthorns, the home of West Bromwich Albion. And we are nearly ready for this second half to begin. It is 1-1 Tony Daly at half time between Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School and Northampton School for Boys. And it's set up nicely for this second period. Yeah, it really is. And I said some really good football from both teams that first half. Who's going to start the quickest? Who's going to get this that goal? We need to see there as well. Both teams on on equal for me. Then you know some good uh, football fight by both teams. Yeah, and we saw a couple of great saves late on in that first half from the Cardinal Heenan shot stopper Oliver Rain, one of four players actually in the Cardinal Heenan camp to play in the Everton Academy, alongside teammates Captain Francis Boggan, Will Apter, and Zach Gardner, all of whom have been influential really in that first half for Cardinal Heenan as they here return back out onto the field two well matched teams from what we saw of it in that first period but there can only be one winner 30 minutes left of play and if we are still level come full time then it will be straight to penalty kicks to determine the winner yeah it really is balanced at the moment with that first half you know with spells where we, we, we saw um, you know Cardinal Hinn starts off really well and then Northampton start to run the show and then it balances back again you know it's been one of those games well let's see which way it will begin at the start of this second half then and it's Northampton here who will get the ball moving again at the start of this second period Half-time substitution for Cardinal Heenan has seen the introduction of Daniel McCormack, who has come on to replace Blake Reed for Ian Forgey's side. It's a free kick here for Northampton, attacking the goal to the right in the second half. Good ball oh. in as well, and it was met too. Just had to rise high for it though, and that meant that Painter wasn't able to divert the header how he wanted. Yeah, good ball into that into the area, pinch area there. Floated two men at the end of it, pressed if you had a call there. Yeah, good delivery though from the captain yeah, again, Ablett. It was. Greaves there has given the ball away. He was closed down well by Hillier, the goal scorer. Remember in that first half for Northampton. Forward from the hands of the goalkeeper. Greaves sent it back. It's connected there by Ablip, but only momentarily. Forward then from Rousen. There's a runner to the left here for Cardinal Heenan. Hung up high towards the back stick, but just too much on it. There's a really inviting, enticing ball in. There's a great ball into the box there. No one on the end of that one. Stroman will restart here with the goal kick. Again, the referee gives the foul. Pretty central position here, albeit a long way out. It is an effort on goal, and it wasn't too far over. What a tremendous strike there by Ablett. Got hold of it, wasn't too far over. Really yeah, well, good strike. He's been the player on set piece, taking yeah, duties yes. for yeah. Northampton, and once again behind that one. It just dipped, didn't it? Yeah, but didn't it did. quite dip it in did. time. Mm -hmm. ball forward there from the goal kick but it was only against the head of Nebatumbu mentioned the Cardinal Heenan players in the Everton Academy well 
Rubens Nevertumbu is in the Leicester City Academy setup. In behind Nevertumbu here goes the substitute McCormack, but he wasn't able to prevent the ball from just running out of play. There's a good little turn there, just ran out of play though, couldn't keep it in. Referee just holding things at the moment whilst Rousam just retied his bootlaces, but back to his feet now. As the header is flicked on there into the penalty area. Still there for Northampton. Out to the goal scorer Hillier. Into the centre and into the corner. <laughs> Northampton have their lead back. And it hasn't taken long at the start of this second half. A really good finish there. What a superb goal. Again, good play by Northampton. Initially, it was a direct ball that was played up. Cut, beautiful cut back and a great finish. Martin Renke could, could keep that one out. Really good finish into the corner. Purposely done. What a great finish. Super goal. Jaden two with the finish. The substitute, the man of the moment for Northampton. Right into that far corner. It evaded the goalkeeper. Northampton back ahead and Cardinal Heenan again with the work to do. Yeah, and straight back up the field again, creating a corner, straight back at it. Outswinging delivery from that corner. It's headed off target away from goal. Northampton remember having only conceded the one goal in the competition this season before today. They've conceded the one goal today as well, but Cardinal Heenan need to do something that their predecessors in the competition before them haven't been able to do in scoring two against Northampton. You can see the team shout the really, really well organised. Northampton from set plays. When they play that longer ball, they're always, always on the end of it, make it so difficult. Here we go again. Flick header on there and behind after it was Painter. Looked for a moment as though he was going to get there. Said and wants the ball there, got it as well. Tried to play the first time pass. Then now it's over onto the right, but that was cut out. It's been superb, Ablett. Painter here. We'll go for goal. It's another good stop. Rain again makes the save. Really good strike there. And Rain again, really good save. Put out to safety. That one just bounces out of play. It will be a goal kick. Nearly 37 minutes gone. Northampton. Since the restart, having restored the advantage that was theirs for only 13 minutes in that first half before Anthony said and got the equaliser. But back ahead now, Northampton, after the Jaden 2 goal. Never Tombu, strong, good defending. The referee felt otherwise. Let's give it a foul. Another substitution ready and waiting to happen here. It's going to be the reintroduction of Charlie Cotton. Yeah, maybe he did just have a hold of the shirt there. Never tumble as he just tried to outmuscle his opponent. So the substitution then here is going to see Charlie Cotton come back on, having started the game. Cotton will slot back in with Charlie Ablett, who's been very impressive in the middle of the park for Northampton. High 
High ball swung into the penalty area, but it was headed out by Nebatumbi. Now they're away on the counter attack as well, and with plenty of bodies streaming forward. The white shirts joining the attack. Good challenge, though. Just did enough to hold Painter up to begin with. Then the header is out of the penalty area, only as far as two, though. Back now with Nebatumbi. There's a chance for a break there. 2v2. Well defended. Out here to Gardner. Just coming infield from that left flank. Gardner will go for goal. He's always rising. Goalkeeper happy to see that one rise over his crossbar. Yeah, Korea couldn't keep that one down then on his left hand side. Angle, angle's always tight for him. It was a good strike, but couldn't keep it down. It's a tight angle. away there for Cardinal Heen and this near left wing after it is their goal scorer Seddon it was swept up well the clearance didn't get off the ground but Northampton managed to deal with it at least to begin with in fact now for the Cardinal Heen and throw in it's the Northampton school for boys support that are the happier at the moment with this slender one goal advantage trying to feed that one through it's a good ball as well goal scoring opportunity but it's a good save really good stop again from Rain yeah. another his tally of stops yeah. is totting up now isn't it yeah. really is fantastic save from the break Just coming back from an offside position there was Painter. And the linesman did put the flag up, but the referee was happy for the game to continue as he didn't touch the ball. It was Painter who was denied as well by Rain at that previous time of asking. Painter again couldn't quite take hold of that one, and it was a bit of a, a crunching challenge on the defender who just before taking the ball away this was the opportunity the ball. really good save stood up and denied painter there referee there just having a word with a player from either side just laying down the law to both Alfie Hillier and the Cardinal Heenan captain Francis Bargain Another substitution is being readied on this near side. It's going to be a change as well for Northampton. Standing by in the wings at the moment. It's Northampton here coming forward as well. Good ball up to Painter. Painter then tried to play the ball round the corner to the latest scorer, Tote. Greaves sends it out for the corner. Corner kick then here to be delivered for Northampton. It's going to be taken by Hilliot. Four white shirts to aim at in the penalty area. It's a good looking ball in as well. It was flipped on in the end by Cotton, but good goalkeeping from Rain out to the corner of his penalty area to go over and collect that. Now it's Cardinal Heenan looking to go down the other way. Apter still going Apter managed to offload to the right but 
just had slightly too much on, just slightly overtook the pass from McCormack. Yeah, good defending then by Nibatambu. Wardle is back on here for Northampton. Latest change having been made. Just seen the withdrawal of Alfie Hilliot. Really good ball out. Oh. oh, lovely play from Toe into the penalty area. Manages to set it back as well. It's across oh. the face of goal and it's in. <laughs> what a goal that is. Northampton have themselves a caution. Two goals to the good. And it's a mountain to climb now for Cardinal Heenan. Finished off at the back stick. Samuel Wardle, the scorer, just back on from the substitute's bench and with an immediate impact. Yeah, what a great introduction. Fantastic play by Toad, to be fair, as well, in there. Flashed across the uh, goal. What a finish. Where he should be, trapping that far post. Super play by Wardle in the right area. Good goal. It looks a very difficult task in hand now, doesn't it, for Cardinal Heenan? Yeah, they'll have to have a go at this now, wouldn't they, to be fair? Against a very well-organised Northampton side, very hard to break down. Big ask, not impossible, but a big ask. Yeah, well, it's just the goal that Northampton were looking for. It's been the second half that they would have been craving. I'm sure the manager will be delighted with their second half, but second half performance in particular after the referee plays the advantage out over onto the right wing forward then for Rosen Rosen hangs that one up towards the back stick it's still oh. there as well and it wasn't far away you know Gardner with the shooting opportunity and it was only just over super effort there it was unlucky there Gardner It would chop back. Just couldn't keep it down. Swept up there at the back as it goes out for the throw in over on the far side. Nearly 47 minutes played now. What a second half it has been for Northampton. Yellow card there was brought out of the pocket of the referee. Good play by Toe. Working really hard there from the front as well. Which is what they need to do now to see this game out. Confirmation that it was Stephen Rousen there shown the yellow card. It's the first yellow card that we've seen this morning. He's just involved in a little bit of a, a scuffle. Again, the referee gives the foul. Well, he's definitely been consistent with the decisions that he's given to the hands in the back, albeit if the attacking player hasn't gone down to ground. Cormac after it, but it was always oh, asking too much of him to catch that one. <laughs> 
so far so good then here for Northampton and their B team will actually be in action as well later today at half past three the kickoff time for their final the final for the B teams when they'll face Shenfield such a success story for the school even in just reaching these national finals games but if they can go on to pick up the silverware here then that really stands in good stead for later as well with their B team Apter was fouled he's taken the kick quickly as well there Northampton really working so hard it's never free pass for Cardinal at all this moment Jaden 2 then the scorer of the second goal for Northampton is to re be replaced by the scorer of the first Alfie Hillier who got it all started for Northampton he is back on good turn in possession forward here goes Ashton just holds back now as Hillier was in possession but only for a couple of seconds okay. nice touch in there from Seddon as he just set it back but nothing came of it in the aftermath just trying to link the play there though Seddon yeah, and did, bring yeah. teammates he in un he was unlucky he was unlucky and through the legs there of Apter, who was unfortunate. Oh, what a pass. Excellent ball through, but the offside flag is raised. Mm -hmm. It looked a tight one. Ablett, what fantastic vision there was. Fortunately, unfortunately, he was offside. What a fantastic pass. There he goes. Sees his man move in. Played it inside his man. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was very tight, that one. Yeah, well, you couldn't see from the replay where the player on the far side actually was when the ball was played but he certainly wasn't far in behind when he received it and it seemed to suggest that it was definitely a tight call seen out and behind really well defended Ashton there just got his body in between the Cardinal Heenan man and the ball to see out and behind Make sure you go over to the ESFA Twitter page at Schools Football to take part in the player of the match vote. The poll over on Twitter is now live. Two nominations from either side for the player of the match award. Oliver Rain and Zach Gardner for Cardinal Heenan. And then Charlie Ablett and Harry Painter for Northampton. At Schools Football is the Twitter handle for that. Forward here come Cardinal Heenan and they get themselves a corner. They're still going forward, Cardinal Heenan. Still trying to get that a goal to make it really interesting. And towards the near post area, it's dealt with there though. And room to bring it forwards as well. Momentary there had an overload in attack Northampton they still might as the well ball defended there towards Hollier it really was well defended there's an unlucky pass there such an important intervention wasn't it back yeah. there backtracking not for a split second as though Hollier was going to be able to get onto the end of it but it was cut out before reaching him breaks back for Rolson over the head of first Seddon and then it wasn't kept in by McCormack it's 
still have plenty of action to come today. This is the second of five games on the opening day of the PlayStation Schools Cup National Finals here at the Hawthorns. We'll have Ovingham Middle School up against LVS Ascot next in the boys under 12s small schools final. This one not over yet though. Cardinal Hino, albeit with a very difficult task in hand, will still have a spark of hope that they can mount a comeback. Rosen there trying to spread the play out wide right, but it just ran across the line. Yeah, just couldn't quite keep that in. Spread that nicely out wide. Lovely play. Did well to get to the ball first there, and then the offside flag goes up from the assistant on the near side, but the referee hasn't seen it yet. I think the player's going to be allowed to continue for the advantage. That's what happened as it's quite forward there, but it should be too close to the goalkeeper. And that was the outcome. Another change for Northampton. Jaden Two is coming back on then. And Charlie Cotton will once again take up a place on the substitute bench. Northampton looking to see this game out. Yeah, not far away now, are they, Northampton, from getting their hands on the silverware at full time that's what they've come for and that's what they'll want to go away with two okay. brilliant footwork gets the corner as well good feet by toe there on his team a corner Harrison Carroll is the man then here coming on for Cardinal Heenan. Latest player to be introduced. This time from the Cardinal Heenan Catholic High School substitute bench. Two hands in the air was the signal from the corner taker. It's into oh, the area as well and it's into the corner bitter. again. It's headed home by Bittar. And surely now that will seal things for Northampton. Bittar up from the back for the corner with the header into the back of the net and it's 4-1. Really good header, fantastic delivery, head into the corner, really attacked the ball, great header. Keith had no chance. Game set and match now for Northampton. What a day it is turning out to be for them. Big win, big result so far. It seems as though that's going to provide an opportunity mm. for a couple more challenges as well. Joseph Keenan will get his opportunity and Jude Friend, the substitute goalkeeper, here is coming on as well yeah, good to replace there. Luke Stroman. A good, a good touch that. The game seems to be won there. Keep in, give him, give me, give him some game time. Really good. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning as well at this point, Oakley Barrett, who misses out today, watching on at home. He's ill at the moment, watching on for Northampton, but he'll be very proud of the performance that his teammates have put in, I'm sure. Yeah, he'll be delighted. Fantastic performance by Northampton. Luke Stroman is off to a round of applause on this near side Greaves with the switch of play across there to the latest Connell Heenan substitute Carroll 
forward down wide right and Batumbu has a bit of work to do and he did his job really well yeah defended superbly well there tried to run it down the wing nice and strong saw the ball out no route through was there that time for no. Gardner well defended Gardner closest to it in red and black but it goes back now and it's only coming back the way of the Cardinal Heenan goal two into the Hello. final minute of the regular 60 neat play once more for Northampton Hillier oh, managed to keep that one in as well dug happy. out the cross and yeah. it was headed just wide what a great cross there <laughs> managed to dig that one out and put in what a fantastic area well played Yeah, did superbly yeah, well, didn't he? To so did, keep the ball in play, never mind get the, the delivery yeah, in. Yeah, honestly, to even get it into that area is fantastic. Well, there's an appeal, and the linesman has signalled for it. The referee, with help from his assistant, and it's going to be another opportunity here for Northampton to add to their advantage again. certainly gave the referee a decision to make and the referee has pointed to the spot for the penalty with the ball in his hands then here is the skipper Charlie Ablett just moments away from getting his hands on the trophy yeah. and can Ablett here at goal number five for Northampton yes he can the goalkeeper went the right way but couldn't keep it out and Charlie Ablett has his goal adds his name to the score sheet and that's the icing on top of the cake for Northampton it definitely so Ablett topping off fantastic display with a penalty kick put away with a plum super super penalty cool calm and composed from the penalty spot 5-1 and well Northampton have really taken this second half by storm it looked evenly matched at half time didn't it Tony yeah, it really but did they yeah. just ran away ran away from a lot of confidence now Northampton playing really really good football really good football we're into the final 30 seconds of the minimum of two minutes which were added on at the end of the 60 not going to be the result for Cardinal Heenan that they came for and the referee there brings it to its end blows the full time whistle and confirmation then of Northampton being crowned champions in the ESFA under 12 9v9 PlayStation Schools Cup national final for the elite schools and it was an elite performance as well from Northampton from start to finish after the first half setback when Anthony said and made it 1-1 but they never looked back in that second half did they Tony no they did really didn't the second half was a fantastic team display it really really was some fantastic football you know it, 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 not only that as well it, it, I mean to be fair to uh, 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 <laughs> sorry yeah to be fair to Cardinal they didn't really play badly at all they just didn't get the opportunities that that came their way you know they were closed down from the front made it very very difficult Yeah, well, Tony now will head down for the trophy presentations and make sure you stick with us for the trophy presentations and we'll find out the winner of the player of the match poll as well. But now let's take a look at the highlights. It seems like a long time ago now, doesn't it? When Northampton got the opening goal.
after Hillier's opener. Well, there was a goal to pull it back level for Cardinal Heenan. And a good goal in that as well, swept into the bottom corner from Anthony Seddon, but his involvement after that was few and far between. As Cardinal Heenan were unable to get their number nine into play as much as they wanted to. Brilliant second half, wasn't it, for Northampton? That one was turned in there by Samuel Wardle, who was just freshly back on from the substitutes bench, having started the game back on from the bench. That was after Jaden Toe's goal. This was the foul for the penalty. And then the penalty to just round things off, round things off. And put the icing on top of the cake. And well for Northampton. What a brilliant game it was. What a day to remember. Commiserations, of course, to Cardinal Heenan, who fall to defeat for the second time this morning. It hasn't been their morning so far. Hasn't been their day. But for Northampton, it certainly has. We'll have the trophy presentations. Here to be made by the chief executive of the English Schools FA, Andrea Chilton. And, of course, Tony Daly who's headed down pitch side, the former Aston Villa star winger and England international. He's been alongside us in the commentary box, down there now, to make the trophy presentations and the medal presentations as well to each and every one of the players who have played their part here today. Up first, when we're ready, will be the match officials, referee Andy Smith, who gave that late penalty. With help, though, from his linesman on the near side, the assistant referees Evan Checkley and Steve Davis. It was assistant referee Steve Davis who signalled for that penalty. And then the fourth official, John Phillips, who will also receive a medal as well. Not there in the line at the moment, but rest assured he will be given a medal for his involvement in the match officials team. So then time to find out the winner of the player of the match vote. Told you with around 10 minutes to go to take part in the poll over on Twitter. And the winner of that player of the match vote is Charlie Ablett. Northampton's skipper got his goal at the end of it all as well from the penalty spot but even without that goal what a performance it was from him in the middle of the park really just dictated play there to receive the play of the match trophy and also the PlayStation vouchers as well here in the PlayStation Schools Cup Finals And well then, commiserations to Cardinal Heen in Catholic High School. For the second time today, they step forward for their runners-up medals, this time in the under-12s 9v9 Elite Schools Cup competition. Not the result that they wanted. Oliver Rain made a lot of great saves, though, to keep the scoreline down, really, until it did run away in the latter stages. was a long hard season for Cardinal Heenan and hopefully they can look back with fond memories of it once the dust settles but of course at the moment they're disappointed beaten by a better team on the day and a game which didn't go their way but it did go the way of Northampton Northampton school for boys. They will come forward one by one. Starting here with the goalkeeper Luke Strowman. As our stadium announcer here at the Hawthorns calls out the names of each and every one of the Northampton players. Really well deserved. It was a great team display. Every player played their part involved today. Number 
just so much quality, wasn't there, across the Northampton squad in abundance, really, which was just the overriding factor in the end there. Strength in depth as well in being afforded the better substitute options. Jaden too, prime example of that, having come on and scored and made a real impact as well. Well, there's the captain and player of the match, Charlie Ablett. Such a vision in the centre of midfield. Well, first the vision and then the execution to find the passes, of course, as well. But he really was spreading play superbly in the middle of the park for Northampton. And Ablett lifts the trophy. Northampton get their coronation. The champions, Northampton School for Boys in the ESFA under 12 9v9 Elite Schools Cup Final. Commiserations once again to Cardinal Heenan. But it's a big, big congratulations for Northampton. A five-star display and 5-1 the final score. So I'm here with Coach Heenan from Cardinal Heenan. It was just not meant to be this morning, was it? Yeah, no, better team won. I have no complaints about that. Um, I just don't think we turned up. We had spells in the first 20 minutes where I thought we were on top, but after that, I just they had our game. We they just had it. It was just very, very simple. We stopped playing, and they took advantage of that. You touched upon it there, there really was some moments of quality where it looked like the team was powering through, but it just never seemed to quite get in the back of the net. No, if you, if you take those chances early, I mean, both, time, both teams had chances in the first 15, 20 minutes. It could have been 4-4 four, four after 20 minutes, I would imagine. Um, you just, you miss them chances and you, you live to regret it, I suppose. And they really did leave all the effort on the pitch. They were right there until those final moments. They, the legs were tiring, but they still weren't giving up right to the end. No, they gave me everything. I can't, I can't complain about the effort levels. I just think today the way we normally play and the way the boys normally represent themselves, it was, it was a bit far from it today. As I say, 20 minutes we played. Beyond that, um, we just didn't turn up. We just couldn't find our game. Well, Coach Ian, thanks for your time and lucky for today. One more time, ladies and gents, let's hear it for Cardinal Heenan High School. So I'm here with Coach Josh from Northampton School for Boys. What a performance from your side. The effort throughout the heavy rotation. So much depth of talent in this side. Absolutely spot on. Um, that's what we said before. We knew today would be a squad game. It was a hot day. Um, lots of excitement and energy. We said every single one of the 14 would, would have a part to play. Um, and I think that was the difference in the end. We were able to rotate, bring the subs on, and they added to what we already had on the pitch. Um, every single one of them can be proud of their performance today, this season. Um, as a group, they've been absolutely superb and, for me, fully deserving national champions. And this is it. You're really creating a community with this side. I mean, Northampton School for Boys always in the conversation when it comes to ESFA finals. And 
it really is that pathway that you're building. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Um, and to be fair, that goes back to my colleague, Jamie Wilcock, who, who started at the school 28 years ago. He's coached over 1,300 games for the school. Uh, and this is his last year um, coaching. Uh, he's been absolutely superb. He started it then. We're hoping to carry that on and continue that. And, and for this year, it's the first time we've made two finals in the same year, which we're delighted with. And to win one today is excellent. And we'll try to go again later at half three and see how we go in that one. So final words to not only these talented players, but these talented fans as well from Northampton School for Boys. Parting message for us. Yeah, no, they've been a, they've been a great group. All the boys get, get behind the, the school, whether it's football, rugby, basketball, athletics, whatever it is. There's, there's a great community, as you said earlier. Um, and the fans are an excellent help today. So credit to them as well. Coach Josh, thank you for your time. We'll let you celebrate with your team one more time. Let's hear it for Northampton School for Boys. So still plenty more on the way here at the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023. Two matches down, still three more to go today as we have your middle schools competition next.
Welcome back then to the Hawthorns. Here we are ready for game three of five today, the first day of the PlayStation Schools finals. And here it is Ovingham Middle School taking on LVS Ascot in the ESFA under 12 9v9 PlayStation Small Schools Cup competition final. Well, the two teams then are out onto the field of play and we'll now run you through how they line up. For Ovingham, they have Max Malarkey between the sticks in goal. Isaac Austin, Taylor Robson, Oscar Sempers, Daniel Cole, the captain Francesco Hill, Jude Thornton, Kofi Morgan and Oliver Copathwaite. As for LVS Ascot, their starting goalkeeper is also the captain today, Herbie Hawks. Then the rest of their starting nine is made up of Eshim Gill, Javier Comas, Harry Meadows, Piers England, Jairaj Gill, Caden Snyman, Isa Jangir and Harley Jackson. Both sides with two substitute options for managers Deborah Goodwin and Luke Villas. On the bench for Ovingham are Charlie Little and Max Fulthorpe. And on the bench to begin with for LVS Ascot are Ted Kirkby and Javier Balouk. Well, Tony Daly is still alongside me. Tony, we've already seen two games played now. This is the third of them, and it's just as big as any of the others. This now the Small Schools Cup final. And really looking forward to this one getting off to its beginning. Yes, I've been excited today with some really good talent on the football field from the first two games I've seen. Hopefully this will continue there as well. So I'm really looking forward to this game here now. Well, the two teams just separate out into their two-team huddles. It's Ovingham in the blue and LVS Ascot in the white. Referee for this one is Mr. Thomas Westwood. His assistants are Rio Pledger and Alistair Kennedy. And the fourth official is Ray Brown. Isn't it great to be able to play, you know, on, 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 a, on a Premier League? I know we're in the Championship now, but it's a Premier League pitch. It's a great day for, for the guys there. And sometimes even the players, well, it's, it's down to nerves as well. You know, on a big stage, cup final, you know, in a stadium. Who can handle it the best? Two captains are there in the centre circle for the pre-match photos and coin toss as well. The captain for Ovingham is Francesco Hill. And the skipper with the armband on for LVS Ascot is the goalkeeper, Herbie Hawks. But you do just get the sense that, as is the case with all of the individual different categories for the cup finals, it's important that the two teams do settle down fast because as you were saying Tony about the nerves and the, the need to really just settle into the game right from the off yeah and the great thing about it is it's a fantastic atmosphere you know I mean, I mean the crowd obviously the two schools supporting their, their teams have been wonderful you know we're getting atmosphere up here as well and you know as I said it's important that they do settle down um, as quickly as possible let those nerves come through you know it's great to get a good first touch and a good first pass but we've seen the first two games where it's been very hectic the first you know five minutes or so and that's normal you know it does settle down a little bit legs get a little bit tired and the game gets to start to spread a little bit and people have a bit more passing options so it's been it's been good you know uh, obviously you know both teams like to, like to get an early goal obviously that would be the case but you know we'll, we'll, we'll see what's going to happen today well, coin toss complete, and we are very nearly ready to kick off then. Two periods of 30 minutes, of course, in the under-12s category. And it would be straight to penalties if the scores were to be level come full time. Well, it's going to be Ovingham then to get us started. Standing over the ball in the centre circle here. Is their top goal scorer, Oliver Copathwaite. He's scored six goals so far this season in this competition en route to the final and many more, I'm told, in the other games they've played as well. Underway then, and it's Ovingham who get this game off to its beginning as they attack the goal to the right in this first half into the penalty area here Morgan right from the off looking to try to make something happen 
Morgan attacking down wide right. And he wins the game's first corner. Yeah, to talk about a quick start. And that's hard start from bothering them uh, straight away. Looks lively Morgan on the ball. And the corner here is going to be left for Oscar Sempers to take. Seems as though it's going to be a right-footed delivery, which we would presume would be an outswinger. It's right under the crossbar, though. The goalkeeper was beaten, and it's in. <laughs> Just the start that Ovigan wanted inside the first minute. Isaac Austin from close range has given his school the perfect start. Yes, that is the perfect start. He started quickly, little deflection, fell down to him and managed to slice it into the net. The all count. Great start there by Ovingham. They all count indeed, and that one could be a big goal as well for Ovingham. It started on the front foot right from the kickoff. Got the corner and took full advantage. And it's a disastrous start for LVS Ascot, who now just need to settle down. Yeah, they're trying to work their way into the game. Yeah, but sorry, Isaac. The beauty of it, they've got loads of time to get back into this game. It is now, as he said, though, what they'll be doing is, you know, going headstrong and getting loose, losing, conceding again really early. Got plenty of time to get back into this game. But it's a great start there by Ovingham. to Morgan header back takes it to the goal scorer Austin who was up from the back for the corner it's the dream start for him in the game this was the moment then yeah, Kiefer just got under the ball there as well and it fell through fell through and says and finished it yeah well it might have broken favourably for Austin but there's still work to be done with the finish LVS Ascot here with the throw in in the attacking half it was thrown in field then Back out to the original throw and taker. Swept clear there by Piers England. Out again for another throw in. Copeth waits. Good play from the young man to get away from the first challenge. The referee tried to play the advantage to begin with, I think, and then in the end, as the advantage wasn't really forthcoming, has brought it back for the foul and the free kick. Good refereeing. Yeah, cut the plate there. Really good run, cut inside. I don't know he got the ball there as well, to be fair to him, but it was a, was a foul. Got followed through. Again, the blue shirts here are up from the back. The first mm. set piece proved to be the route to goal. Ball swung in there again, but too close to the goalkeeper that time. And it was a comfortable take on that occasion for Herbie Hawks. Austin had that time stayed back and was on the cover as Hawks sent it forward long after collecting. Robson infield there here to Hill Hill though has been robbed of possession trying to play the ball in behind the Alfingham back line there after it closest to it for LVS Ascot was Caden Snyman
up to the halfway line, but he couldn't keep hold of that one that time. Copperthwaite. Still his side have it, though. Morgan. Trying to wriggle away through. Well defended, though. Yeah, crowded out there. Morgan. Xavier Ballock is over on that right wing for LVS Ascot. He was listed as a substitute to begin with, but rest assured he is the player over on the right wing starting the game for LVS Ascot. Morgan accelerating forward past oh, the defender good, again, good. but a good challenge from Comas. Yeah, good defending there by Comas, getting back there. Wants to run with the ball, Morgan. Defenders on the back foot. Yeah, like, like to see that. Definitely seems to be a player who likes to go direct. Yeah. Morgan, whilst he's got the ball. Yeah, he's well defended though. Set piece again. And it's from the same side which the first goal came about. It's into a similar area as well. That one bounces back towards the goalkeeper, but it's taken out of his hands. And now LVS Ascot looked to break away on the counter-attack, but that one's cut out by Francesco Hill. Cut away there by Meadows, but only as far as Thornton. Thornton forward down the left, cuts that one back, but couldn't get it past Ballock. It's a long-range strike, but it was going to take something spectacular to beat the goalkeeper from that sort of distance. Yeah, it would do from that range. This Ovingham side in the under-12s age group now, of course, but last season when they were in the under-11s age group, they did win the County Cup final against the Royal Grammar School. They won 6-5 in extra time. They were losing 4-1 at half-time as well, so it was quite the second-half comeback. But it's quite the opposite here on finals day today. They've made the perfect start. Just running into traffic there, Robson. Ball was taken away from him, Jackson. Is that a foul? The referee says indeed it was. Yeah, good football there by LSV. As they're trying to get back in, into this game now. That was the foul. LVS then here with the opportunity to send the ball towards the goal, which Max Malarkey here is protecting. against the two-man wall no route through that time for LVS Morgan nipped in well to get to the ball first tries to spring a counter-attack here for Ovingham there's a player over as well on the left and he's found as well with that pass from Copperthwaite Copperthwaite still in the centre and it just flashes wide wasn't far away yeah. at all that really good effort there fantastic strike Yeah, Jude Thornton it was for Ovingham. Just a whisker wide. Yeah, good effort. Good good football again by Ovingham. Ten minutes played. It's Ovingham middle score one. LVS Ascot nil. Header was well. composed back to the goalkeeper. Calm defending. Yeah, very composed there. Yeah. 
Well closed down by Thornton, who just got his toe to it. Offingham won their semi-final by four goals to one. It's been a very successful campaign for them so far, as it has been, of course, for LVS Ascot too. It was a 3-2 victory against St John's senior score in the semi-final for LVS. Free kick here for Ovingham. Long forward direct again, trying to send it towards the danger zone. Back for the goal scorer, Austin. Couldn't find the pass that he wanted to that time. LVS then perhaps trying to exploit the space which he had vacated and left him behind, but it was dealt with easily enough. Good backtracking there from Copperthwaite as he just got back to win possession from the blind side of Meadows into the penalty area now goes Thornton managed to get the cut back in as well but couldn't find a teammate it was great direct running again though from Thornton over on that left wing it was good running he was unfortunate there just couldn't pick a man out wayward of Morgan that time This was that latest attacking moment for Ovingham as Thornton found a way through. They might find a way through here as well. It's Kofi Morgan after it. There's a player over two. Morgan couldn't quite find his teammates. It's still there inside the penalty area. LVS managed to deal with the danger, at least for now. Thornton collects the loose ends. Swung into the centre, but headed out and the danger is finally clear. Nice throw ball slipped up again to Thornton. Again trying to utilise that cutback option. He's ended up off the field of play at the moment, Thornton. Just getting back to his feet now. Off the picture, he's back up. up to Copperthwaite. Brilliant touch that was to bring the ball down. Morgan toying with the LVS Ascot defence again. Austin. And it's a long-range strike from the furthest player back by the goalkeeper in actual fact there for Ovingham. It was Daniel Cole who opted to shoot first time. Yes, I think Hawks had to the shoot from that distance there as well. It's a good strike, it's a clean strike, but comfortably had it completely covered there. Helped on there by Jangir. Balak penalised for the foul. Nearly a quarter of an hour played now in this one. Ovingham, remember, having scored in the first minute. And after that, it was always going to be difficult for LVS Ascot to about the business the way they would have wanted to from the start but I think it's important that they stick to the game plan I suppose Tony and just yeah. try to put that behind them now and yeah. move forward from here yeah, absolutely they, they have put back well to be quite honest with you now settled down so, so you know confidence can be rocked with an early goal like that but they settle down important interception there from Comus out now with Balak challenge though held up by Robson Robson in search of Copperthwaite, but it was just too much on it. That one's over the line for the throw in. Hill there with the throw into the penalty area. It's hooked away before oh reaching God. the goalkeeper by England. Now there might be a way here. LVS, but it's good backtracking, really good recovery. 
good defending by Cole there. Got back really, really well. At one stage, it looked like he was through. Yeah, he started the game well, hasn't he, in the heart of defence yeah. for Arvingham. Slip forward again to Thornton. It's a first time bowl into the box that time, but it's that was at least for now. Might be away on the counter attack. Cole has to time that one well and did. Did superbly well there at the back. Superbly timed challenge because it was 2v1. It really was. Fantastic challenge there. Had to make it. Boys through. Look at the superb tackle. Thomas into Snyman. Snyman towards the penalty area. Held up well though by Morgan. Referee gives the foul. Just taking his time to get back to his feet there. Morgan, but he did well to just get his body in between Snyman and the ball and drawing that foul. Land on the ball there as well. Probably just guard his knee a little bit. Hopefully it'll be okay. Two teams here just with the opportunity to come across to the near side as the physio is onto the field to see to Morgan but he yeah. looks okay to continue yeah, yeah getting just some hydration on now it's very very warm out there now could need it and again, again an opportunity uh, for the for two coaches to have a word with their team make a few slight adjustments yeah, some encouragement yeah we saw a moment like that in the earlier game today mm. in which there was a an injury which provided the chance for the two teams to come across to the near side like that. Mm. Really, we saw one of those sides take the game completely in their stride after the resumption. Let's see how it plays out here. Comus sent that one forward first time. Cole was there though again. Didn't only win Very possession there, Cole, but looked to try to start the counter attack, albeit. His pass in the end couldn't find a teammate. Oh. That one runs all the way through. It's Snyman here. Snyman oh. across and just too far across. Big chance. Big, big chance. Chose the second option there. Had could have shot. Put it across the box. Just couldn't get the end of it and at the end of it here. He probably made the right decision, but the execution just wasn't quite there. Big chance to get back into the game. Lucky there by Thornton. Morgan sweeps that one across from right to left. Thornton after that one. It's connected here by Robson. Thornton after it again, but it's put out of play there by the right sided LVS Ascot defender, Ishan Gill. Just wonder whether LVS will be left to rue that missed opportunity when Snyman played the ball across. It was just too far ahead of Jackson, wasn't it? But as you said at the time, Tony, it was a big chance for them to get back level. And as we take a look at a look at the opportunity again, if they had yeah. scored there, well then game level now, and it would have a very different feel to it. Yeah, he could have shot him. He took he took the second option there as well. Goalkeeper there has come a long way from yeah, home. Well. Judged it to perfection. Sweet to keeper. Good roll there. Yeah, all credit to Max Malarkey. Goalkeeper in all pink today for Ovingham.
first substitution here is ready and waiting to happen. Max Fulther is on here to replace the goal scorer, Isaac Austin. He will feel that his first stint on the field was a success. Max Fulther is on then to replace him, at least for the time being. He had much success. Put his team up one in front. Morgan just going to retrieve the ball, but he's going to leave the throw and taking duty here to the captain Hill. Might be lining up a bit of a, a longer throw in as well. It does go into the penalty area. It bounces through though, and the goalkeeper is on hand to come out and collect. Taken down by Jackson, but it bounced away from him. On the turn there, Hill. Forward to Sempers. That's over onto the left with Robson. Alvingham will build again. That's nice interchange. Oh, good move. Link up play. Thornton with the ball into the box. Oh, and well. oh, yeah. the referee yeah. gives the penalty. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good build up. I'd like to see that one again. Ref was sure. It looked as if he had. That's my initial thoughts. Yeah, well, it's a big decision for the referee to have made. Certainly strikes an arm, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No argument. I don't think that LVS Ascot can have any complaints about that. Piers England it was with the outstretched left arm. And the opportunity then here for Ovingham Middle School to double their advantage. Can the keeper come up trumps? It's Cole against Hawks and Cole scores! Straight down the middle, Hawks got a hand to it, but it wasn't enough to keep it out. That's how you take a pen, rock it really hard, keep again on Lucky there, getting a hand to it. Ovingham in dreamland in this first half, straight down the middle, goalkeeper Sorry. perhaps unfortunate that he didn't keep it out. But the pure power oh, behind yeah. it was too much to beat the goalkeeper. I think I think he meant that one. Really good free kick. That penalty, sorry, penalty. That really good. In the aftermath of that, during the celebrations, Charlie Little, the number ten, has come on for Offingham. I'm sure the Offingham manager Deborah Goodwin will feel. Very happy about things now, though. The way in which they're two goals up just gives them that extra bit of confidence and just gives them the cushion, doesn't it? And yeah, it really does. Being able to feel much better about the way in which they play out there. The onus now on LVS to really come back and hit back with a counter punch for themselves. Daniel Cole it was having scored that penalty who has been replaced by Charlie Little and that latest change foul throwing given there by the referee it was the referee who made the decision rather than the linesman Throw and overturn. After this ball in behind there was Scopperthwaite. Swept up though. Again, Hill is going to take the throw in. Over across onto the left side this time to do that. It's 
to learn to bounce all the way through that time though it's out and behind but really the Ovingham goalkeeper Max Malarkey hasn't had too much to do in this first half so far he hasn't been properly tested by the LVS forwards and I'm sure Luke Villas the LVS Ascot boss will be hoping that that changes yes Lord, definitely need to start challenging for one against this game trying to weave away through here it's Thornton good save oh. Hawks got down well denied Ovingham their third here in this first half and that then really would be a mountain to climb for LVS Ascot in the second period good stop though from Hawks it was a good save tight angle try he's a cross goal keeper good save bouncing ball maybe just came out of the sunlight as well but it was dealt with and headed back to the goalkeeper long then with the kick from the hands of Malarkey after this one in behind is Copperthwaite on the turn England well defended Slam clear again there by Piers England. It's a little bit scrappy in the middle of the park at the moment, but taking control once more is Thornton. Yeah, it's just that final pass. Thornton again. Good team. Just to get the ball in. Wasn't too far away from Copperthwaite. Yeah, well done, Keeper there. Keeps hold of that one. Good break again. Put Ovingham. Good touch. Slyman. Good pass as well. Steinman managed to get to it again. Yeah, it foul. Gets the foul. This was the last opportunity, the latest opportunity for Ovingham again. Goalkeeper on hand to collect that one. Into the final couple of minutes now of this first period. We wait to see how much stoppage time we will have, if any, of course, at the end of this first half as well. Our LVS Ascot would love to get a goal back before half time. In a good position. So you're going to try to get a strike, get a strike of this force, fair distance out. Snyman does go for goal and Ooh. very nearly found top corner as well was only inches away from finding that postage stamp of the top corner it came back off the woodwork and out and behind what a great strike there fair distance out hitting you up Rice so unlucky he's really unlucky there it would be nice to get that goal get back into the game fine fine margins but Ovingham still with their two goal lead intact by far the closest but LVS Ascot have come though couldn't get much closer on the turn there Hill on the turn as well was Copperthwaite Copperthwaite into the penalty area. Goalkeeper managed to get down to make the stop. It's still there though, the edge of the penalty box. And the goalkeeper Hawks was able to hold on to that one that time. Yeah, Copperthwaite did roll there on the turn, getting his shot off. You can see he's got a knife for goal. moving to a minimum of one minute added time at the end of this first half then before the midway point and half time break it's a half though that has definitely been one for Ovingham to treasure and one which has given LVS plenty to think about plenty to ponder and plenty of problems to solve 
moving into the second half. Long ball forward again, the goalkeeper always looked favourite for it though, and Herbie Hawks is able to come out to the edge of the box and collect that one. We've played the minute added on and the referee blows the whistle to end the half there. An excellent half it was for Ovingham Middle School, Tony. Two goals up at half time and it's a difficult ask for LVS Ascot in the second half now. Yes, yes it is. Yeah, Ovingham really commanded that first half there. Great chances, little, only a couple of chances there really uh, for LVS. One culminating, one hitting, hitting the upright. But it's been really all Ovingham this this first half has commanded this this first half. They need to get back into this game. Well, half time then, Isaac Austin with the opening goal. This was it. Still inside the first minute. Just bundled the ball home from very close range to make it 1 0. That really was the perfect start, yeah, wasn't it, was, it for Ovingham? It was. Couldn't ask for a better start than that. Yeah, broke through here. Yeah, the big chance there. He'd roll it across. And they were yeah, then left across. to rue that missed opportunity yeah. because that was the handball. Yeah, yeah. And it was he the penalty to follow. Yeah, he knew it as well. And some pen this. Yeah, he took the goalkeeper in with, with the ball. Hit with force down the middle. chance in there as well to make it three but a good stop from Hawks that time but so then at half time it's Ovingham Middle School who have the advantage two goals to nil they lead here at half time against LVS Ascot at the midway point of the ESFA under 12s 9v9 PlayStation Small Schools Cup final we'll have the second half coming up after the break
Welcome back then once again to the Hawthorns where at half time it is Ovingham Middle School in pole position here to get their hands on the trophy come full time 2-0 they lead here at the midway point up against LVS Ascot but still work to do in this second half Tony if they are to lift the trophy come full time yes definitely so they need to pick things up a little bit here now get some get some playing get among some you know, a bit, bit, bit more bit, bit more pressure on the ball as well. A bit more confidence, you know, because if you're seeing them and they do get on the ball occasionally, they, just, they play some good football, just have that confidence. And, and you don't get one goal, you don't know what's going to happen here. Yeah, well, LVS would love to get a goal back quickly in this second half. That might then just plant the seeds of doubt as well in the minds of the Ovingham middle school players. And who knows what can happen from there. But it was Isaac Austin who... Not the opening goal in the game's first minute. At the start of it. And Daniel Cole then made it two from the penalty spot after a handball decision, clear handball decision. And his penalty was smashed home. Underway then in this second period. I'd imagine as well, Tony, that that would have been much of the message from Luke Villas, the LVS Ascot boss at half-time try and get a goal back and see where we can go from there yeah they're definitely not out of it at all at 2-0 you know it, it, if they can just get that goal back as you said you know the, the little doubt, doubts coming <laughs> in the minds of uh, Ovingham and they can start creating some chances we've seen them uh, so many times but need a good start quick start yeah LVS Ascot who are a boarding school Ages range from 4 to 18. This is the under 12s category. The national final here today. Home of West Bromwich Albion. It's a goal kick here for Max Malarkey. It's only coming back though. Seems as though the goal kick here is going to be left to Daniel Cole after Malarkey took the one prior to it. Cole sends that one up to the halfway line though. Gill. Held up well by Fulthup, who was the first substitute in that first half for Ovingham. Let's look at this one here. You just need to block, block him off there. Wide free kick then here for LVS Ascot. A good chance to get into the box unopposed. Can they create a chance here? It's got to be a good delivery though. Delivery is important. Crucial to it. It was a good bad ball, ball in. Good ball. Good ball in. Yeah, a real teaser, wasn't it? But yeah, it's well attacked as well by the defender. Yeah. Extremely well. Defended it ever so well. Yeah, well headed. Good clearance. after it here for Ovingham appealing for the decision as well and getting it cool now. oh goal yeah, yeah well they yeah. pointed for a corner to corner the game, didn't yes, they the yes. officials yeah I thought that was a corner myself yeah the referee certainly pointed for a corner yeah. I think maybe after consultation with the, the assistant over on the far side they decided to go with the goal kick decision Charlie Little. Little trying to weave away through the two LVS Ascot defenders. 
And it's a power to play for the throw-in. This was the contentious decision as to whether it was a corner or a goal kick. Oh, well, that's a, bit, a difficult one there, really, <laughs> to, one yeah, to tell, tell with. Yeah. Yeah. In, initially, we thought it was that. I think maybe in situations like that, the yeah. officials wise just good. to go with the defending yeah, team. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think that's the case. Yeah, that is the case. Well, there's an injury concern here at the moment for one of the LVS Ascot players. I can't quite tell from our position who it is who is down on the deck receiving treatment. But it's a stoppage in play at the moment. LVS Ascot have had some notable players come through their school and go on to greater things in the footballing world. Lewis Hall used to play for LVS Ascot in the school's competition. Played at the Etihad yesterday for Chelsea. Wow. Impressive that. You never know one of these players here in the future. Yeah, it just provides these players somebody to lock up to as well. Yeah, it's fantastic, I'm sure. isn't it? She's fantastic. I remember, it's they're, they're getting quite warm down there as well now. Okay, it's starting to get tired. Yeah, as we move into the afternoon, here at the home of West Bromwich Albion. West Brom season having finished, of course, their playing season in the EFL Championship. Will be another free kick. Yep, good position. position this then as you say Tony Caden Snyman is standing behind it he is their top goal scorer yeah. this season Snyman here yeah, will take just, charge of it hit that target give yourself a chance a crowded area Snyman it looks good for the referee oh, blows the whistle he's seen yeah. something foot, yeah. didn't like that yeah. I think it's, I think he hit it before the referee the whistle good strike as well is going to bring it back for take two full start maybe mm. from that free kick but it does provide Snyman with the opportunity then once more just being told to wait for the whistle I think in the end Snyman is allowed to take and it rises high over the bar similar strike different outcome ultimately both though not testing the goalkeeper yeah. Defensively, of him and very strong, as you can see here as well. Yeah, that's going to be really important for them, isn't it, in this yeah. second half, that they do stay strong defensively. It's a great little ball, that. Well defended. Yeah, good header there from Javier Comas. Comas again, with space to advance into ahead of him as well played the pass infield Comas though continued his run has it back now good football hot better player by football. Colt has certainly been better signs though haven't they yeah, in the second half better football. yeah they have yes got some strong some good passes together some good combinations strong challenge in there a right old battle for possession the referee Gives the free kick after that challenge. over halfway but it's collected by Colt oh, another injury down another man down yeah, there's a man down here on this near side 
Play goes on, at least for the time being. I'm not sure the referee's attention has been brought to this. Taylor Robson, it is the player down. The game has now been stopped. It's been a bit stop-start in this second period. Yeah, it has been. has been. A few niggly injuries. I mean, that's good for Ovenham. Not, not so good for LSV. Ascot. They want the possession of the ball, keep it flowing. Just breaks up play each time. Yeah, it does definitely favour Ovingham middle score, doesn't it? Of course, the time will be added on in stoppage time come the end of the 60 minutes, but just in terms of the breaking up of the momentum Absolutely. of the game more than Absolutely. anything else. Absolutely. Does it touch a cramp here or not? I'm not sure. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Out there for Taylor Robson. They've scored plenty of goals on road to the final of Ingham. 26 in actual fact, but yet to keep a clean sheet. They're keeping a clean sheet at the moment. Still have more action to bring to you today, of course. Two more games left on the card today. The under-12 B-teams final for the boys will kick off at half-past three. And then at half-past five to round off today's action, the under-13 girls national final. Back to the action here, though. Thornton. A good challenge. Really good tackle, wasn't that? Yeah, it was. Fonten has stayed down momentarily. Still down. At least for the time being. LVS looking to spring an attack for themselves, but that one's going to be allowed to trickle out all the way. And it's sat in behind for the goal kick restart. Yeah, I've been being solid, very solid up front. Uh, sorry, at the back, sorry. Not many chances created this second half here for LSV Ascot. We've just seen this incident here. There's a good challenge, nice solid challenge to be fair. Really good challenge. Yeah, Piers England it was with that tackle. Yeah. Really good tackle. Just wonder whether LVS Ascot's boss, Luke Villas, will have to think about making a couple of changes as the game progresses. There were only two substitutes, of course, named for both sides. At the start of the game, but those replaced can come back on. Oh, got high oh, towards the back corner, stick, yeah. appealing for a corner, and I think they're going to get it as yeah, well. Yeah. A little deflection from that cross as well, nearly diverted it in. Yeah, well, it could have proved to be problematic there, couldn't yeah. it, for Ovingham? Yes, absolutely. Snyman's cross comes shot in the end, dropping not too far wide. Let's see what they can make of the corner then. Have they conceded from a corner down this end of the field in the first half? Can they here hit back? It's a good ball in, but it is well defended. Ended, yeah. Good touch as well, and Ovingham might be away here. Plenty of blue shirts here joining the attack. Thornton, a couple of oh, options to the right. The referee with a decision to yes, make. Yeah. It's a penalty. Yeah. It's a second spot kick of the day for Ovingham. All about the work of Jude Thornton. Beautiful play. Superb run. Broke through. S sucked him in. Yes, was a pen there. Yes. Yeah. Superb feet. Yep. It's a definite penalty, isn't yeah, it? It's going to be Absolutely. another opportunity for Ovingham. And well, Daniel Cole, remember, took and scored the first spot kick. Who will take charge of this yeah, one, I think? Yeah. Thornton thought about it, yeah. wanted to take it, mm. but it's going to be left for Cole again. Yeah, I think he's overall there by the manager, I think.
Cole, remember, went down the middle in the first half. It's Daniel Cole again, and this time slotted away. Just as calm and just as composed, it's 3-0 to Ovingham, and they are well on their way now. Yeah, that's game over, now for sure. Really good finish, penalty, had no doubts there, slotted it away superbly well. Great finish, and that's 3-0. But credit to Thornton there from that run, created that goal in the first place. A fantastic run. Yeah, it looked as though it was going to be a certain goal, but for the foul. And Cole tucking away the spot kick. The first one with power, and the second with placement. Both just as good as each other. Goalkeeper that time, Herbie Hawks, was sent the wrong way. Challenge. in there for LVS Ascot but they have it all to do never impossible but highly highly improbable now for Ovingham it looks like that's going to be a game to remember really haven't looked back have they since that opening minute goal and since then they've just taken the game by storm it had been a bit of a better second half for LVS Ascot but then hit hard with that counter attack and ultimately the foul which led to the penalty yeah it's very comfortable for them to be fair really has it's been nice if we get at least a consolation goal here for LSV keep playing keep going yeah that's what they'll be hoping for I'm sure they'll continue battling hard right until the very end they have more defending to do at the moment. It's Ovingham again on the attack. Good ball into the centre. Hopeth wait. It's still there as well. Good block. block. Still a shooting chance and it's in. It's four for Ovingham. They had a couple of bites at it. But in the end it was forced home over the line. The substitute Charlie Little adds his name to the score sheet. 4-0. Yeah, it broke again and came down this uh, left-hand side with Thornton, crossed it into the box, great ball in, great little touch there by the centre forward, cross the way, but, and finally broke through Little with a fantastic finish. Superb, that's four. Another substitution being made there in the aftermath of that goal. It's going to see Ted Kirk be come on as the first change for LVS Ascot. He sense it's going to be too little too late now. And he comes on to replace Harley Jackson. Four nil, two goals by the side of the halfway point. What a day it's turning out to be for Ovingham Middle School. Yeah, fantastic day for them. You know, it has been really comfortable with it as well. You know, I mean, they've played really well. Haven't really been threatened by that. I think that uh, one chance in that first half. Clearance there might be problematic, but it does end up back with the goalkeeper, and he that time can Touch. send it long. Thornton away after this again. Down the left flank. Thornton held up that time. Good challenge from Eshen Gill. Ball's been given away there though. It's the latest right goal scorer Little looking for his second in a matter of as many minutes, but just ran into traffic in the form of a couple of white shirts. And obviously Ascot tried to find something, spring something on the attack to 
give themselves a consolation. Very nice to get yourself on the score sheet. Be lovely. Copperthwaite there with the set back to begin with. Now Robson. Thornton, it is a beggy pardon, into the penalty area. Oh, Thornton cool. across to the back stick. Surely it's five. And it's a five star display for Ovington Middle School. Thornton again created that some, some superb feed to left hand side. Great ball into the box and a lot of composure in that finish. Really, really was. Is that Little again? Yeah, Charlie Little with a brace. He's made an impact, Rex hasn't he, in this yeah, second half? Really yes, he really has. But all the all the play down at left hand side. What a great ball in. But watch the composure here still. Took his time. Smashed it in the back of the net. And that's five. Ovingham Middle School. Five goals to the good here on finals day. It is dreamland for them now. Austin with the first. Cole with number two and three from the penalty mark. And Charlie Little with goals four and five. It might get even better again. Cut back, still yeah, there nice, yeah. in the penalty area. It's gone out of play though, has it? Referee. Yeah, that was, yeah, he just ran that out. The line. Yeah, he did run that one out there. It's unlucky again. Great play by Thornton. Having a whale of time down this, this left hand side, causing a lot of trouble. Substitution there for LVS Ascot as the change is made with the reintroduction of Javier Baluc. Sedi Manata just telling those supporters in house today here at the Hawthorns, and you can take part as well in the player of the match vote over on Twitter. The English School to Fate Twitter page at Schools Football to take part in the poll for the player of the match. Daniel Cole and Jude Thornton are the Ovingham Middle School players up for that award and two nominations as ever in the ESFA. The players up for that from the side on the wrong side of the scoreline. LVS Ascot today, Javier Comas and Caden Snyman at Schools Football for that player of the match vote. Here's Little. On a hat-trick now, tries to get that ball into the penalty area. There's a cross though, Sempers was the intended target, but it didn't quite reach him. Here's Copperthwaite. Austin. Went for the return ball. Back from Copperthwaite. Bolton gets the throw in. As we move into the final eight minutes. Yeah. Here before Offingham's victory will be confirmed. Yeah, good defending there because the Thornton at the moment is absolutely on fire. Had to stick with him and did his job. He's just been too hot to handle, hasn't he? Down the mm. left wing today for them. that time though not what he was looking for and it took it out of play behind for the goal kick Snyman it was coming together there between the player from either side Snyman was allowed to continue though here's Gill and still Gill just opened up onto his left foot there the angle was there to shoot he obliged but it was blocked in from close proximity to him yeah, it's really good defending. Things open up, get his shot off, but the block was in. Sempers. Copperthwaite. Return ball back to Sempers. Good challenge, though. Yes. Throw in that time was taken to Hill rather than Hill taking the longer throw in himself as we saw on a couple of occasions a few times now across the course of the game. 
Snyman on the turn. He could do some support. Forward from the right boot of the goalkeeper up to Gill. Five goals so far today for Ovingham then and still yet to see their top goal scorer Oliver Copperthwaite on the score sheet. Wonder if there's time left for him to add his name as well. Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah, has very much played his part though in yeah, leading the line. He has. Just a formality now of the final five minutes. Make sure you stick around as well at full time because we will have the trophy presentations on the pitch at the end of the game. And it might even get better here as well for Ovingham. Into the penalty area and it's six. <laughs> Never looked yeah. like missing. <laughs> no, and Copperthwaite does have his goal. Yeah. See, majestic finish there. As you said, so confident in the finish done the key through the wrong way with his eyes as well he played it in super touch this one here drove past the defender there super stuff great finish and that's six now well we posed the question as to whether there would be time for Copperthwaite to get his goal and got his goal is exactly what he's done Oliver Copperthwaite on the score sheet again. That just caps off an excellent team display. With that individual moment of brilliance as well. Well defended. Well dealt with to begin with by Meadows. Obvious Ascot still tried to break clear. It's there again for Copperthwaite. Now the side in white managed to clear up to the halfway line, but again it's the Offingham defence that take charge of that. Mentioned the one opportunity that LVS Ascot had in the first half, Tony, when they, they also hit the crossbar as well with the, the long range strike. But bar those moments that they had in the first half, the Offingham middle school defence have really been able to keep them at bay. They really have, they've defended really, really well. I think comfortable at the back for them, bested by those two chances. I haven't really created much. I think they haven't been allowed to create much. You know, they're defensively really, really strong. Ovingham made it very difficult for LSV. See, the pitch is really stretched now as well. It's a big old pitch. They're getting tired as well now. Forward to Copperthwaite. He goes on. It's still Copperthwaite. And it's hit to the side netting. Good save, in fact. Got a touch to it, I think. Yeah, goalkeeper did get a touch to it. Pretty much just, just yeah. there to begin with. Yeah. Thought it had gone directly wide, but the goalkeeper with the touch sends it for the corner. Head of a strike. Well done, keeper. Good save. <laughs> Daniel Cole is off to a great round of applause scorer of the brace of penalties for Ovingham. Morgan trying to add his name to the score sheet as well but that one was always rising high and well wide. It's just been a case of not to be today for LVS Ascot. No, it's been a difficult game for them, really has. It's a strong Ovingen outfit. Here's Little, still in search of his second half hat trick. 
Another cross into the penalty area, but it didn't find anybody in blue. Robson. Audacious. Yeah, if no one can unscrose it here. Yeah, well, we're moving to the final minute of the 60. Following this one here, we will have the boys under 12s B teams final Northampton school for boys once again in action. We'll be up against Shenfield High School. And obvious then find themselves yeah, a consolation. Yeah. That's a foul. Yeah. As we're moving to three minutes added on at the end of this 60 minute period. We look to get a consolation goal here. Yeah, really would. Yeah, well, can they find a route through? I'm sure Ovingham will be looking to hold on to the clean sheet as well. Certainly the goalkeeper, Max Malarkey. He'll be intent on keeping that clean sheet, but the effort is swinging towards goal, but it was always likely to just rise high and off target there from Jangir. Got the whip on it, but just couldn't quite get it down in time. Yeah. Couldn't get a dip. Here's Gill. This ball into the penalty area is collected by the goalkeeper. Jangir goes yeah. for goal and finds what it. What a good goal. Sugar. Well, that might be the pick of the bunch. Yeah. Albeit a consolation for LVS Ascot, but what a strike it was. Super strike. Caught that absolutely perfectly. Super stuff. Please have got on the score sheet in this final, and what a good goal it was. Caught it sweet done the keeper retreat super goal well there goes the Ovingham clean sheet and that should hopefully be a moment to remember and we'll be on the wrong side of the scoreline but for Jangir that was a brilliant strike and that's the consolation that LVS Ascot will feel that they deserve and the disappointing factor for them is that it is just going to be a consolation yeah it's nice as you know to get on the on the score sheet still yeah you know this disappointing yeah you know we're disappointed with the actual score line as it is there but important they got a goal and what a good goal it was yeah it just gives them something to take away doesn't yeah, it so yeah. mm -hmm. a moment to cherish yeah there's a strike again great goal keep a new being done news beaten Perfect weight on the strike from Jangir over the goalkeeper. And there he is again with his toe to the ball. Gill is the player over on the near side. We've nearly played the three allotted additional added minutes. Good back tracking. The offside flag is up anyhow. And that should be that then. Just a formality of the final few seconds. And then Ovingham Middle School can celebrate. And the referee calls time. And Ovingham do set off to celebrate. So convincing, wasn't it, Tony, yeah. in the end? And very well-deserved winners. Yes, it was a convincing victory. Ovingham really deserved it. Played extremely well all the way through this game as well. In defensively and attacking the, 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 the up in front they were superb created lots and lots of chances with it as well and deserved deserved winners really were well tony now will head down to take part in the 
post-match presentations. Make sure you stick around for the presentations, which will be coming up shortly. But it's Ovingham Middle School here who run out victorious. Hugely convincing in the end. LVS Ascot did get themselves a consolation goal, but nothing more than that very late on. As we take a look at the goals, and it was Isaac Austin who got things started inside the first minute, and since then, Ovingham didn't look back. Just pounced upon the loose ball. And the second ball, the loose ends from the corner. And turned in from very close range by Austin. That was the handball decision to bring about the first of two penalties, both taken by Daniel Cole and both converted as well. That one straight down the middle and the goalkeeper couldn't keep it out. That was for 2-0. Then moving into the second half, Hoffingham really just continued where they left off at the end of the first 30 minutes. Again, clear foul, clear penalty. Calm, composed, slotted finish this time. Sent the goalkeeper the wrong way, just gave the goalkeeper the eyes, perhaps. This was for four. That was the substitute, Charlie Little. And goal number five followed not too long after as well. Again, it was Little on hand this time. At the back stick, at the back post to turn home. One touch and the finish. And then Copperthwaite got his goal that he'd been looking for. The top goal scorer for Rovingham did manage to get onto the score sheet. Again, just slotted past the on-rushing goalkeeper as he was bearing down on goal. But what a goal this was from Isa Jangir, a consolation, but a brilliant consolation nonetheless. And that's how it finishes then. Ultimately ends 6-1 in favour, of course, of Ovingham. As we now get ready for the trophy presentation. We'll find out as well the winner of the player of the match vote. Tony Daly down there on the pitch now to take part in the trophy presentations and also there alongside him the English Schools FA Chief Executive Andrea Chilton. As the match officials here step forward to take their medals, the referee there Thomas Westwood and his assistants Rio Pledger and Alistair Kennedy. was a relatively simple game to keep a lid on in the end and that wasn't always likely to be the case in a, a national final like this on the big occasion as it is so the winner of the player of the match then set to be announced Jude Thornton will step forward to take the Player of the Match award. Ovingham's left winger, despite not being on the score sheet, he was influential from start to end, really, right from the get-go. Won the second half penalty as well, Jude Thornton there with his individual Player of the Match trophy and the PlayStation vouchers as well. Partners, of course, of the English Schools of Eight Schools Cup competitions, PlayStation Small Schools Cup final here. This one, LBS Ascot will have to settle for silver. It's not what they wanted. It's not what they came for. It's what they already had as a minimum. But ultimately. When they look back on it, then hopefully they can be proud of what they've achieved. Because it is an achievement nonetheless, and even reaching final stage here. So many teams have competed. So many players have taken part. And despite just falling short at the final hurdle, it's still an achievement to be proud of.
Hopefully Luke Villas, the manager as well for LVS Ascot, can just lift his players a little in the dressing room at full time. Just wasn't to be for them today, beaten by a better team on the day. And that better team was Ovingham. Ovingham Middle School. Having won the under-11 County Cup final last season. They're the winners of the National Under-12 9v9 PlayStation Small Schools competition here. The captain, Francesco Hill, in amongst it all. And he'll get his hands on the trophy. Deborah Goodwin in charge of the team there with her medal as well. Greatly appreciated, I'm sure, with the number nine on her back as well. This goes to show the, the importance of the role that she's had, of course, in leading the side. the trophy will be handed over and the trophy is there for Ovingham it's Ovingham Middle School who are the champions of the under 12 PlayStation Small Schools Cup competition congratulations once again to Ovingham commiserations once more to LVS Ascot they'll go home disappointed Ovingham well they'll be delighted do stick around as well because we're hoping to get some post-match reaction from the manager's pitch side any minute now. But it has finished here and it's finished 6-1 in favour of the champions. The champions who are Ovingham. occasion and of course the first time appearing in the final and coming away with an emphatic win in this final yeah it was, it was such a good game you know the but they've worked so hard for this and I think they deserve it so really well played an excellent occasion for them so 
they'll remember this for a long time. Well, it was a really early goal to get things started, but then really solid at the back, and then those opportunities came, and the two penalties, and then the barn doors just pretty much opened for your side. Yeah, they did. It's just been fantastic. I think every single one of them, we were really strong in the defence, and um, our attackers made it count today. They, they all played fantastic, really, really good game. So really good cohesion between all of your players working well, some really nice overlapping we saw, but not only the players working well, but the fans also working well for you guys. I know, excellent. I mean, they've got such a good team spirit, you know, between them and you know, obviously all the parents coming to watch and all the, the kids watching back at school, you know, it's such a good occasion for them and they've done really well. Well, Coach Tom, Coach Deborah, I'll go and let you go and celebrate this emphatic, historic moment. A massive congratulations. One more time, let's hear it for Ovinger Middle School. Absolutely incredible. Still more on the way here at the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023. Our next game, Northampton School for Boys taking on Shenfield High School.
Welcome back then, or welcome along if you're joining us for this one specifically on ESFA TV. Three games already played today, but two more still to bring to you in the English Schools FA National Finals. This is the under-12s B-Teams Schools Final, and it's Northampton School for Boys up against Shenfield High School. Well, let's take a look at how the two teams line up then, starting with Northampton. They have goalkeeper Jack Schofield. The rest of their starting lineup then is made up of Chris Orikoya, Logan Sothcott, the captain Harry Brown, Jack Auburn, Charlie Duggan, Charlie Brazier, Thomas Skelton and Liam Murray. As for Shenfield High School, they have Finley Clark between the sticks in goal this afternoon here at the Hawthorns. Charlie McMillan, Louis De Dominguez, Archie Drogman, Lee Davies, Charlie Winter, Alfie Hill, James Hamilton, who will have the captain's armband on, and Emmanuel Oyedeli. In charge of Shenfield is boss Gary Sapsford, and Paul Lagden is in the opposite technical area. As for the substitute options, as you can see there on the left, the Northampton substitutes Luciano Panariello, Jaden Liocco, Nathan Chudazama, Charlie Nash and Phoenix Rockle. As for Shenfield, their substitutes Frankie Harvey, Casper Norris, Francis Newball, Ben Demon and Jack Martin. Well, Tony Daly is still alongside me here in the commentary box at the Hawthorns. This is the finals for the B teams. A great opportunity to take home the gold medals and the trophy come full time as well in game four of five here. It's Northampton again in action, up now against Shenfield. Yes, yeah, another good game, some really good games we've seen played so far. And a chance to see Northampton, their B team. Are they going to play the same system? Are they going to do the same thing similar? So it'll be an interesting game. Really looking forward to this one. The games have been thick and fast, as I said here, but I've enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed all of them. Well, we are ready to begin then. And it looks as though then we are underway with Northampton getting the game started as they kick towards the goal to the right of the picture in this first half. Northampton enjoyed success earlier when they beat Cardinal Heenan. Catholic High School 3-1 in the under-12s final. Can they enjoy similar success here with their B team? Now for the throw in. Long thrown direct into the penalty area. It does ricochet back through to the goalkeeper, Finley Clark, who was happy that it came his way. A big old throw that one as well. Into the danger area. Plenty of support in the house on the near side here at the Hawthorns. It's a great atmosphere, great occasion, great pitch for the players to be playing on. It's such a big day for all of them out there. Two sets of travelling supporters cheering on their respective schools, Northampton School for Boys and Shenfield High School. It's a great occasion, isn't it, Tony, for the players? Yeah, it's brilliant. They said to come out and play on, you know, uh, play on such a wonderful surface in a stadium with great, great fans as well. It's a great experience for them. It really is. That one's broken back here to Casper Norris. Norris, twisting, turning into the penalty area. This cross though was blocked in close proximity to him. Now Duggan, up to Brazier. The turn ball back to Duggan was a good one. Duggan advancing forward, accelerating oh, past God. the first defender. All the way across, it's a chance. It's still there for Brazier, it's blocked away, but still for Brazier. Oh, and the goalkeeper a makes a fine, fine stop. What a save that is. How on earth did that not go in? What a fantastic save. Started down this right hand side here with Brazier. Oh, sorry, sorry, with Duggan. Some, some good, absolute superb play. Cross comes in, miss hit. 
and no oh, fantastic save here we go again to the penalty area that time though Shenfield do manage to clear it's a brilliant reaction stop from oh, Clark to get back to his feet yeah, outstanding it was very early on but it could prove to be a crucial crucial moment That could be a crucial save in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, well, it certainly gives some confidence as well to the yeah. Shenfield goalkeeper. How's that for an early nerve settler? McMillan. And for take two of the Northampton throw in. There's an option here over on the right side. Again, it's played through here to Duggan. Just side-footed it, goal bound. It's on target, but it's always meant to be saved by the goalkeeper. Yeah, just couldn't get a hold of that one. It's a lively start here. And a very lively atmosphere as well. Yeah, good tackle. Ayodele, brilliant tackle, though. To take the ball away from Ayodele. The referee was happy with both challenges. Hamilton, the captain for Shenfield, then saw it taken away from him, though. Brazier after it again for Northampton. This is Casper Norris. Forward down this left flank for Shenfield. Norris hangs that one up high. Good cross into the penalty area. It's still there in the danger zone. Is this one going to end up? It's dealt with in the end by Liam Murray for Northampton. Lovely cross by Norris there. Yeah, Norris, who was listed as a substitute to begin with, but has started the game on this left wing for Shenfield. It's a late change to the starting nine for manager Gary Sapsford. Well, Delhi there with the effort, but only into the side netting. Yeah, I don't think he's shooting there. Uh, Ayadeli is trying to get a cross in. Hits the side netting. Going for the goalkeeper. Brown managed to prod that one through. Good challenge though from Archie Drogman. Number four at the back for Shenfield. Five minutes played, it's still nil-nil. But it's been a very, very lively opening. Northampton came close to the opening goal as well, but for the splendid save from Finley Clark. Out here for the corner. And Clark might have more work to do. Good delivery required there. Short in the end there to Brazier who went across as that short option. Good ball in. Excellent clearance there. Super super defending again. Corner again. Some clearer plays by Northampton with their set pieces. Keith and Shenfield on their toes. Delivery into the penalty area from Duggan. The goalkeeper palms it away. It's still there though. And then around the area and it's bundled in. Northampton get the breakthrough. Chris Orakoya. Just the start that Northampton were looking for. And it's Orakoya, the man to provide the finish. Super play from the defender. We've already seen him close down previous before that. Good defending. And as they come up for the corner. And he finishes it like a striker. Superb finish on his left foot. Great finish. Little deflection in. Nothing, nothing he could have done then. McMillan had no chance with that. 1 0. 1 0 Northampton are ahead. Did take a nick on its way through, but it was goal bound and going in anyhow. McMillan's desperate attempt to keep the ball out. Orakoya with the goal. 
after the earlier opportunity that they had as well. They'll certainly feel that they deserve that for the start that they've made. And again, we get an early goal. Yeah, it seems to be theme at the moment, this uh, now. <laughs> back and side onto the end of it there is Charlie Winter joint top goal scorer for Shenfield on route to the final in the PlayStation Schools Cup couldn't make anything of it that time but he might be a, a danger player to look out for out there for Shenfield well dealt with by the covering defender on that occasion throwing into the penalty box dealt with the game though up to the number nine Brazier he links the play Brazy has gone for the return ball too. Didn't quite come his way that time though. De Dominguez with the clearance. Under pressure there. Intense pressure as well because it was Manuel Oyadeli who was very close to it and bearing down on the defender and in the end gets the corner. Yeah, Oyadeli chasing his own flick on there to be quite honest with you. That's really good work. Closing him down. Defender thought he had more, more time than he did. Forced him, forced the corner. Well done. You know, it was just a check of the shoulder, wasn't there, for the defender, Jack O'Byrne, and maybe just a little bit of panic set in as well as he saw Oyedeli charging in behind him. There's a defender on the back post here, the goalkeeper does well, though, to come and gather, collect that one. No thought about trying to slow the game down, was immediately intent on sending it long forward. To Duggan it went, now Skelton. Brown trying to play the ball back to Skelton but Winter was there to nip in and get there first Hill back to Winter a couple of options over on this near side it does come across now to Casper Norris Norris trying to make something of it good tackle though did that one stay in play yes it did so he's the referee good defending again Referee here in this one is Rio Pledge. His assistants Paul Kempin and Alistair Kennedy, the linesman for this particular game. Brazier charging forward with the ball oh, at his feet good. again. There's a player who's gone down here for Shenfield it looks to be a, a head injury as well which is why the game has to be stopped all necessary precautions need to be taken of course didn't quite catch what happened to the stricken Shenfield player there but it's a breaking plate he looks a bit winded yeah it might be the case he was down holding his head to mm. begin with but back to his feet now either way which is good to see Referee will presumably restart play with the uncontested drop ball once we're ready to resume. Arakoya, the goal scorer, still just receiving some information, messages from the manager. That one sent forward first time after the drop ball, but it bounces through, ricochets back to the goalkeeper. Advancing forward here, down wide, right hill. Good challenge though, really good tackle to hold hill up and halt really his was. progression. Really was. Watch the ball all the way there. One nil, Northampton are ahead. Twelve minutes played. Shenfield just getting back into this game now. After conceding that early goal.
direct thrown into the penalty area but Horikoye is well positioned at the back there for Northampton McMillan there with the throw in and towards Oyedeli that's over on the far side again. Certainly have just settled down though, haven't they, Tony, since yeah. the concession, Chenfield, and as you say, just coming back into it now. Yeah, yes, they have. They've settled down a little bit now. Just needs to start getting that ball down. Get a few passes together as they are now. So in terms of defensive, defended really, really well. They're very solid in defence. Just get a few passes. The initial indication there from the referee's assistant, the linesman on the far side was for a goal kick, but he's been overruled by the referee, who pointed immediately for the corner. Good opportunity to put it in an area where it can be attacked, unopposed. And towards the near post area, it was a good ball in. Well defended too, to head that one behind. Safety first defending. And it's going to be a left-footed delivery. Into the penalty area it goes again. Over the head of Oyadeli that time, but it's out for a third successive corner. Just continuing to mount and apply the pressure here on the Northampton net. Yeah, he's put in a really good area. You know, can, can they get that first header on it there now? That's the important thing. Especially if he's going in that near post area. A lot of congestion there, it's going to cause a lot of trouble. Again, it's into a similar area towards the near post, perhaps not quite the distance as prior to that on it that time. Up to Murray on the counter. Couldn't find the forward run there though of Charlie Duggan. Quarter of an hour gone. Midway through this first half. Duggan's flick forward after it again is Brazier, who's really making a nuisance of himself at every opportunity. Panariello here is coming on to replace the goal scorer, Orokoye. The first change yeah. made for Northampton. Yeah, I thought he defended really well as well, scoring his goal. Francis Newbold here is coming on in place of Louis de Dominkis. There's also a change as well here happening, a second Shenfield change with Frankie Harvey coming on here. Frankie Harvey is on to replace Norris, who began the game, having initially been listed as one of those amongst the substitutes. So Newbold and Harvey are both now on for Shenfield. Could they inspire something in this second half of the first half? Manager will certainly be hoping so. Yes, made three early changes. Yeah, the roll-up, roll-off substitutes, of course, allow for that for both managers at this age group. <laughs> Duggan was dispossessed to begin with, but then got his toe back to it. Here's Brazier. Duggan to the right, but Brazier will step inside and go alone. Wide of the target. Try to move it into that far post there, Brazier. Picking the ball up, attacking his defender. Try to use it on the blind side. So he's trying to do there, he's unlucky.
goal kick there then taken by the goalkeeper Clark Coles all the way out of play though not the distribution that he there was looking for Throne was taken by the substitute Panariello who has slotted in in place of Orokoye in the right side of defence as a straight swap between that pairing Newbold, another one of the recently introduced substitutes with the throw in that time up to Oyedeli and it's out again as Shenfield makes some grab Delhi himself there has taken the throw in. It wasn't a bad throw in either. And after the initial touch, it was an audacious effort from the edge of the penalty area from Hill. Felt that it was worth an effort, but wasn't able to test the goalkeeper Schofield. Yeah, it sat up, sat up nicely from under volley. Just couldn't execute that one. Difficult effort. forward from the right boot off the goalkeeper Stolfield but he's yet to be called into proper save making action as we did see from his opposite number one down the other end prior to the opening goal Brazier. Switch of players, the ball across is meant for Duggan. If he can latch onto the end of it, couldn't quite. Duggan is adamant that that one took a touch on its way through, but the decision went against him and Northampton. Brazier just with a slightly heavy touch which allowed for the opportunity for McMillan to get there first and he did Murray trying to advance down the left good tackle though well held up now Oyodele no route through for the number nine that time game has just settled down since the opening ten or so minutes but I suppose that was be expected really Tony after the, the pace at which it started in those opening 10 yeah. minutes yeah it's, it's, it's very much an even game after that goal you said there now not, I mean, not too many chances corners for both sides long throw-ins coming in no big chances again as yet it's going to be another corner then here and another corner for the side who are a goal down, Shenfield. Again, they commit four of their outfield eight players forward, as well as the corner taker, of course. It's an out swinging ball into the penalty area. Maybe on the end of it, though. Swept forward there first time in search of and substitute Harvey who did then get his head to it in the aftermath but his header only seeing it out and behind and nothing in this game yet at all in terms of results no one looking stronger even though one nil up showing feel very much still in this game yeah, such a long way to go and it's such a fine, fine margin that splits the two teams at the moment as well. Oyedele. Oyedele with options both left and right here. Oyedele tried to yeah. offload to the right and there was just too much on his pass.
Had a couple of players over there, didn't he, Tony? Yes, but couldn't he find did. either of them. Just yeah, absolutely overcooked just the ball. To, yeah, yeah, overcooked that one, to be quite honest with you. He really did. Really did. So I've got myself in good situations there, but that's that final pass. Murray, the goalkeeper, will collect comfortably enough. Offside flag there has been raised, but the referee hasn't yet seen the flag. Still the flag is up on the near side. The referee's attention hasn't been brought to that. And still the flag remains mm. up. It's a strange so moment because just, the flag's yeah, still up on the near side. Yeah, still hasn't looked at it. I think you can put it down now. And he's still got it up he's on the near side, and it's such a strange He's determined, moment. he's determined, isn't he? Eventually, the referee has yeah. seen it. Mm. Just about 60 seconds later, yeah. we're going to get the free <laughs> kick. We've got there, we've got there. Well, we've got there in the end, and the referee is going to restart play with the free kick from that offside decision. That's where the officials could do with the wireless yeah, headset officials, communications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't have the benefit off here, and I suppose it's a, it's a raucous crowd as well. It's kind of not easy, but I think the crowd were doing their best to try to alert the referee to the offside flag as well. Another corner. Well, there's been a plethora of Shenfield corners in this first 25 minutes. Can they make one of them count? Most of the deliveries have been from the opposite side and most of them have dropped towards the near post area. Let's see where this one ends up. Towards the near oh, post area yeah. again. Yeah. Where well, Delhi was closest to it in gold and black. It's a bit of a, a misfired clearance. The foul is given by the referee's assistant, just a bit over eager to get the ball back there, perhaps Duggan. He was penalised. This is the challenge. Are you Delhi? Murray with half time now on the horizon. Are you Delhi making a nuisance of himself once more? But again, the Northampton defence equal to the challenge. Really well defended again. Yeah, very solid at the back. Playing that back three. Thomas Skelton here is going to be replaced by Jaden Ikoyo. Ikoyo's first involvement for at least the closing stages of this first half. It's going to be another switch as well with Nathan Chudasama, the second player to be introduced at this break and play. He's on to replace Charlie Duggan. Yeah, it's a bit scrappy at the moment. Game still hasn't quite settled down. Hamilton. He's given the ball away though, couldn't find Oyadeli that time. 
Right place, right time at the back there, new ball, but only momentarily. Here's Brazier now. That one will run all the way out for the corner. Here down the other end, and an opportunity for Northampton then to show us what they've got by way of a delivery into the penalty area with this set feet. Yeah, we've had plenty of corners. No end product at the moment with these. Short corner there, but it didn't work out how Northampton wanted it to at all. And in fact, it might kickstart the counter-attack here for Shenfield. Not back on the cover there, the captain Harry Brown, and he needed to because it wasn't the corner that they wanted. Newbold with the throw in over the head of Wyadeli that time though long throw in perhaps being lined up here let's see how far he gets <laughs> into the penalty area it does go from Oyedele flipped on inadvertently but it's now in the safety of the arms of the goalkeeper up to the substitute that was great play forward again good challenge oh, yeah. though equally good tackle high ball it's not the clearance that Shenfield wanted to begin with it's not one going to end up it's still a right battle around the edge of the penalty area and it's Scrappy at the moment as we move into a minimum of three added minutes at the end of this first half. Well done. Yeah, there's a player down, down here for Shenfield, yeah. which is going to bring about another stoppage in play. It's the medical team being called for. The referee's decision was goal kick. So we'll restart with that. Once we're ready to resume. Still to come today following the conclusion of this game at half past five. The kickoff time for the girls under 13s 9v9 schools cup final as we move up an age group. South Huntley School will be in action there and once again we'll see Shenfield High School take to the field so this game here the first of two back-to-back -back finals for Shenfield swept up well there by Jack Oben Fair. Shenfield do defend as a unit, defend really, really well, hard to break down, both teams in fact. Yeah, it's certainly come to the forefront, an increasing amount as the half has progressed on. Here's Ayadeli though, looking to find a route to go for an equaliser before half time. Oh. Referee with a decision to make mm. and the decision is corner. A good, good defending in the end. Defensive challenge. Player has stayed down here for mm. Northampton. It was the defender that slid in to make the challenge. I believe it's Jack Oban who's down at the moment, but yeah, he's getting some treatment, extensive treatment there. Too happy. Not yeah. happy. He's not happy with it. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, what it does mean as well is that Northampton are going to have to defend this late corner in the first half with one man less. So Shenfield will have the player advantage in the penalty area. Still work to do then, Tony. Yes, if, yes. if Northampton to get through to midway points, the goals to be good. It's going to have to defend this corner when yeah, it eventually comes. Yeah, absolutely. Need to defend this. Keep it in going one 0 Conversely, Shenfield would love a little goal here. Getting full of confidence into the second, into going into the second half level. Well, the bad news for Northampton is I don't think that. The man down here is going to be able to continue. I think a substitution's just been called for. Which is just going to put a bit of a dampener on what otherwise has been a very strong first half for them. Yeah, it's not the best. It's awful, awful when it happens. Trust me, I've been there. It's not a nice thing. Yeah, it was bodies on the line stuff, wasn't it? As yeah, he it is, yeah. just slid in there to try yeah, to, yeah. to make the defensive intervention and did just that, but in doing yeah. so, seems to have picked up an injury. Well, it's good if he can get up and walk off in there, which is a good sign. That's a good sign. So, Jack O'Byrne is replaced then as he makes his way off injured. Wish him all the best, of course. And the substitution is made and well then taken, the corner is taken by the goalkeeper just relieves all the pressure that doesn't it yeah, it's brilliant brilliant play brilliant sight as a defender and it might get even better here as well for Northampton because they're breaking forward and with numbers but on the other hand it was Shenfield who were back with numbers in abundance at the back too So over time at the stoppage yeah. time after yeah. that injury. Absolutely. So I've this one again. Yeah, just a little tangle there. Nothing, nothing to it at all. All eyes on the referee, we just with a check of the watch, the whistles in the mouth of the referee, but he's going to allow this one to continue, and it's Northampton okay. again on the attack, good ball into the penalty area, it's cleared out of the danger zone, danger zone now though, it looks as though Shenfield are going to get to half-time, just the one goal down, indeed they do, and that's how we stand at half-time, Captain Hamilton is ushering his players back down the tunnel quickly, they have work to do in this second half, don't they Tony Shenfield, if they are to get back into it, but it's Northampton, with a slender advantage moving into the second half. What did you make of the first period? Yeah, I thought, again, we've had two teams defended uh, really well. Obviously had a break from the corner after that what, after that goal. Not much chance created by Shenfield at all in terms of that, but defended extremely well. And if anything, uh, uh, for me, Northampton looked the most likely to score. As I break to box the time as well. Well, these are the highlights then from that first period. That yeah, was a fantastic save. Great double stop, yeah, wasn't it? Was, it, it was fantastic. From Clark. It really was. But then the goal did come for Northampton. Score for boys. Up from the back for the corner and Orokoya. I think you said at the time, Tony, took it like a striker up yeah, there. Yeah, did. Definitely did. And little strike with his left foot there. Tried to put did put it off the side of the goal there, didn't quite get it right, it was a good strike, but didn't quite get it on target. Well, 1-0 then to Northampton at half-time, we'll head down to our pitch side announcer for some half-time entertainment, but make sure you stay with us for the second half. I think we're going to choose you right at the back because you look like you're about to fall over. Come on down, sir. You're going to be playing our game now here at halftime for the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023. So come and join me pitch side. We have our Shenfield High Schools representative.
All right then guys, thanks for joining us. Who do we have here? What's your name? Where you come from? Reese. I'm from Northampton. And Reese, who are you supporting here this afternoon? Northampton School for Boys. Northampton School for Boys, Reese over here, and then my man here. What's your name? Where you come from? Cameron, I'm from Shenfield. All right, Cameron and Cameron, who are you back in here this afternoon? Shenfield! Shenfield over here, so it's Cameron and Reese. Now, Cameron and Reese, I don't know if you've ever seen it on telly. Have you ever seen a game called Bowls? Usually some very elderly, elderly gentlemen play it, but this afternoon we're going to be playing it here at the PlayStation Schools Cup. We're going to have Shenfield on this side, Northampton School for Boys on this side. What I need you to do is kick the ball into the centre of the pitch. You'll see Keris in the centre of the pitch. Keris, give us a wave. Hi, Keris. You need to get those balls as close to her as possible. The closest, after three attempts, wins the game. Keris, I'm going to come over, over here as well. Our official adjudicator team. All right. So, as Northampton are one nil up, we're going to go for Shenfield to play first. Shenfield, kick your first ball for us. Get it close to Keris. Oh, that's not a bad first attempt. Oh, that was mean, Keris. That was mean. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. So, Swan Physio, eh? All right, Reese from Northampton. Here we go. Oh, gentle. Gentle, though. He's got it into the centre circle. Oh, that's not bad. That's what, about, about three metres away so far. All right, we'll go back to Sheffield. Let's see what you got, Cameron. Hey, you can't knock the other ball out of the way. You can't do... Ooh, that's close. That was close. All right. Reese, let's see what you got. Oh, I tell you what, I've got a feeling Reese has played this before. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. You're still closer with your first attempt, but at least that's in the center circle. All right, come on, Cameron. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Oh, <laughs> what are we saying there, Keris? I think, I reckon that might be closer. We'll, we'll find out in a minute. Reese, no pressure, your final attempt. Let's see how you do. Oh, I'll tell you what, I can see what he's done. Can he get it past? All right, I'm going to ask our official ESFA team because this is close, these two. I reckon we've got to pace it out. All right, so this is for Shenfield. That's three. And then for Northampton, one, two, three. Should I tell you what? Should we do one more? Should we do one more? Because I think that's too close. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's get these balls out of the way. That's it. One last attempt for either of you. All the other attempts didn't count. This is it. All right. Cameron from Shenfield. Your final attempt. Oh, it's not bad. If it could slow down. Oh, okay. Okay. Reese, let's see what you got. <laughs> Your winners of our PlayStation Schools Cup Bowls Tournament, Reese from Northampton School for Boys! Cameron, amazing effort from Shenfield High School, absolutely incredible. I mean, it's been such a great final so far. Of course, it was going to be a close halftime game as well, right? Of course, you can get involved on the socials as well, at Schools Football, and of course, our good friends at PlayStation PS Schools Football as well will be asking you to vote for your player of the match. And as well, remember, when that goal is scored, we want the biggest, the best celebrations because out of the whole four days, whichever school can bring the most noise, bring the most craziness, we'll be winning a whole load of prizes from our good friends at PlayStation as we get ready for your second half between Northampton School for Boys and Sheffield High School.
Welcome back then for the second half of game four here at the Hawthorns. It's Monday's play. It is half time and 1 0 to Northampton up against Shenfield High School in the ESFA under 12 9v9 PlayStation Schools Cup final for the B teams. Tony Daly, what do you think the message would have been from the two managers ahead of the second half? It's Shenfield with the onus on them now to try and get back into this. Yeah, I think create a few more chances, take a bit more gambles going, you know, when they're going forward, get people, get people in and around that area there. And for and, and for Northampton, for me, just keep going the way they're going. The they're one nil up, they're looking comfortable and they look a little more likely to score a goal. So I, I, I think a little bit more needed from Shenfield. Underway then for this second period. And Shenfield restart proceedings. Slip through immediately there to Charlie Brazier. He was a live wire in that first 30 minutes for Northampton. Didn't quite get the cross right that time. Goal came early on in the half. Chris Orakoye, the scorer of it, up from the back. And he bundled home from a corner. This was that moment. And it's the all important moment at this stage. Long thrown into the penalty area. Breaks back out here though. Initially to the substitute Panariello. Clark long forward, it's a bouncing ball, it's then off the head of Thomas Skelton. Murray. After this one in behind again is Oyedeli, Oyedeli's latched onto the end of it as well, has he just bounced away from him. It looked for a second as though Oyadeli was going to have the opportunity to shoot, but that never really quite came about how it looked as though it was going to. Oh, couldn't quite read the bounce it came back at him to get it on his chest. Broke through, just his bounce here, cut back. He was a bit unfortunate to be quite honest there. Yeah, maybe just didn't quite get the rub of the green that time. Oyedeli again though causing problems with his ever tenacious play chasing what looked to be a lost cause to begin with goalkeeper went flying to the right and well had to make the save pushed it out wide from the danger zone as well much better second half start by Shenfield make a keeper have to work Forward here goes Brazier. A couple of options in the centre, but Brazier's ball was intercepted before reaching either of them. Panarielo. Turning in possession now, Murray. Brown. Brazier. Into the penalty area, it's palmed away. It's still there though, out onto the edge. Oh, and it's over the bar. Golden opportunity. It stays at 1-0 though. It really was. Again, Brazier causing all sorts of trouble down his left-hand side here. Puts a lovely ball in. Just couldn't get on the end of it. Keeper saved this. And just get head over it. Wasn't it with confidence? He's in two minds there. You know, whether, whether to side-foot it, drive it. In the end, well over the bar. Now yeah, it was the substitute, Jaden Nikoyo. rising wasn't it but it was a big chance nonetheless it's Northampton coming back again in behind for should have saw him. the goalkeeper got there goalkeeper nice and sharp there Clark off his line to Hill <laughs> and 
Now Murray for Northampton. Infield there to Brown. He's giving the ball away though, robbed of possession by Hamilton. Hamilton has it back now, but only for a split second. Wasn't able to control that time. McMillan. Definitely better signs for Shenfield at the start of the second half, but they're still really yet to threaten the goalkeeper, Schofield. Yeah, they're, they're getting shots at goals at now. They're, they're a lot, lot better now. Definitely more attacking-minded this second half, which they need to be. Try and get this goal back. on halfway Charlie Duggan is returning to the field and he's going to replace the man who started on the substitute bench Nathan Chudasama and was lively when he was on in that first half so his reintroduction might just spark something in an attacking sense as well for Northampton <laughs> was under pressure there Drogman but dealt with it well yeah did his job there of the throw in good distance on it's allowed to bounce as well which is always a concern for any defense Skelton couldn't find the pass that he wanted that time can he maintain his pressure now Shenfield Get that ball up that field. There was a bit of a heavy collision there in the middle of the park. The referee is playing an advantage, but there's two players still down. Into the penalty oh. area. Oh, and it's just wide. Oh, and it was an excellent cross yeah. from Liam Murray. And that presented the opportunity for Northampton to double their lead. But it stays at just one. And now the Shenfield player who is still down and there's also a Northampton man down as well are both able to receive treatment but this was the opportunity yeah, great crossing just couldn't get your foot round it yeah, again another good opportunity though that time for Brazier There is another substitution here, which is going to happen for Shenfield. It's Lee Davies who is going to be coming on. I feel they look both look all right to be fair, both had a clash, clash of legs in that tackle wholehearted tackle it's good to see both going for the ball yeah it was certainly an honest challenge maybe just a, a clash of knees in there as well which can always hurt but good to see both players now back to their feet at least the goal scorer for Northampton Chris Oracoya is going to be coming back on then here that injury has brought about the moment for his reintroduction. Referee perhaps wasn't aware that that substitution was being made, but saw the substitution board just about in time as Harry Brown, the captain, was the man there to have been replaced, and Orokoya was afforded time to go and take up his regular right-sided defence role over on the far side.
Now the kick can be taken. And ball is the decision from the referee. Forward there from Sothcott. A couple of touches on the chest for Ayadeli as he then tried to make something of it in an attacking sense, but wasn't able to maintain possession. Good defending there. It's definitely a battle out there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Very stop start again, it is. Two fairly physical teams. Both sides have only conceded just the three goals en route to the final in this PlayStation Schools Cup for B Teams competition. Well, Delhi after that one. Good defending by the keeper, read it well. And the goalkeeper sent it long, all the way downfield for Duggan. Duggan held up here by Davies. Here's Oyedeli, away from the first challenge, and he might be away here, Oyedeli. Right, really good tackle all around on the cover. Orakoya, superb defending. It needed to be as well, because yeah, it did yeah. look as though Oyedeli might have a free run in on goal there, but not to be for him as Orakoya came across to make the splendid challenge. Yeah, what you've seen some really good defending this game today from both teams. Super stuff there. Oedeli, but, but covering, covering tackle, superbly done. Excellent play. He had a good tackling against him in the first half as well. Oedeli, again, breaking free. Couldn't find the subsequent quality on the cross though yeah it's just that final ball that final bit for all the attributes very quick strong likes to run with the ball but it's that final pass that's the most important thing as well that end product well if he can continue to create those sorts of moments though half chances for Shenfield then you sense the the moment might come about for them as you say, they're just that final execution that's lacking at this stage. New belt. Winter. Up to Oyadeli. Good header away, but it's only coming back. Orokoya then got his head to the ball as well. Brazier. An option to the left as well on the overlapping run. Brazier still has it. Now offloads to that left side. Murray. Managed to wriggle free from McMillan to begin with. Murray up against two defenders, tried to go in between them. Again, we're good defending. Good pass. Toradelli again on the charge forwards. Manages to keep that one oh, in, cuts well. it back, and it's 1 1. Super time. Well, that's the moment that Sheffield were waiting for. Finished off superbly from close range, but much of the credit must go to Emmanuel Oyadeli in setting up the goal. It's one apiece. Yeah, we talked about that end product. He certainly did there. Super pace down the line. Got his cross in. Picked his man out. Excellent play. Pulled it back and a fantastic finish. Charlie Winter right into the top corner, did the business with the finish.
Super goal. Goalkeeper was beaten in the flash. Back all square. And it's all to play for again. It really is. And now Tony eats mm. Shenfield with the momentum. Yes. Yeah, can they push on from that now? Yeah, things change. You know, look comfortable. Did Northampton. But if you look at the way the play's gone now, not the case at all. Suddenly changed. Shenfield looked the team on the front foot. Another substitution. Phoenix Rockle is coming on here in place of Jaden Ayiko. That was the moment though for Shenfield as we just saw the replay there to set the jubilation alight for all the travelling support. Morris throwing. There's a little rush though, there aren't too many options really set for that. Swept back out here to Murray. Murray still battling for it, McMillan trying to see it over the line and then having lost possession. McMillan, the man to be penalised. Set piece here now, in a good position. Yeah, definite foul there. Shenfield opting against a defensive wall. They're treating this like a corner with a player on both the near and far post. Returning to the field is the captain, Harry Brown, after that injury concern. So it's good to see him back on. Seems to have recovered from that. On to replace Orokoya again. So the free kick treated well like a corner. And it is out now for what will be an actual corner. Into the mixer, this one will go again. Headed away once again, though. Murray saw that blocked. Back, though, to Murray. Well defended once more. The Shenfield defence have, I think, just really given their side a, a great basis to go and build from in the second half in particular. Yeah, they have, that's for sure. They really have. Going down the line. Into a more central position now with Rockle. Goal kick though. So I it. So really close game this one here now. Can't say which way this one's going to go. Momentum has shifted slightly onto Shenfield after scoring that goal. But as you can see, Northampton have come back again since that goal as well after the initial. Just a miscontrol at the crucial moment there for Thomas Skelton. Forward then though from Brown. With the back breaks for Newbold. The bouncing ball in behind for Oyedeli to get after. Can he get there, Oyedeli? He did, but the referee thought about blowing for the foul. In the end, I don't think the whistle was blown. And it's going to be a corner. Certainly put the whistle in his mouth, oh, the referee. He did. Yes, he did initially, but he was going to stop the play there. But let it continue. Corner it will be then. Yeah, good battle. Was that foul initially there? Just need to know. Well, it's going to be another corner. This time then, here for Shenfield. McMillan will be the provider. Can he get the delivery on the money? 
an outswinger, but it was comfortable enough for the Northampton defence to deal with that time. Long, high and away for Northampton. Rockle. It's cleared away by the goalkeeper, Clark, who sends it up to halfway. Hill, now with Oyadeli. Oyadeli after it on the return again. Got there as well. Still there inside the penalty oh, area, and it flashes across. It was a cross come shot, which was just too far ahead of anyone in gold and black to match onto the end of, and the wrong side from a Shenfield point of view from the upright. Yeah, really good effort there. Yeah, it's the goal scorer Winter, wasn't it, who had that effort looking for his brace. Chris Orokoya here is coming back on for Northampton on to replace number 11 Liam Murray there's another change happening as well with Jack Martin coming back on to replace Alfie Hill so a couple of changes one apiece as we move into the final nine minutes now as it stands we would be heading for penalties but there's still time of course for all of that to change. After this one in behind again, here's Shenfield. Good challenge, oh, really good tackle, yeah. crucial. How important was that? Yeah, it really was. breaking through here that was an important challenge there this one could could go all the way at the moment some crucial tackles have been made yeah something seems that way it's on a knife edge at this juncture which way will the pendulum swing next it's been back and forth to and fro who can now assert their dominance not again looking for Oyadeli he's just gone down there though holding his ankle and there's an opportunity in behind at the other end past the goalkeeper oh, oh it's against the post somehow somehow it stayed out well it was the defensive clearance which in the end came back off the woodwork how on earth did that oh, stay yeah. out it was in it's out defended off the post in the end, great defending. Grace is so unlucky there, breaking through. Well, between McMillan and Drogman, the Shenfield defenders just about did enough with the help of the upright as well. Oyadeli here is down at the moment, receiving treatment. As I say, just seems to be holding on to his, his ankle or Achilles as he... Yeah, I think, I think I'll kick, kick him back of his leg, to be fair. I think, it's like a, I think he's going to be okay. Yeah, back to his feet, which is integral really for Shenfield. He's certainly been integral to their second half success. Brazier feeds the ball through oh, here to Duggan. Okay. Just, just too, too long. Yeah, just too long there. Nice idea. You could see the intention. It's just not quite the execution on that occasion. High into the sky, it's going to drop back down there for Brazier. Well, back to the goalkeeper. That's 
smash long clear downfield as well. Here's Brazier on the end of it. Well defended. And come off in good defending. Nothing between the two teams at the moment. Yeah, it's really finely poised, isn't it? Really tough to call, I think, isn't it, as to which way this one could go in the final five minutes if there is indeed to be a winner. Make sure you head over to at Schools Football over on Twitter, the ESFA Twitter page to take part in the player of the match vote. The nominations for that, Chris Orokoya and Charlie Brazier from Northampton and from Shenfield, it's Archie Drogman and Emmanuel Oyadeli at Skulls Football to take part in the player of the match vote. Things could still all change though, here's Oyadeli. Trying to burst through again. Jack Martin, the latest Shenfield substitute, was close to it. Here's Oyadeli now though with it. Four swipe back to Martin. Swept into the penalty area, tapped onto the edge now, and the effort was on target, but straight down the throat of the goalkeeper, really. It's a testing one to deal with, but dealt with it was. Defended well, defended it well. Is there going to be another chance? Big chance in this game. Duggan. Still inside the penalty area. And the side footed effort goal bound. And it's always a tame one from Brown that time. Oh, the Delhi wins his side the throw in. Every moment is now crucial. We're at the stage when the game, the trophy, could be won or lost in an instant. Oyadeli again with the throw it. New ball. Ball again looking for Oyadeli and he might pounce upon it as well. It's still Oyadeli. And where's oh. that going to drop? It's just wide. Just about wide. Big chance again. And well defended in the end. There he goes. Mistimed this. It. It's in on goal. Keeper gets a touch. The touch was enough. And defended. Yeah. Swinging delivery there then from McMillan. New ball with the final touch. to see how much stoppage time we will have at the end of the 60 minutes as well we're getting into the stage though Tony yeah. when I think the two managers will have to start to think about who will be taking the penalties Absolutely. and who they want on the field yeah. for the period of play yeah. after full time yeah. for the penalty shooter if oh. we get there yeah I think that's the case I think yeah I think, I think both managers I think have got the players on the field looking at them now and, and there's going to be another sub here just because of that there now there might be a few couple of more changes actually. And it's Martin after this one for Shenfield. Sent away first time, no nonsense. 
Now for Northampton at the back. Yeah, nobody wants to make any mistakes, that's the thing now. So Frankie Harvey is back on, and Jack Martin is the player withdrawn. Harvey, presumably, yeah. offering himself as a penalty taker. Ayodele again with the long launch. Again, though, nothing coming of it for Shenfield. Still got possession, but it is only comfortable possession. There's a player down here in McMillan on this near side. He's stayed down here for the time being. The game, though, will continue, and there's a player free as well here, Duggan. If Northampton can find him, it's a, a brilliant recovery. Defending. Yeah, good defending. Still, McMillan is down, and Northampton there looked to try to exploit and utilise the space which was left in behind. Yeah, it'd be interesting how many minutes over going to be playing here as well. Jack O'Burn is on to replace Jaden Ayoko. Still, I think the fourth official just trying to sort out the added time board. Four minutes. Minimum of four minutes still to play. Although we've nearly played one of those already at this stage. But McMillan just being helped back to his feet now. So we might play the four from here. Let's see. Brown this time with the long throw and down the yeah. other end. Needs must at this stage. Oburn, the latest substitute. There's another man down here at the moment, and it's a Shenfield player. It's increasingly becoming the case as the players out there just give it absolutely everything they've yeah, got. I is, think we're that seeing is the case. Tired legs, giving everything else as well did take with that block shot as well probably, probably a bit winded giving everything they've got here now and that's going to affect the penalties as well you know with tired tired legs that's going to play a part as well yeah definitely it's another factor to add into the mix still a couple of minutes to go though we don't know could be one big one this is one big chance still It's the one big moment left in this. One last gasp piece of drama. It would be a cruel, cruel way to lose it, but then again, so with penalties. Duggan's ball in behind. Brazier over the goalkeeper. Just couldn't control it. It's a difficult chance. It was a difficult chance, to be fair. Stretching all the time, angles against him. Couldn't, yeah, wrap his foot, yeah. couldn't wrap his foot round it a frustrated figure there Brazier but it was a difficult opportunity an opportunity nonetheless though header means it's only coming back here's Brazier again might he get another chance here just took a heavy touch though at the crucial moment that just meant the ball just ran away from him Now Oyadeli, his opposite number nine, after it down the other end. Corner flag on the far side has taken a tumble, Oyadeli likewise, but he's back to his feet. Oyadeli that time with tired legs, can't control. Yeah, fatigue's going to be a factor here now, for sure. Nervous tension as we approach penalties. All eyes on the match official as to how much longer this one will be allowed to run for. McMillan was down in stoppage time. Not to Harvey, but it was well defended. Now slip through. Forward to Duggan. 
There's a player to the right as well. Duggan wanted to go alone. And took the touch behind. And what will the referee's decision be for that? And the decision is full time. Well, no time for a potential corner. And we are heading to penalties. What a crucial way. What a horrible way. This is going to be for one of the two teams to lose it, Tony. But what a brilliant way it's going to be for one of them to yeah, win it. It is. Better shown from Shenfield's second half, as he said. Really, really forced it. Scored a really good goal. And it's gone to penalties, as he said here. It's not, not the best way to, 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 to lose a game. But has to be done. It's all down to now who's got the nerve to take a penalty. This is time now for the glory day for the goalkeepers as well. Because the goalkeeper's not expected to, expect to save the penalty as it's such really, you know. He, he could be the hero. Yeah, Jack Schofield in goal for Northampton School for Boys and Finley Clark, the shot stopper for Shenfield. These are the highlights from the regular 60 minutes, but of course it's yet to be decided. That was early on now, it seems like a long time, time ago. ago yeah. Arakoya getting the opening goal. Credit as well, I think, must go to Sheffield for the way in which they did respond from that. It would have been easy for them to just crumble under the pressure there at that stage. Yeah, they did, especially, you know, especially where the first half went, didn't really create much. It's a fantastic goal this year, I think this is a goal. Lovely cutback. Just talking about the final, final pass, end product, and definitely produced there and a fantastic finish. Really was. Yeah, went to the scorer after superb play from Emmanuel Oyadeli. And then into the roof of the net, past the goalkeeper. And that was 1 1, and that's how it's finished then here at the end of the 60 minutes but all still to be decided from the dreaded penalties who can hold their nerve who will have the bottle can one of the two goalkeepers come up trumps and be the hero sure there might be some nail biting nerve twitching if you're watching on at home Probably the case for the supporters on the near side in the stand as well, but I'm sure they'll do their best to see their respective sides over the line here. It is. Compared to players that really compose, which is good. Shenfield players. Yeah, the Northampton players there as well, led by manager Paul Lacton. Seems to have the yeah, this of penalty takers yeah, out. Yeah, sorry. Do you see the difference in man manageship there? He's asked them, you know, who wants a penalty? Who wants to take it? Whereas I think he's really got organised this side here. The Northampton managers got it organised. Who's going to be taking the pens at this particular time? Different ways of doing things as well. As you can see, both sets of players, though, responded to it. That's the most important thing. Well, neither of these two teams have had to endure a penalty shootout en route to the final this season. They're going to have to go through one here. Northampton found the net 46 times en route to the final, but just the one goal for them here today. What it would suggest is that they have plenty of player across their squad who would be comfortable in taking a penalty the two teams here will line up on the halfway line and the penalties are to be taken in front of the goal to the right of the picture as we look at things from the main camera position and our commentary position as well up on the gantry here at the Hawthorns the home of West Bromwich Albion a chance for one of these players to make a name for themselves make themselves a hero within their school community as well Tony it's a brilliant opportunity yeah oh, brilliant. yeah albeit still such a nervous moment yeah. as well for them yeah absolutely really is you know to go down to penalties to the wire as I said who has the nerve to take a penalty to put that ball away 
Well, the first spot kick then. And to take first here will be Shenfield. Up against goalkeeper Schofield. It's a pressure penalty. A pressure moment, but it's tucked away. Winter did his job. And first blood to Shenfield in the shootout. Yeah, keeper's unlucky. Got a hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. Dive the right way. Up first here for Northampton is Charlie Brazier, the number nine. He will take this left footed into the roof of the net. Some pen that. That is some pen. No keeper is saving that one. The perfect response for Northampton. Francis Newbold now from the penalty spot. Newbold also left footed, strokes it in. Straight down the middle, good pen. Calm and composed in front of goal, no mistake. Who will falter first? As each pen goes on, each one scored, more pressure builds up. It's the skipper taking the weight of the pressure on his shoulders here, Harry Brown, the captain. Can he make it 2-2? Two -two? Yes, he can! Oh, good pen. Into the bottom corner, back level. Really good pen, that one. Slotted it away with confidence. Yeah, good penalty. Now it's the turn of the Shenfield captain James Hamilton. Joint top goal scorer for Shenfield this season. Can Hamilton get the job done? Hamilton, it's saved! A brilliant stop from the goalkeeper Schofield. And what a big moment that could prove to be in the shootout. What a great save that was. Stands up. What I like about him, really does, really good save. Schofield then with the stop, can Northampton take advantage? Yes they can, sent the goalkeeper the wrong way and Northampton are ahead in the shootout. What a great penalty that was as well really was there got the job done there Logan Sothcott into penalty. the top corner That's brilliant it. spot kick yeah great quick penalty there sorry great 10 no keeper stopping that one The ball back in Northampton's court. Right footed this time, but the same outcome. Duggan strokes his penalty home. And Northampton has just won away. Again, excellent penalty. Send the keeper the wrong way. Stroked it in. That's the most difficult side to put a pen. Rolled it in. Well, Shenfield, they must score. Else it's curtains on their cup final. And it's saved again! Schofield the hero! Northampton can celebrate! Cue the jubilation! Northampton school for boys do the double here at the Hawthorns. Winners earlier today and winners in the national final for the B teams as well. The under 12 9v9 PlayStation Schools Cup final. Schofield the hero in the shootout, Tony. He really is and deserves all the plaudits there. Two great saves. Very confident you can see him in that goal as well. The big old unit in that goal as well made it very difficult. So two, and he deserved it. Two great saves and has won 
the game for Northampton. Super, super play. Well done. Well, you better head down for the trophy presentations, but congratulations to Northampton, who here pick up the trophy. In just a moment, they will do exactly that. Schofield, the hero in the shootout. It's commiserations for Shenfield, who gave it absolutely everything they had in that second half. Got the equalising goal when Winter fired into the roof of the net to force the penalties, but it just wasn't to be for them in the shootout. And two great saves from Schofield. Don't go anywhere. We've got the trophy presentation coming up very shortly. Well, ready now then for the on-field trophy presentation. Congratulations again to Northampton School for Boys, having beaten Cardinal Heenan in their 18th final earlier today, in which they won 3-1. Well, it was a little less straightforward for them, wasn't it? With their B-team victory, but a victory nonetheless, and that's all that matters. As Northampton get the job done, got themselves over the line, and they very much have their goalkeeper, Jack Schofield, to thank for that. And he wasn't really called upon too much in the regular 60-minute period either. That was the hero in the shootout. Match officials here will step up first to take their medals. The trophy presentations being made by Tony Daly, who's gone down pitch side from a commentary position here up on the gantry and also Andrea Chilton there, the English Schools FA Chief Executive. Match officials Rio Pledger, Alistair Kennedy, Paul Kempen and Ray Brown, they're stepping forward to collect their medals. And we'll find out the winner of the Player of the Match vote. Archie Drogman, the winner of the player of the match vote. He understandably was very disappointed after that penalty shootout loss. But a consolation perhaps for him after a brilliant on-field display from start to finish as he takes his individual trophy and also the PlayStation vouchers there as well. Understandable that the overriding emotion for him is disappointment after what happened in the shootout. Silver medalists as announced by our stadium announcer and that's what they're going to have to settle for here, Shenfield. They can feel hard done by though because they had opportunities to get the game's third goal as well which ultimately in hindsight probably would have won it.
Oya Deli led the line superbly. Was instrumental in all things good, really, for Shenfield, particularly in that second half when the Northampton defence began to tire and he could increase his influence on the game even more. Set up the goal as well, Charlie Winter, of course, the scorer to draw us back level as it was at the time, and that's how it finished at 1 1. But it's silver for Shenfield. Greeted with a round of applause as well by the winning side, Northampton. And Northampton's coronation will here come then. Chris Orokoya coming forward as the first outfield player in line and he got the game started, didn't he really? That was the first big moment and the goal as well early on in that first half. What an amazing moment for Chris Orokoya to look back on as well. But every single player played their part, not just today as well, but across the course of the season in the PlayStation's Cup games, but also the other competitions in which Northampton B team have been competing in this campaign. It's been a real team effort. I'm sure manager Paul Lagden will have you know as well. We are hoping to hear from Paul Lagden on the pitch at full time as well after the trophy presentations. But the trophy then to be handed over and handed over to Captain Harry Brown. Who gets his hands then on that illustrious prize as he just poses for the photo there with Tony Daly, former Aston Villa star and England international winger. Northampton, Northampton School for Boys can celebrate as Harry Brown lifts the trophy high into the sky. It's two wins from two for Northampton today. Having beaten Cardinal Heenan earlier on, they've got the job done in the B team's final as well. Northampton School for Boys can once again celebrate. Commiserations to Shenfield. Congratulations again to Northampton. They got the job done on penalties. The worst way to lose, but some might say the best way to win. Northampton, crown champions. So I'm here with Coach Phil from Shenfield High School. What a final between these two sides. Yeah, it was incredible. I think there was a, a lot of great football played there uh, today. And I think the lads showed uh, great character to come back from 1-0 from down. Yeah, the key word there being character, I mean, that second half, pulling yourselves back into it, it really could have gone either way. Really cagey stuff in that second half and taking the penalty shootout to separate the two sides. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes uh, in football, you don't always get what you deserved. I, I, I thought we possibly edged it a little bit in that second half and then at the end of the day you're losing out on the lottery you know? and this thing I mean you cannot question there is no doubt at the commitment these young athletes gave you on the pitch today I mean the, the culture set by by this team and not just this team we've got we've got the 18 playing tomorrow and the year seven culture is just phenomenal you know they train together they play together they both want each other to win um, we've got a great set of parents over there as well that have followed us from about the quarterfinal onwards so yeah the culture here is absolutely uh, top on yeah some brilliant fans in the crowd here at the Hawthorns one final message to those watching 
Uh, just an uh, absolute thank you for, for supporting us and uh, pushing the lads on. Um, and let's hope that tomorrow we can, uh, we can come along again and watch the A-team win. Well, Coach Phil, we'll see you tomorrow. Commiserations one more time. Let's hear it for Shenfield High School. So I'm here with Coach Paul from Northampton School for Boys. It was an early goal early on, but then it took penalties to separate these two sides. I mean, what an afternoon. Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, many congratulations to Shenfield. It was a great game. Uh, could have gone either way. Uh, the man of the match at number four I thought was superb. We tried to get round him. There's no way we were ever going to get round. I thought he had an excellent game, and he didn't deserve to be on the losing team, I thought. But uh, no, a very, very close game. And... Uh, Oh, I don't want to sit through many of those penalty shootouts ever again, no. Well, I know there was a rumour about you potentially taking a penalty at some point, but I mean, you cannot question a commitment again from your side, both sides. I mean, in those last few moments during the normal time, it could have really gone either way. It could, and I like the attitude of both teams. I mean, neither team sat back and were going to settle for the 1-1. Both teams seem to be going for the victory which is a coach, you kind of, oh, what are we doing here? Um, but it could have gone either way. There was chances. I thought it was a very even game. Um, we, we had chances we could have taken. They, they had some near misses. Um, to come down to penalties, it's always a lottery. I thought our penalties were excellent, and I had every confidence in the people following on from that that they would have excellent penalties. And then, for once, our goalkeeper, Jack, actually listened and did what we told him, which was not commit, stay, stay as long as he could and go. And he's two excellent saves. Really, yeah, very proud of all the boys. Well, you guys have certainly done the double this afternoon here at the Hawthorns. We mentioned earlier about the community that's being built at Northampton School for Boys. Really is a pinnacle of sports. What you guys are achieving, not just in football, but across the board, is quite incredible. Well, I've got 17 boys here. We've had 23 boys training in our B team, and some of those boys actually deserved to be, would be battling for the 14. Um, a lot of them will be involved next year at under 13B. Um, I must mention Jamie Wilcock. We've been running the B team programme now. This is our 10th season. Uh, we've reached two semi-finals at under 12. This is the first final we've ever reached and, and we've managed to win the game. But I want to thank Jamie personally for letting me take on the B teams 10 years ago. The programme has gradually built up and built up to the point where it is now. So many boys involved in it at the club. Um, Jamie did it, Josh Melling is following on with that in the programme. There's a lot of commitment to the football within the team at the school. And these are the results. Today is the results of those things that are happening. So it's, it makes it all worthwhile. Well, Coach, I know you've got a very excitable team behind you, a very bunch of excitable fans behind you as well. I'll let you go and celebrate one more time. Let's hear it for Northampton School for Boys. And of course, more competitions on the way next. Don't go anywhere for our final game of day one here at the PlayStation Schools Cup 2023.
Welcome back then for the final time today in the ESFA National Finals of the PlayStation Cup. Here we have the under-13 9v9 PlayStation Cup final for the girls as we move up an age category from the under-12s. It is South Honsley School who come head-to-head -head here on finals day with Shenfield High School. Well, the two teams there are out onto the field. And let's take a look at how they line up then. For South Hunsley, they are led by Laura Bramhill, and in goal is Matilda Haddon. The rest of their starting lineup is then made up by the outfield eight of Izzy Flower, Holly Sutton, Lucy Hope, Sarah Harris, Daisy Short, Annabelle Cawthra, the captain, Macy Hyde, and Amelia Stirrup. As for Shenfield, then in the yellow and black out there here this evening. Ellie Gray is between the sticks as the starting goalkeeper. Then the rest of the starting nine is made up of Lily Newman, Lacey Windes, Layla Soya. The captain is Maisie Brickle, Amelie Ayers, Poppy Horton, Lucy Elliott and Evie Weimer. On the substitute bench for both teams, the substitutes for Laura Bramhill's South Honsley side are Freya Palmer, Ava Clark, Connie Baker and Isla Garnett. And as for the Shenfield substitutes, led by Hannah Thornhill, their options from the substitute bench are Isla Franklin, Faye Dignam, Amanda Coyote, Maisie Jane Johnson and Tegan Barber. Well, Tony Daly, four games have gone before us. This the final one of them today. It is the under-13s age group now as we move to 35 minutes each way. Interesting to see which way this one is going to go as well. It's a step into the unknown as these two teams come head-to-head -head here on finals day. Yeah, absolutely. We look for this final game uh, of the evening as well. As I said, we've had a fantastic uh, amount of games. We've come up with a penalty previous but onto this game now. It's interesting to see which team comes out firing first. We've had early goals of them in, in, in majority of the games here now. So if that's going to be the case now, it would be, be, be good to see. Yeah, just by the first game this morning, I think every other game that we've seen today has come with an early goal. Let's see if that pattern here continues. As it's South Hunsley ready to begin the game then. On the blow of the whistle from the referee, Paul Kempen. His assistants for this one are Rio Pletcher and Thomas Westwood. The fourth official is Ray Brown. The referee does blow his whistle and we are then underway. Holly Sutton, the player to get the ball rolling at the start of this first 35-minute period. Then into the penalty area immediately from the off as South Hunsley there played their way into a little bit of trouble early on. Breaking forward now though. And the player over on the right as well, it was Lucy Hope. Never quite broke through to her though. It's swept up by her opposite number four, Leila Sawyer. Annabelle Cawthra there, the number seven in the middle of the park for South Hunsley. She is the top goal scorer for the side from East Riding this season. Good break down the right hand side there as well. Some good football played, especially in that midfield, that midfield area. Again, as we start a frenetic start. High intensity play to start off with. Good header on there from Hope. It's back again towards Hope. She's still after this on the near side if she can keep it in, but the decision goes her way anyway. Hope did then get her toe to the ball in search of Corthra. Horton with good work in the middle of the park to get to that. It's swept up out here for the throw-in on this near side.
Shenfield having just been beaten in the boys under 12s B team's final looking as a school to get their own back here and at least get this victory here but there's still the stern task of South Honsley in the way for them Hope maybe just got the ball stuck beneath her feet back here to Hope came off her opposite number four Sawyer well defended though really good covering defending it's out for the throw Brickle the captain delivers the cross in and it runs all the way through as well Elliot is going to retrieve it Interesting start here early on with the first three minutes played. Yes, it is. It's, it's a quick start, quick game, no chances as yet. A couple of breaks, ball, ball being played out wide, hasn't settled down just quite yet. thrown into the penalty area there but referee blew his whistle for the foul Hyde up for Hope Hope just took a heavy touch though that presented the opportunity for Shenfield to win the ball back but they didn't have it long Likewise that time, as it should run all the way through. Indeed it does, out for the goal kick. Flower with the ball forwards. The goalkeeper has come out of a penalty area and with good reason to do so as well. Yeah, she did well there, the keeper. Had to had to make that. Any Gray, it is between the six and goal for Shenfield. Well judged that time. Just overcooked on the pass and it was almost going out. South Hunsley won the semi-final by two goals to nil. Annabelle Cawthra was the scorer of both of their goals in that crucial semi-final. As for Shenfield, it was very much less straightforward for them. They actually came back from 3-1 down to win 5-4 against Surbiton High School. Obviously, we'll want to get out on the front foot, but should they fall behind, then I'm sure that comeback victory would give them a bit of confidence as well. Absolute goal fest to a semi-final, that one. Take a game like that this evening as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes it does just take the game's first goal to really kick-start things. Let's see if that's the case here today, this evening. Still very early stages at the moment with just six minutes on the clock. I haven't seen a chance as yet, though. Just both teams, bit cage it let's just start off with. Just assessing each other. Flipped on there by Weimark. After it here is Elliot. Back to Weimark. Just struck the shot wide of the near post, but it's the closest that either side have come so far. It was a good move. Yeah, it was. Good effort there really was but good defending there uh, by short she had to get across two players there to make the distraction long with the goal kick but only two puppy Horton 
Sawyer there in battle with Sutton. Prodded forward from Harris. And the penalty area into the box now, but it's back through to the goalkeeper, Gray. Keen to restart things quickly as she looked to unleash Horton down this near left side. Again, Shenfield here have it. And they have a throw. -in. Need control, the referee plays the advantage as well. I think coming of it in the end was a potential opportunity for Shenfield there to take advantage as the referee played the advantage. Wasn't the case in the end. Ayers just with a loose touch, not the pass that she was looking for. Got back really yeah, well though recovery, there. Yeah, good recovery that. Sutton here in the attacking third for South Hunsley. Mentioned that South Hunsley are here representing East Riding Schools FA. Shenfield are from Chelmsford and Mid Essex Schools FA as well. Both sides having travelled here to the Hawthorns for the game this evening. Short there with the long throw in. Sutton closest to it, but it's allowed to trickle through back to Gray. Stays at 0 0. Just that one effort so far, really, which went wide. And with Matilda Haddon's right hand post. Might be another opening here, though. Horton. Forced to check back. Still has it, though. Horton away from the defender now. Horton can't you at the shooting opportunity. Just crowded out there, though by the South Hunsley defenders. Brickle gets the corner. Ayers looks very competent in that midfield area as well, comfortable on the ball. She spread a few couple of balls already out wide. Wants to get on the ball and play. Corner there is taken short and it's 2v1 here from the corner. Brickle still trying to weave her way through. Couldn't. Which a play there opted for by Cawthra, who's trying to just dictate things in the middle of the park for South Hunsley, but has yet to be able to do that really. Oh, why Mark here has won it back into the box. She goes and a good stop. Best chance of the game so far. Yes, yeah, big, big chance there for Shenfield. Some good play initially out there by Elliott. And Weimark hit the target with a really good save. Yeah, stood firm and stood up to the challenge well there. Matilda Haddon. Again here, Shenfield take their corner short. And again, it was 2v1 from that. with just the one South Hunsley defender out there. Shenfield, though, couldn't make use of that overload. Move on there, right wing. Referee deems that a fair challenge. It's then through the legs of Poppy Horton. Yeah. 
forward for Holly Sutton to try to make the most of. Well defended though. Defence is on top as well at the moment. Up to Weimar, trying to then just set it back to bring Elliot into the equation. Twelve and a half played, it's still nil-nil. What have you made of the opening exchanges in this one so far, Tony Daly? Yeah, they're uh, two committed teams for sure. Really committed. Want to get on the both teams. Still want to play football, even in tight areas, but they've been closed down as a result of it because no one's giving it an inch in terms of um, getting the ball down, closing people down. Here we go. Oh, I'm an opening here, oh, and that's the first goal. goal. Here we go indeed, it's Lucy Hope. And it's the star that, East, that the East riding side, South Hunsley, were looking for. 1-0, Lucy Hope the scorer. What a really good strike. Struck a tremendous ball. Good interception. Carry the ball on. And a fantastic strike into the corner. What a superb finish there by Hope. A lot of composure. Keeper had no chance. Super goal. No messing about with the finish. It's a brilliant strike from Lucy Hope. And it's their first real chance as well, in truth. That for South Hunsley. There was no stopping it. They're coming forward again here, and it's the goal scorer Hope again. Just checks back. Into nice. the penalty area. Neat, intricate play once more, wasn't it? Didn't quite work out that time, but certainly it's first onto the scene and at the centre of things at the moment, Hope. Yeah, there she is. She's the one causing all the trouble at the moment in terms of defensively. Push Enfield. Just about kept in play on this near side there. Good work from Horton in doing so. Out for the throw in now though. Nearly a quarter of an hour played. And that the breakthrough goal. That might just kickstart this game into life. A brilliant goal it was as well from Lucy Hope. Here's Weimark. That was in the back end of Weimark. Having a glorious effort. Went down the other end. Horton, back again to Weimark, oh, good start. Good That's two great saves now from Matilda Haddon in the South Hunsley net. And she keeps her team's advantage intact. Yeah, superb save there. Again, Weimark again, fantastic strike and what a save. Great strike, great strike. Yeah, struck that one so sweetly, but again the goalkeeper is up to the task in saving it. Looks as though we've got an in-swinging corner here then. Swung right into that near post area and it's out again here. Off the head of Sarah Harris for take two. Just clipped in towards that near post area. Again, it's sent in towards that near post once more, and it's the same outcome. It's a period of might pressure, be, though. It, it is, it is. It might be worth one of the Sheffield players getting across there now. Cause it doesn't have to get a touch. If he gets across there, can cause a lot oh, of it's trouble. It's over the goalkeeper, and it's in straight from the corner. Well, well it's a goal direct from the corner. And that means that Shedfield are back level. What a strike! A cross comes shot from Maisie Brickle. What a piece! Here you see he's run again, superb corner. Put it in the right areas as he gets the, the front post. Great goal. 
straight in. What a great corner that was. Yeah, after the first two deliveries, failed to beat the first defender. Well, that one certainly did, and it beat the goalkeeper as well. Then given away there, though, at the other end, which could prove to be problematic. Sutton still. Flower in the centre. Out for the throw in. It's a good game. Back on level terms. We've passed the midway point of this first half now as well. Cawthra. Cawthra there just with sort of a lunging challenge, maybe a sign of the frustration after she was dispossessed. The referee not happy as well with the challenge and trying to bring it back here for that foul. As you can see there, uh, Brickle in the midst of everything there. She really is on the ball again. Definitely playmaker. Scoring that great goal. Full of confidence. Well, this was the equalising goal over the goalkeeper and into the back of the net. Just had enough bend on it, didn't it? Yeah, so it's, it's in a great area, really was. That's the case sometimes, you see that from, from wide free kicks on a number of occasions as well, when the touch isn't made but it evades the goalkeeper because perhaps the goalkeeper's anticipating a touch and I think that maybe was the case there as well. And the amount of bodies there as well, you know, if, 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 if there's people run across so many people in the area, it's so difficult for a goalkeeper to make a judgement of where the ball's going to go. Substitution was there made for South Hunsley as well as they made that switch between Macy Hyde and Connie Baker. Sawyer with the throw in. Where's that one going to break? The answer was back to the forward Horton. That's again for another corner from the same side, which proved to be the route to the equalising goal. Don't change it, put it in the same area. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it will be. The South London keeper, keeper. Adam will be really, really worried about this again. Don't try and change it, don't try and be clever. It's been effective. Whip it in, can someone cross it near post? That's a great ball in again. To the back stick that time from Brickle, it's still around the edge of the penalty area. Maybe an opportunity here though for South Hunsley to counter, couldn't find the pass to do that. Sutton was the intended target of the forward ball, but it was always asking a lot of her to control. Got a shot there of Hannah Thornhill in charge of Shenfield. She'll be happy with the response that her side have made since falling behind early on. Long and high as well from Haddon. Corthro there that time on the receiving end of the foul. referee there was just ushering Poppy Horton back but I think her coach was as well as the assistant manager there for Shenfield wanted Horton back in a defensive role Elliot out on that right hand side could be an outlet as well really quick direct happy to run 
at the defender in those wide areas. Throw in again here then. Being lined up for Shenfield, it's into the penalty area, not cleared, which is dangerous in that sort of position. I do deal with the danger now though, here's Corthwell. Corthwell skips past the first challenge, options to the left, Corthwell might look to go alone, it's still oh, Corthwell! Annabelle Corthwell, the South Hunsley captain, restores their lead. What a brilliant goal, 2-1. What a fantastic run and the composure of the finish as well. Super goal. Absolutely superb. Corthra at it again. Strokes Dachi just left the defender for dead and stroked it home. Great finish. Super goal by Corthra. 21 goals now in this season's PlayStation Cup competition. It's a staggering amount. Mm in the games played for the South Honsley top goal scorer 21 in 8 games oh that's a loose moment which could bring about problems again Shenfield again now the side who have to hit back with a counter punch to respond beaten by a pure moment of brilliance though from Annabelle Corthwright Corthra again, good ball in, goalkeeper, good judgment. Yeah, it was a good ball in the biting area, keeper alert off the line. Elliot there with the forward ball, but there's no teammate there. Corthra, nice control. Away from the defender again. Bricks back there for Sutton, but only for a split second. Horton was the intended target for that, but Flower intercepted. Flower sees it over the line. Not for either, just wants a word with. <laughs> Player from either side as well. A bit unnecessary, perhaps. Shake of the hands in the end, and all good friends again. Just the one change that we've seen so far as well. Remember, it's roll on, roll off substitutes, but Shenfield yet to turn to their substitute bench despite the scoreline. Sticking about their game plan and still going about their business the way in which they would in any situation. Ayers, nice turn. Tried to feed that one through, but it would have had to be through the Ivan Needle, really, and it was too much on it, and back to the goalkeeper. Hope went for the return pass on the 1-2, but it was never forthcoming. Hope there was a good tackle there, the first South Hunsley goal scorer, remember.
bouncing ball in the penalty area did that strike an arm the referee was mm. happy with it and Shenfield get another corner yeah be fortunate there I thought it was handball well it's from the opposite side as to which they scored directly from this similar set piece again you'd imagine it would be sent into a a similar area though, or is it going to be an outswinging delivery from over on that far side? It looks that way. Again, it's going to be Brickle on taking duty. The referee has actually just come across here onto the near side to have a word with the fourth official. Not too sure as to what yeah, that was yeah, about, but yeah. mm. definitely wanted a word with his yeah, fourth yeah. official there, Ray yeah. Brown, didn't he? Good to go again though, the goalkeeper's come a relatively long way for that. And in the aftermath, the strike was always rising high from Lily Newman. Yeah, for deep, long way. Hit well over the bar. Goal kick then here for South Hunsley is going to be taken by the defender. It goes long. Battle for it on in the middle of the park. Brickle got there first. Brickle after it again too. Again Brickle. That one forward, but it's just wayward of the intended target. Again, though, it's just beginning to break back now for Shenfield if they can just find the pass to unlock the South Hunsley defence. Referee happy with the challenge, good challenge in the eyes of the match official. That's a good pass. Over across onto the far side, just forced wide though there. 1v1 against Lily Newman in defence. It was a good challenge as well from yeah, Newman, just to really, halt the yeah, progress there of Connie Baker. It really was Newman there, slowed the play down as well, kept on the ball, and in fact won the throw in after super defended. Yeah, it was the double ricochet which just took it out favourably for Shenfield. There's a move now into the final five minutes of this first half, final five minutes of the regular 30, 35 at least. Shenfield substitutes all watching on eagerly down in the technical area actually on this near side just below uh, commentary position up on the gantry here at home of West Bromwich Albion eagerly awaiting their introduction I'm sure game has just settled down a little though since that third goal the goal to make it 2-1 I think Tony and yeah. it's, it's interesting dynamic to it now yeah as I say it is there now I mean both teams having good play good passage of play there we go again Probably a chance here as after it is Weimark yeah, good defending defended. though yeah great defending as I say both teams have, have got good play they've got more uh, passing as the game's got on now more got more possession of the ball Hawthorne there with a nice turn to begin with, then trying to feed her teammate Holly Sutton in behind. Leading the line is Holly Sutton for South Hunsley. Elliot. Horton couldn't find a route through that time. Flower on the charge forward there for South Hunsley. Couldn't latch onto the other end of it though, well defended by Sawyer. Might be a problem there, but bailed out with the infringement.
Forward again from Brickle. That was the foul that brought about the free kick. Nice footwork into the penalty area as well. Oh. Good save. I make that three fine stops yes. now in this first yes. half from yes. Matilda Haddon. Yeah, three really good saves by Haddon. Cross inside. Really good strike. A fantastic save. Yeah, well, South Hunsley still ahead, and they certainly have their goalkeeper to thank for that. Okay, and the corner was taken short. Again, they'll look to try to make the most of the 2 v one Just switch between the short corner and the direct one, which we saw prove to be so fruitful for them. There may be an opportunity to go down the other end. There's a challenge made. As Garnet advanced into the penalty box. Now Baker, sorry, advanced into the penalty area. Hope still after it gets it as well. Into the mixer again. pace to get to that one and yeah, she did. maybe one might doing well there to win her side the throw it she'll have a look at that now and thinking in you know, the 1-1-1v1 situation get the ball out of your feet have a run <laughs> Windus Goalkeeper's his ball all day long. kick with the touch to take it behind the defending round on the cover there from so you and to get the goal kick as well we move here into a minimum of just the one minute added time at the end of this first half and then it seems as though at this stage then Tony that South Honsley are going to be taking this slender advantage into half time. Yes, that looks, that looks to be the case. And I think just, yeah, deserved to be quite honest with you. Two really good goals have scored there as well. But this game is far from over. There's enough talent in that Shenfield side to get back into this game for sure. Just showed enough, just showed enough there. Here's Breckel, scorer of the Shenfield goal, looking good to try to turn provider. A yeah, really good cross there. She had a fantastic first half, to be fair. He ran things in midfield. Yeah, Breckel the scorer then for Shenfield, but it's her side who are on the wrong side of the scoreline at half time. 2 1 to South Hunsley at the midway point. Um, deserving of their half time lead as well, you feel Tony moving into the second half, but it still is in the balance moving into that second period. Yeah, for sure. As you see, if no scores, 2-1. Um, uh, Shenfield definitely still in this game here. They've got an opportunity in the second half. Some really good play from both teams. Well, half-time then. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. That was, that was a, a mistake chance. at the back. That was the first of three really good saves. Really good, yeah, tremendous save. One more could a big chance here. See this one again. Yeah, this was the goal good down the other end. Strike. What a good strike that was.
fantastic finish cutting across the body but what a save that was what a save then the equalizing goal the goal direct from the corner again the third successive corner yeah, wasn't it, it and that was, one going all the way right, in yes to play two to near post and whipped it far post straight in Super goal. Things at that stage looked up for Shenfield. But South Hunsby hit back and hit back hard. And this was the superb goal. Yes, great run it was. And what about the composure finish? Did not look like missing. A fantastic goal there by the captain Cawthor Cawthor saw it super goal yeah brilliant individual skill in setting up the chance and the finish to match as well that's how we stand then at half time the half time score there at the midway point it's South Hunsley 2 Shenfield 1 
Welcome back then for the final time today for the final half of action across the course of all five games that we've seen here today. The opening day of action here at the Hawthorns for the PlayStation Schools Cup Finals. Here we have the under-13 9v9 girls final. And it's 2-1 to South Honsley School at half-time at the midway point up against Shenfield High School. But still, Tony Daly, very much all to play for. And still, this game hangs in the balance as we head now towards this second half. It really is. I thought, you know, both uh, teams played extremely well in that first half. Um, obviously, going in there, South Hunsley, going in there 2-1 uh, with two really good goals. But they're not out of it at all there, Shenfield. You know, I mean, with the likes of uh, Brickle there, they're very creative in that midfield. Can get the ball out wide, just into this wide area. So with Lucy Elliott, they can create problems. But the, the two prove the danger is going to be the captain there for uh, for South Hunsley. Uh, Cawthor, she's a really good player there. Scored a fantastic goal as well. So hopefully we can get a similar get a, a second half to here the first. Yeah, it was those two moments of magic really, wasn't it, for South Hunsley in that first half. First the long range strike from Lucy Hope and then the individual piece of quality, the individual goal from the captain Annabelle Cawthra. Really have made the difference at this point. Half-time change as well for South Hunsley with the introduction of their number 11, Ava Clark. She's come on to replace the number two, Izzy Flower. A good start, corner already. Out for a very early second half corner. It's taken short that time and then play back to Breckle if she can get there. She did, but not with any real conviction. Likewise, really, the shot on goal needed to try to improvise there. Had her back to goal, the player who tried to shoot on the spin. There's a clever effort. No one expecting that, just couldn't wrap a foot round it. Yeah, Lucy Elliott it was with that effort. After this again, Stewart back there defending. Time for what will be a throw in this time rather than the corner. Right by the corner flag. Newman there took the throw in back towards Newman. Settles for the corner that time. So it looks like Shenfield applying the pressure in his uh, second half. Breckle that time has vacated the scene and left taking duty on this occasion to Newman. There with the throw in as it was. switch the play but unable to find her teammate over there on the far left wing now the number seven Poppy Horton yeah I think if you keep, if you keep the two, two wide players like Sir Horton and Elliot in those wide areas can cause some havoc I think as well both quick both direct Hyde ended oh, up down there Referee has given the foul. Macy Hyde, who is one of the players actually attached to a professional club academy, one of three actually who play for York, alongside Captain Annabelle Cawthra and Lucy Hope, the two goal scorers. 
in that first half for South Hunsby, so just Macy Hyde in that regard needs to add her name to the score sheet as well. Here's Elliott, bursting forward again, good acceleration down the wing. Appeals for handball there, but the referee was disinterested in the claims for a penalty. Waved all appeals away. This was the penalty appeal. Now balls, hand was in. Yeah, I don't think there was enough in yeah. there for a penalty yeah. at all. Stroked along the ground more than anything else, but it is on target. Mentioned the players in the club academies in the South Hunsley squad. Well, there are a few as well in the Shenfield ranks. Maisie Brickle, Evie Weimark and substitute Maisie Jane Johnson who we are yet to see introduced, all play for West Ham United. Women's Super League side, of course. Hyde is now leading the line by the looks of things in the second half for South Honsley just a slight change around in that front line made by manager Laura Bramhill at half time hooked away there by Lucy Hope over the first defender but back well was Breckle Hyde making a nuisance of herself, likewise there the substitute Ava Clark, and Clark still going as well, trying to get past Newman, couldn't but could get the corner. Yeah, good play there. Chance for Hornsley to get, get forward from a set piece. And then it's another corner. We've seen plenty of them in this game so far. And towards the near post area. It's headed out now. Just caught on her heels perhaps a little. There though, Y markers. They tried to play the ball up to her. She's the only player not back defending from that corner. Hope gets it back from the throw in. Short, sends that one forward long but it shifted the goalkeepers all oh, over her head though and well, it could have been a calamitous moment completely misjudged that one there yeah just didn't judge the bounce right at all did yeah, you yeah no no yeah completely lost it I think the sunshine there as well didn't, didn't help didn't help at all but fortunately key foot was wide wide of the goal yeah, got away with that one in the end. He's wearing a cap as well, the goalkeeper now in the second half with the sun in her eyes. Had a ticket back towards the goalkeeper, but not before it crossed the line. Hawthorne is going to take this corner then. And South Hunsley School would love to find themselves their third goal here. It's a good ball in as well. It wasn't far away from being met. Well recovered. 
game still played at a really high level, high intensity level. It's good to see. Newman's throw it in search of Breckel. Newman into Breckel again. Hyde held it up well. Good ball too. Cawthra, option to the right. Good ball from her as well. Hyde is in the centre but was never found. Everything right there up until that final ball. Yeah, that's right. Good switch of play there. Yeah. Couldn't get that ball into the box. Both sides asking for that, but it goes the way there of South Hunsley. Still 2-1 to the good, as they were at half-time. Ten minutes now played in this second half period since the restart. Well, that time that Cawthra was looking looking to try to pick out. Lovely one too. Oh, oh it stings the palms of the goalkeeper and well collected, but only the second time of asking. Good strike, good football there. Good one too. Good strike by Elias. Keep the guy to the second attempt. Elias did well. Brickle couldn't collect that. Cawthra out again to the right. Forward there looking for Heidel, but I think she was in an offside position, didn't reach her anyway. Ayers. The tackle. Cawthra strong in midfield again. Pass the defender there with the intricate first touch from Clark. Oh, good recovery. Good cover. Throwing launched in again. Touch was on from Macy Hyde. All the way out again for another throw in on the far side. Shenfield just in these last five or so minutes though, just beginning to once again be penned into their own half at times. Yeah, it is the case. Well organised team. Our South Huntley really are. Into the penalty area oh, instead for Hyde. Big chance again. It's a good opportunity that. It will be a corner. Referee and his assistant have come to that conclusion between them. Yeah, and it was. Cawthra takes it short, that short option is Hope, back to Cawthra. Cawthra after it again, oh, managed to keep it in well. too and to go really across. Well. A great cross into the box there. Tackle. Really strong good tackle wasn't it there from Wymut. the cross yeah. into the penalty area yeah, dug out really well just couldn't have the foot round this Isla Franklin here is coming on then she's just made her way onto the field of play to replace Lacey Windus 
the change made for Shenfield High School. Clark there, dispossessed. Brickle now. Sweep that one forward first time, but couldn't get it past. Amelia Stirrup in defence for South Hunsley. Now it's oh, forward Brickle all the way across. Oh, good save. save. Big stop again. again for Matilda Haddon. Super save. That's four really important stops now for the South Hunsley goalkeeper. Again, Shenfield will come forward again, though. Oh, a great put run. in the centre as well. Brilliant running into the penalty oh. area. It's just wide of the far post. This was the previous opportunity, and what a save it was. So brave. Really good save. Why Mark denied and no. I have to think at this stage it might take something special to beat the goalkeeper for the second time today she was beaten by that elusive corner delivery which dropped in out the back stick other than that she's been a brick wall in the goal for South Hunsley great challenge there from Corthrett centre field Shenfield though have it back Fifty minutes snow on the clock. Twenty still to play. Later substitution is going to see the introduction of Isla Garnet here in place of Connie Baker. Hyde, good first touch. Fourth row. That one should be the goalkeeper's ball and is. <laughs> Clark had it back but only for a split second. Advantage here being played well by the referee. Brickle. Still driving forward here, Brickle. Just ran into traffic though in the form of a couple of South Hunsley defenders, one of whom was Lucy Hope, who has continued her run forwards. Still has the ball here, Hope. <laughs> Core throw will go for goal! And it's just about turned behind. Just just kept out there. I think that might have been moving a little bit. Let's see that one again. Keeps kept out, that's the most important thing. Corthra, great strike again. Yeah, that ball's all over the place. It's a fantastic strike. Trust me, it's a really good save by the keeper. Yeah, certainly not as simple as some might have thought first. First time at looking. The ball seemed to swerve me there. Yeah, certainly have to watch that one all the way, the goalkeeper. And good enough to turn it behind for the corner. And that could be a big save. If Shenfield mm. go on to find an equalising goal, well then they're going to have their goalkeeper to thank for. That will be initially looked unorthodox. It was a good stop. Hyde. Only to Newman, though. Ayers. Forward in search of Weimark. Well defended though. Hope did superbly well at the back. Yes, he really did there. Horton wins the corner. not panic stations yet for Shenfield but it yeah. is just approaching the stage at which they'll need to start to 
think about how many players they want to commit further forwards. It's that risk versus reward element, I suppose. Again, the corner there taken short. It's back here to Breckel. Oh, all the clearances. Not what would have been best there for South Hunsley. It was sent back to the original Shenfield corner taker. Yeah, a bit of tiredness creeping in now, I think, as well. The stress comes off now, trying, trying to hang on to this 2 1. Referee has just halted play here. He's going to come across as well to speak here with the Shenfield coaching team. believe the issue might be with a uh, bit of blood a bit of blood that's one. yeah mm -hmm. blood yeah. I think it's blood yeah usually is in this yeah. circumstance isn't yeah. it yeah, yeah. it's a breaking play nonetheless which will mean that the time was added on at the end of the regular 70 minutes of course Fifteen minutes plus stoppage time then still to play. We're still as we were on the scoreboard at half time. South Hunsley scored two onto the good. Shenfield, remember, came back from adversity in winning their semi-final 5-4 that day. It's a bit of a less difficult task in hand, albeit against a very strong side here on finals day. It's still a very tough task in hand. So they'll probably take some confidence from the fact that they did come back in that semi-final. Back to the action again as Evie Weimark is OK to continue and back out there on the field of play. up there to hide out wide now for Isla Garnet Garnet past the first defender she's still got the ball as well has she she did to begin with it's away now as far as Brickle Brickle trying for the more direct ball through but wasn't able to find the runner One just bounced slightly too high for Ava Clark. Closing in now on the final 10 minutes. We're not there yet. What stage do you think, Tony, that Shenfield will look to try to really go for things? And if it stays 2 1, that is, try to maybe commit more players forward. What stage do you think at which that might have to come? Yeah, I think it's that 10 minute mark. I think they're uh, giving me the opportunity to really have a go at it. For sure. They're not playing too badly at all. Here we go. Weimark here into the penalty oh, area. It's lovely. back to Weimark. Oh, oh she skied it. Oh, superb play. What a chance. Well, it was literally everything right until the finish. It was a move worthy of a oh, goal. Fantastic play. Super skills. Little one-two. Played off. Goal to Mercy. Yes. Keepers come down, close the angle. Push and finish. She'll know it as well. She mm. won't need telling. Big chance squandered. Long ball here now down the other end is the opportunity. Not to be that time. Good defending. Harris.
Short sees it out for the throw in. Elliot. Elliot still has it, but heading back the wrong way at the moment. Does keep possession, goes all the way back to the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper then was able to sweep the ball forwards. Can Chenfield just again carve through the South Hunsley defence how they did to create that previous golden opportunity? They might take some promise from the way in which they managed to create that chance though. Just get the sense that that's a big moment. Yes, it really, really was. All lit up there. If it's a beautiful play. And it's just the finish there as well. That was a big, big chance. Cawthra after it. Goes all the way back to the goalkeeper though. Headed back and controlled on the chest by Elliot. Elliot still trying to make things happen here for Shenfield. Cross into the penalty area, but it wasn't what she hoped it was going to turn out to be. Big push now needed. Shenfield retains a really good football. Start to take a few gambles now. I mean, it's not a case of launching the ball upfield, but you know, perhaps get an additional man. So additional person to push on. Yeah, well, to join my mark up there. Minute mark, haven't we? So yeah, mm -hmm. it is edging towards that all or oh, a good ball. stage. Good ball through. Oh, real brave. What a great save. Really brave there. Really brave. Medical attention being called for here for the goalkeeper, but again, such bravery in making the stop. It's been a real range of saves as well today, haven't there? It really has. Made by Matilda Haddon and just another one to add to her tally there. You can make quite the compilation of saves that she's made, I'm sure. So they're creating the chances there now, what it is now. They've all been really patient. We're going to get to a stage now where you know, they're really going to have to take some risks, try and get this goal back. Played really well second half. One glorious chance we just saw there, previous. Haddon is back to her feet. Won't be taking this kick there though. Instead it was sent forward by the defender. Hyde again was the target for it. Still leading the line. Here for South Hunsley. This was the save. Just caught, wasn't she, by yeah. the outstretched yeah. right boot. Yeah. Make sure you head over to At Schools Football, the ESFA Twitter page. At Schools Football is the handle for that to take part in the Player of the Match vote. The nominations for the Player of the Match award. Matilda Haddon, the South Hunsley goalkeeper. Annabel Cawthra, scorer of the second South Hunsley goal. And then the two nominations from Shenfield. Maisie Brickle, scorer of their goal. And also Lucy Elliott. Good effort. Great range strike there, and it wasn't far away. Yeah, it really was a good effort there. Now they would love the goal to really wrap things up. You sense that if they could find the next goal in the game and quickly then it probably would wrap things up at this stage Cawthra not far away from finding it there the pills for handball from the near side technical area but nothing else Brickle there with the flick forwards, it's Elliot now, gets the ball into the danger zone. Just slightly too much on it though, it will be retrieved over on the far side however by Horton. Franklin, 
It's the foul and free kick. Inevitably, the nerves will just begin to increase for South Hunsley the longer that it stays like this. Yeah, still playing three at the back there. Can they bring additional player up there? Literally playing 4v1. Can they get some, you know, additional player up into, the, up into that midfield stroke, centre forward position? Take a gamble. Neat ball there out from the back that time with the goal kick into the feet of Cawthra. Good ball as well. Then from Cawthra to Garnet. Garnet won it back too. And he had it for a split second, however. That one trickles back to the goalkeeper. And Shenfield will look to come once more. Neat play, good play. There he was. Cawthra then couldn't find a teammate that time. They need to keep working here, South Hunsley. Keep fighting right until the very end because Shenfield definitely will. In search of their equaliser that has so far eluded them in this second half. Clark. Weaving away through, still Clark. Good defending in the end. Long throw out distribution. It's Breckle. Breckle infield. Then up to the striker, past Hope that time. It breaks through as well here to Weimark. It's still Weimark. Oh, what a And save. it's a great yeah. stop again. It's done it again. Outstanding. It's an unbelievable performance today by the South Hunsley goalkeeper Matilda Haddon. Weimar could have had a hat trick today. No fault of hit the target three times. Great striker, fantastic save. That might be the best of the lot. It was from yeah, such close proximity to her. It really was. Shenfield left wondering how. How on earth they aren't back level, but the reason is the goalkeeper. She's been outstanding today. Had a fantastic game. Some unbelievable saves. Edging closer and closer to that 70 minute mark. The referee, Paul Kempen, just urging them to get on with things, and they have now from that goal kick. Over the head of Hyde. Clark. Back to Clark again. Ball was won by first Brickle, but it's back again with Clark. Up to Hyde, and there's a player to the right as well. And the effort was always going wide in the end. I'm going to keep that ball down that end of the field. Little layoff. Yeah, just going to get a hold of the shot there. Substitution there sees the introduction of Freya Palmer to replace teammate Ava Clark there, who is withdrawn for South Hunsley as they look to see this one out. It's about gang management as now as well now, isn't it really yeah, Tony for South Hunsley? Yeah, absolutely it is. You know, to keep the ball this side of the field here. You know, do they need to cross the ball in unnecessarily? Do they need to play spray the ball wide? All it is try and keep possession in the corner. Kill some time. And not take gambles like just in those areas there. That's a great little ball. That's the one. That's the kind of ball they need to be playing. No 
kick there taken short. Still here, South Hunsley looked to try to press high up the field, but Shenfield looked to try to evade that press. And the linesman has his flag up. And it's out for a throw it. Throw is taken relatively quickly and with good reason as well for Shenfield because the clock continues to tick down. It's a player over though, over on the far yeah. side. It's still yeah, there though for defending. Weimar. Good defending. Just looked as though Poppy Horton was free, but Weimar wasn't able to offload to that left side. Uh, hope. Nice and strong there. Not allowing Weimar to get in. Cleared long away by Hope. Brickle. there too Brickle but she wasn't able to control that time we wait to see how much stoppage time we'll have four minutes it's a little premature on the board from the fourth official but four minutes is the indication Cramp coming to play here. Yeah, the referee's attention here having been drawn to one of the Shenfield High School players who is down just in front of the yeah. Shenfield technical yeah. area as well here. And it's Elliot who's down. Looks like a bit of cramp she's got. She has been she has done some running this afternoon. She really has. just being helped off there but understandable really that she's suffering with cramp at this late stage because as you say Tony she really has been a, a live wire and outlet down that right wing for Shenfield and she'll be very disappointed if it is to end this way that she'll end up on the wrong side of the scoreline Tegan Barber is going to be coming on here she's on now So Barber has slotted in in the back line, which is perhaps surprising given the situation here which Shenfield find themselves in. They need a goal, and they need one quickly. They need one now. A bit of miscommunication perhaps, but the free kick there hadn't been taken. Ah, yes. Out wide here for Horton. Cleared away there by Sarah Harris. It's only coming back though. Hope got her right boot to it that time. Hope as well to Macy Hyde. who stayed down as well here I think it's Weimark so I think now as she'll soldier on in the last couple of minutes but South Hunsley look comfortable at the moment still there with just the two players in the attacking half as that ball was played forwards a couple more joining the attack then but it wasn't really an attack of sorts in the end Seems as though at this stage South Hunsley might get over the line, but maybe not. There's a chance oh. it's into the hands of the goalkeeper. Was that the moment? Was that the late last opportunity? Probably. That was the last big chance, I think. Just wouldn't sit and settle down, do it fell nicely. It's done. The referee calls time and blows the full-time whistle. Well, just the three minutes of stoppage time played in the end. But the referee brings this one to its conclusion and brings the first day of finals here as well at the Hawthorns to its conclusion as well. Tony Daly will now head down pitch side 
to make the trophy presentations, the medal presentations. But it's finished here and in favour of South Honsley School. 2-1 victors with goals from first Lucy Hope and then the captain Annabelle Cawthra either side of the Maisie Brickle equalising goal as it was at the time for Shenfield. Commiserations to Hannah Thornhill's side. Shenfield will go away disappointed. Gave it everything they had in that second half but it just wasn't enough in the end for them. And after the missed opportunity as well from Weimar, you just wonder whether it wasn't going to be their day. As we take a look at the highlights again. Great finish for goal number one. Across the goalkeeper and into the far corner. Brilliant strike that was. Then the corner, likewise brilliant strike as well. Don't think it was intended as a shot on goal. I'm sure maybe she'll have you think otherwise. But it's a great goal with the cross come shot. Just put into a great area as Tony was alluding to. But then there's the moment that ultimately, in hindsight, and she didn't know it at the time, has won the game for her team there, Annabelle Cawthra, to make it 2-1. Still inside the first half, but that's how the game played out in the second period, still with the 2-1 scoreline intact. What a goal that was. There was a chance then in the second period as well for Evie Weimark, but ultimately... Shenfield weren't able to find a way through past Matilda Haddon in that second period who was absolutely outstanding from start to finish in the South Hunsley school goal. We'll have the trophy presentations coming any second now but it finishes here and it finishes in favour of South Hunsley. Presentations then here being made by the Chief Executive of the English Schools Football Association, Andrea Chilton, and of course, Tony Daly, who is down there, former England international and Aston Villa star winger, to make the presentations as the match officials there come forward to take their medals. Paul Kempen, Rio Pledger, Thomas Westwood and Ray Brown. The match officials team for the final game today. Now time to find out the player of the match then. And no surprises really that it's given to the goalkeeper Matilda Haddon. She looked a bit surprised as she was announced there as the player of the match. But four brilliant stops at least in that game. And none better I think than the one in the second half. The last proper opportunity that Shenfield had. It was at such an important, crucial moment as well. Matilda Haddon, the player of the match. Not to be today for Shenfield High School. Beaten in the boys under 12s B teams final as well, just here in the last game prior to this. And ultimately beaten here as well. They'll have to settle for silver again. Which is not the medal colour that they wanted. Plum faces, of course, at the moment, but hopefully when the dust settles, they'll be able to look back on the memories fondly in just even reaching this final stage. Hannah Thornhill and the assistant as well there stepping forward to take their medals too. But today, it's the turn of South Hunsley to get their hands on the trophy. It was a long, hard season en route to the final. 
scored 47 goals along the way, which is quite incredible. Conceded just the six as well. Captain Annabelle Corthra has been instrumental from start to finish. The skipper will soon get her hands on the trophy as each and every one of the South Hunsley players here come forward to collect their gold medals. Every player played their part today. Led brilliantly by the coaching team as well, none less so than the manager, Laura Bramhill. We are hoping to hear from Laura Bramhill at full time as well. Full time now, of course, but after the trophy presentations is what I mean. Annabelle Caldera there, posing for the picture with Tony Daly as well. As she gets her hands on the trophy, and South Hunsley School can celebrate. Their grand champions of the ESFA Under 13's 9v9 PlayStation Schools Cup for the girls. Winners of the national final, having beaten Shenfield High School by two goals to one. It's a day to remember memories to cherish and a success story this season for South Hunsley School. And that concludes our coverage here today from the commentary position. Make sure you do still stick around for the interview which we are expecting with our stadium announcer who is ready and waiting at pitch side. But thank you very much for joining us from start to finish today. Or if you joined us for this one specifically, then likewise. Congratulations to South Hunsley School. They take home the silverware. Again, commiserations to Shenfield. The interviews are coming next. And a very good evening to you all. So I'm here with Coach Gary and Coach Hannah. Guys, it just wasn't meant to be. But I mean, what a final. Each of the goals, and just not just the goals, but the defensive play, both sides, it really could have gone either way. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, a game that, you know, on the toss of a coin, could have gone either way. I thought they defended brilliantly. They were strong. Um, and the goalkeepers obviously pulled off three or four brilliant saves. So fair play to her. And that was it. There was just some real key battles from both the sides all over the park. Yeah, I mean, firstly, congratulations to South Hunsley. What they're doing for girls' football at that school is really fantastic. I think their Year 9 team are also in the national finals, so really well done to you guys. Uh, Shenfield, I'm still so proud of you. This is our second year. We made it to the final. We're hungry for a third, so we'll just go again. Absolutely, and of course, we're going to see you guys back again tomorrow. It just shows what's being achieved at your high school at the moment. Those final thoughts as we see you at the end of day one. Yeah, I, I could just echo what uh, Hannah said there. I'm really, really so proud of the, these guys, both these, this, this squad here today and the under-12 boys B team. Um, to get four teams here to a national final shows the commitment we're putting into it. Um, and the players were so unlucky in both games. It's just that, that, you know, take it on the chin, we'll come back stronger next year. That's it, actually, we like to hear. Guys, commiserations, we'll let you go back to your teams. Thanks for your time. Let's hear it one more time, though, for Shenfield High School. So I'm here with our winning coach, Laura. Laura, you've just told me you don't have much of a voice left. It was a passionate final. 
extremely passionate from both teams. Um, End-to-end game, could have gone either way. So massive, massive congratulations to Shenfield for getting this far and giving us a game like that standard. It was incredible. Um, but yeah, really not much of a voice left after all the shouting and screaming from the sidelines. So it must have been good. <laughs> but that's it. That's what finals are all about. Two highly competitive teams. Goals just highlight reel. Some of the best goals that we've seen already. Uh, they're going to be in the highlight reel come the end of the week. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, um, no, we've got some incredible talent in that team. Um, the girls worked really, really hard. Um, they're in such a good team, and I've said to them before, what makes them that good a team is the fact that they actually all play together inside and outside of school, and they are genuine friends. Um, and you can see that out on the pitch. They, they want to work hard for each other, and that's what makes the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Some great link-up play all over the park, but uh, we do have to mention the player of the match. Some incredible saves. Shenfield mentioned it there, Matilda, with a fantastic performance. I'm so, so proud of how far Tilly has come. Honestly, she has developed so much and, yeah, so proud of her. She deserved that Man of the Match performance. Um, absolutely incredible saves. She kept us in that game. <laughs> so, Laura, I'm going to give you the final words of day one here at the PlayStation Schools Cup. What have you got to say to your team and all your fans? Oh, we've had such a good day. Um, thank you very much to our spectator trip that's come down to support the team. <laughs> um, but yeah, the girls have absolutely loved it. They thrive off these opportunities. So thank you all for all your organisation and hard work that goes into that as well. Well, Laura, I'm going to go and let you celebrate with your ladies and the fans over there. One more time, let's hear it for South Huntsley School. And of course, we will be back tomorrow. Make sure to come and join us on ESFA TV. A whole load more games coming to you live from the Hawthorns at the PlayStation's Schools Cup 2023. We'll see you tomorrow.